Greetings, good afternoon, good morning, good evening, wherever you are, wherever your time zone is. Uh, I just want to give a little brief introduction of what you're about to see here, because this will be a little compilation, just to past videos, nothing new, just more of the replays. Uh, so this will be a special replay going over um, all of the latest documents and photos and videos, which I feel like we haven't really um, spent too much time on the new photos and videos, so hopefully we'll have more time to get back to those, but you will see it's about a 13 minute video of the, um, the crime scene video from the BCA, labeled by the BCA, and the, uh, the autopsy photos as related to, uh, uh, this case as well. All the stuff that we originally saw on Tony's website, which we still have not received yet, as far as I know, I have not received it yet. Um, so we're still waiting, and as far as I know, everything is still in progress, and uh, the documents are promised, some things are promised, they're saying, uh, according to the lawyer, the Apple Valley City lawyer. So we'll see what, where that goes, and we want to make sure, obviously, everybody's getting the same documents, things aren't being withheld, or they're not picking and choosing. So that's what we'll be looking for. We expect to pretty much get at least everything that Tony got. Um, and that should be it except for the fake document <laughs> obviously but we'll you know you'll see all that so um yeah this will be a little long replay here but i figured i'd jump in and give you a little brief of what you are about to see um so it starts with some of the first records that we got david crowley's electronic records then goes into tony floyd posting on the, the group posting in the group and pretty much doing a little data dump and kind of explaining everything from his point of, of view of why he was why he is even sharing this stuff that we did not have that we didn't know about uh, but it sounds like he may have gotten it in june and we got ours in august late august i believe so um so anyways you'll see all of that kind of real time and then obviously at some point we'll have to come back and do some more videos on it and kind of go over that once we get all of the data and once the Apple Valley lawyer says, okay, this is all we're, we're giving you. Then we'll go from there and see what the next step is. So we're kind of in that waiting moment here now. So I figured I just uh, would do a little live stream, a little comp compilation to kind of um, show everybody um, everything that we have so far in case you just want to get caught up and just want to quickly watch everything in order. And yeah, that's about it. Hope you all enjoy. And of course, don't forget to check out every month. There's a new podcast that comes out on the first of every month. So this will be um, for November 1st. This will be the second and final part of Tom Lydon. And this will be the last part of the chapter closing the case. And after that, we move on to Detective Jim Gummer. And shouldn't that be fun? I think we'll have some uh good round table discussions for the podcast as related to the 21 questions for detective gummer so hope you'll all join us for that wherever you listen to podcasts type in the gray stage i'm sure it'll come up um my interview with crip rick went very well i'm looking forward to that that should be up within another week or so on his channel crip rick's i've been thinking so make sure that you subscribe to his channel also uh william William Rail with Strange Investigations has been doing some, some new videos on the Crowley case too. I think he just put one up on Twitch the yesterday about um, some of the phone records. So he's been taking a deep dive into those phone records. And man, Catherine, so Sophia, I mean, everybody is just kind of um, working different different angles, working different aspects of this case. And yeah, I hope, I hope to share some future things, future projects and stuff like that going forward. But um, we'll... We'll keep that just, just you know, private, just between us for right now. But um, eventually, we will have some good news to, to share about some future things. So I look I look forward to it, and I, I really hope that it all leads to the to the goal, which is to get justice for David Crowley and his family. And um, at some level, obviously, we already have justice, right? Because um, well, I mean, depending on how you look at it, I guess, you know, partial justice, keeping the case going, you know, hundreds of thousands of people, if, if not more, probably know that this is, that the official theory is not 
the final word, is not the last word, is not closing the case, that the case is not really closed, that David Crowley has, has been accused, but that's it. That's where it pretty much ends with the accusations, but nothing to back up those accusations. That's where we are, that's where it stands, looking at the facts, we can clearly see that. You know, there's just nothing there to prove David Crowley guilty. If anyone does have the proof, make sure you share it with the Apple Valley Police because obviously they don't have it. And so um, we don't want people withholding any in information that may help them finally bring some closure to this case. So then we can really have a case closed. But yeah, going forward, um, not sure how many episodes we'll spend on Jim Gummer, but uh, I'm looking forward to that too. But I figured this will kind of uh, tide everybody over for people who have um, who haven't been able to see it or who just want to see everything that is related to the Tony Floyd saga. Um, well, I'm putting it all right right here for you. Uh, I hope it helps. Hope it helps your research. Hope it helps with whatever angle, whatever uh, your view is on this case, wherever your research takes you. You know, that's that's it. Just go where go where it takes you. Uh, don't let any, anybody stop you. Don't let anybody change your your mind. And um, you know, that's it. And God bless you all. And thank you again for watching this special presentation, a compilation of the Tony Floyd saga. God bless. Testing one, two, testing one, two. All right, greetings, greetings. Well, here is um, some new and brand new document that we have here uh, regarding David Crowley's MacBook Pro search. So this is um, related to the MacBook Pro that was found in David Crowley's kitchen. And I'm just going to make sure everybody can hear me okay on YouTube. Why not? All right. Just bear with me one second. Test one, two. All right, sounds pretty good. All right, so um, this is a brand new document that we have here. Um, it's 317 pages, and this goes through all of David Crowley's um, MacBook Pro search history. Lots of stuff here. Um, it also talks about any, any device that is connected to the MacBook Pro, and there is a lot of interesting stuff here. One thing that's really interesting is this right here, that the root file was accessed on 1-14-2015 UTC time. So still trying to understand what that means because obviously nobody should have accessed this on 1-14 unless it's related to a uh, uh, an auto backup or something like that doesn't really make sense to me not really sure where that's coming from but there's a lot of data to go through here and I can tell you I have not gone through all of this data yet but I'm sure that I will and I'm sure that all of you will too so there's a lot of good stuff here um, it looks like this was created 8 8 2014 I'm sorry 8 18 2014 and the last modified date root modified date is uh, 12 25 so um, that is December 25th 2014 that's the last time that anything was modified um, but the last time that anything was accessed is 114 so who's accessing this at 114 unless it's some type of autosave or something like that obviously there's a there's a big problem there um, so you can see this is a 700 gig hard drive and they're using a lot about 500 gigs and a lot of it is movies a lot of it more of it is graphics emails a lot of emails on here too and a lot of documents the disk images is also interesting because there are seven of those disk images let me just try to make this just a little bit bigger for people to see but uh, for anyone who is a hacker or knows about computer software all of that good stuff 
Um, let me know what you think about this root file access date. I think that's going to be a big, big, big one that we're going to go over in the future. I've already talked to a couple people, so I'm hoping to hear some more views on that. But if you look at uh, the application artifacts, uh, you get a pretty good idea of some of this stuff and the archives too. And when the um, when the iPhone was last connected, and of course we need to cross reference to make sure that this is uh, they're talking about David's iPhone and not Kamel's. But you can also see when that was last connected was in October. There you go. So a lot of good data here. Um, I've skimmed through a lot of this. There are some very interesting searches. This does, you finally will see David Crowley's last searches, what he's searching, what he's looking at. Obviously, one of the things that stuck out to me was the paranormal psychology. I found that pretty interesting. Um, he's looking at um, things about how to delete a Facebook page, how to edit it, who can see it, who can administer it. And he's looking at Kamel's page at the same time, so it's not. I'm not really sure if, if his, some of his searches are related to um, looking at the access for Kamel's page, which it seems like only he and, and her, only David and Kamel would have access to. But he is really looking at um, the Gray State pages and looking at who has access and what they're doing. So he's looking at a lot of, of that stuff. And um, I'm just curious if he's wondering about the admins for the Gray State pages and how to get rid of some people. Can only really speculate on that one. But um, let's look at the la the most recent documents. So the most recent document is Crowley Memory and um, then the myth. Now the myth one, and again this is for David Crowley's laptop on the kitchen island that was found in his house that said I have loved you with all of my heart. It was open, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So it was open to um, the to this word doc, not really a word document, but the equivalent of a word document on a Mac um, and the title of that document was called Myth, and inside of Myth is where he writes, I have loved you all with all of my heart. Now, I have still not seen <clears throat> a clear picture of that text document, but um, it's definitely there. It's definitely here, so you all have access to it. Now, if you want to get access, I'm going to add this to the Justice for David Crowley and Family Facebook group as soon as I can. You can all you can also go to my website, thegraystage.wordpress.com. Scroll down; it'll be the first document that you you see there, and um, you can access that document at any time. Again, just go to um, uh, thegraystage.wordpress.com. Scroll down, 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 down. And you'll see it. I've now added it. It's the very first one here, David's MacBook Pro search history. So please feel free to go through that. Let me know what you think about that, what you think about these documents. But looking at the most recent documents here can also tell um, different. You can get a lot of interesting data from that too. And of course, we have um, the uh, 725, the Gray State Deal Memo. That's another big one right here. The Gray State, the Rise Co-Production Agreement. Wonder what that one is more about. I'm not too familiar with that one. Final Clean GS FMF Change Contract. So another change contract. And then um, uh, BGS. Not really sure what that is. Another change contract. Hothead Gray State Danny Mason Agreement. So that's pretty interesting. Then there's this one called Mythos, which is pretty similar to Myth. But it's Mythos, so I wonder if Mythos is like an earlier version of Myth. I'd be curious to see what's inside of there. So again, this is the search history, not um, the actual documents of it. But just looking at this, I'm pretty sure you'll be able to dig a lot deeper. And um, hopefully you, you can find some, some things. And please share those in the group. Please feel free to share those in the comments too. I just thought that I would break in here live for a couple minutes. I know there's some people in the in the chat room, so thank you all for joining me. 
um, if you have any questions or anything like that we'll be doing a few more live shows just like this but again there's no I just wanted to just kind of break in here for a couple minutes and um, uh, just let people know if you don't know if you haven't had time to check the the Facebook group Justice for David Crowley and Family Facebook group uh, you will be able to find those documents in there as well so that's what's coming out next the Crowley memory is pretty interesting this one here too MS Word doc with listing link so I'm curious what the listing link kind of makes me think of like a real estate listing so I'm curious to hear people's thoughts on that one as well because I don't know now the application artifacts you can see lots of documents lots of things so um, we'll see what comes out of that but lots of good stuff in here and I know the more people that are looking into it the more we'll be able to really go through this stuff and um, find anything um, find a lot of stuff I believe we'll find a lot of stuff that will help prove David Crowley is not guilty simply by the fact that you, you're not going to find anything in here that shows that he is I mean that's clear the police have made that clear they went through all of this through his MacBook Pro didn't find anything that would help them understand um, why David Crowley was guilty so the last running apps is also pretty interesting the preferences the Apple preferences to be one of the last things Apple mobile mail and then the Apple camera as well uh, that's pretty interesting stuff so um, lots of stuff related to the mobile phone the Dropbox as well those are the last things that were running uh, the top 10 contacts you can see it's all blacked out but you can see there's a lot of um, a lot of messages there so and again if this is only from uh, the last couple months um, there's a lot of messages and then a lot of calls that are there too so it would be interesting to find out who those people are what all of that is but please feel free to go ahead and check all of this out you can find this on my website and I will be adding this to the group now the last searched item is pretty interesting too that we see here um, this is from that song up up this was um, a guy that David Crowley actually recorded it looks like he recorded the music video from this guy and this was a guy who had cancer I think he died they've made a a, a film you can find it on Disney Plus so that was um, very curious that that was the last searched items uh, the last search items pretty much so the map search is um, redacted so we don't know what's in that map search but searching for something is on some type of map search so the internet history here is from 1218 to uh, 1225 as you can see and again there's just a lot of data um, to go through and uh, a lot of stuff maybe may not make sense to some people and to other people they will be uh, a very good cue so just going from here starting at if you start at page what is it, page seven then you can kind of go through the internet history from 1218 to 1225 and yes there's some very very interesting creepy stuff here in my view so I'll be curious to hear what everybody thinks about this um, but yeah the Stalin execution the Soviet Union so you know videos about soldiers dead soldiers um, soldiers you know, fed up soldiers basically um, fallen soldier with the bagpipe tribute um, you, and it, it's nice because it gives you the date and in most of the time it gives you a real link that you can go and actually look at so there's a lot of homework for us to do um, thankfully they add the title so if you don't want to put in every single YouTube URL um, generally you'll find whatever the title is and that's usually what it is and several of these titles will be the same but the most important thing here pay attention to the title pay attention to the URL and pay attention to the last visit and that's going to give you and also you have to cross reference UTC time to Minnesota time because there is a difference there and a lot of um, 
a lot of interesting stuff here. Um, this is another good one. A new release tapes reveal 9-11 horror. Is this real? I mean, it's just on and on and on like this. Soldier dies, little brother, sister, mother, dad sing. Beach Boys, Dylan reference. So, and uh, it is all kind of in, in order from that point as well. But, I mean, just look at all this. Look at all this. Even if you just go down to the very, very, very last page here. Um, it gets into things that were um, created and modified, but then accessed. So you can look at with this day one journal here, between August 12th to, uh, to September 4th, you can see the created date, 9-4. The modified date was 9-4, but the access date is 1225. So you're going to see a lot of that type of thing um, with the day one journal that is mentioned here. So. I don't know. A lot of these things are accessed. I don't know what that means. It, it, that could be a backup. You know, obviously, to back these files up, they have to be accessed at that time. Um, so maybe that's what we're seeing here, why we see dozens and dozens of pages of all of these uh, day one journal files that are created and modified at the same time, but the access date is 1225-1935-07. 193507 that's a that's a sink is what it looks like to me I mean 1938 oh maybe I don't know I don't know we'll have to see about that but some of it could be a sink especially if there's things happening at the same time um, but we'll see so there's <laughs> there's a lot of data to go through uh, a lot of this day one journals um, that are mentioned here too it is a big part of this of this whole file of this document here so I do hope this helps all of you fellow researchers. I'm going to go ahead and jump off here, but just wanted to let everybody know who hasn't had a chance to look at the group yet. These files will be added there. These files are on my website, and you can access these files there. These files are uh, 317 pages, so check this out. Let me know what you think. Leave some comments here leave them in the group and like i said uh, we'll definitely be doing uh, some future shows on all of this data going through this imagine going through 700 i'm sorry 317 pages uh, of data a lot of it i think is just going to be uh, the the day one stuff so it's just accessed modified not it doesn't really say too much just an entry but it doesn't really say it uh, doesn't really give too much data. Things that we, we would want to look for are things that were edited, things that were removed, that were put back, stuff like that. But look at the dates, look at the times, look at the titles of these documents, and uh, that should be enough to keep us busy for a little while. All right, good peeps. Uh, God bless you all, and thank you again for joining me live here. Again, you can access these documents on my website, thegraystage.wordpress.com. Hopefully, we can get this up at uh, Dan Hennon's site as well, uglytruth.info, and we will definitely add those to the Justice for David Crowley and Family Facebook group. I'm almost certain that probably um, Dan, Catherine, William Rail, Sophia, I'm pretty sure they're all going to want to do their own videos on this stuff too because there is a lot to go through. So um, that's it for now. Just a minute.
testing one, two. Sophia? It'd probably help if I unmuted myself. How are you? Me, hey, how are you? <laughs> Not bad. We're live on YouTube here. Okay. Yay. Uh, so I'm just test doing a little sound check. Sound check. Let me log into oh, um a free conference call. Do I have this on this phone? Yeah, I do. Okay. Go that way. That way I can see your screen. Okay. That would be oh, good. No. I can't go I mean, it's on, oh yeah, I should probably do a screen share. I don't even think I have the screen share mm -hmm. on, actually. <laughs> Let me turn down my volume. Yeah, the audio sound. Your audio sounds pretty good. Oh, I was turning down the volume on the other device. Okay. I could see your screen. Okay. It might be good to follow on YouTube. Oh yeah. Because I don't, I don't think I'm doing a screen share. It's just audio for the free conference call. Okay. It's gonna take us a while to go through all this, I think. <laughs> I can do it all on the TV. <laughs> the YouTube. Okay. Turn down the volume. So there's not an echo. Okay. Yeah, I didn't receive a notification this time either. Yeah, I didn't receive anything. There we go. Let's check on that. Mm -hmm. Okay, I see it. All right, so I'm going to go up, um, back up here, back up here. All right, well, um, I've shared a few things earlier. Why don't you give us some thoughts on this 317 pages? There's a lot of thoughts. <laughs> Uh, what I did notice is that it doesn't prove guilt for David or Camille. I think that actually both of them were using the computer and doing searches. That it's very possible that it was Camille that was doing the search to delete her page. But was that a business? Because she had already um, canceled her dietitian's license uh, in November, so maybe she was trying to start up something new and wanted to cancel that page. Because I don't know. It could have been. I just I mean, found it interesting. It's still active, right? And, the page. Oh, I honestly don't know. I've never done a search for it. Yeah, I think, I think it's still active. <laughs> so, uh, what I really found interesting is, is what you found. The the root file being backed up mm -hmm. after they were dead. And I really wish that we can get to the bottom of that because if it's just, you know, something that the computer does once a, once a month or whatever, then that would be a great answer. If if not, then that means that somebody was backing something up 
on that computer after they were dead, but before the bodies were found. Right. And that's alarming. So. And uh, what was it that Mason Hendricks said that David was searching on his computer? Because he had asked you several times if you had seen the searches. Mm -hmm. And was it Viking searches or? Yeah, it was like the um, the occultic occultic stuff is what he what he said if I remember correctly. So lots of occultic things, and then um, he just he was basically saying if you look at David's last searches, you know you'll pretty much know what happened. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, uh, well, we've looked at the last searches. So, uh, <laughs> so I watched a bunch of videos on YouTube. Uh, he did research on self-help and for a possible movie script, and a whole bunch of day one journal searches. Yeah, those uh, journal. Yeah, the day one stuff. Um, that's I don't know. That's I mean, if you look at some of the times, it's like. There's no way to access two files at the same time. Um, so that's kind of, I mean, the exact same second, you know. So that's a little, that's a little odd. Um, I don't know. So they're not all like that, but there's a lot that are, it just, it seems like it's just some type of backup for these files or something. Um, that's the way it looks to me right now. I don't know. Still need to think a little bit There's deeper a whole bunch but, of them. yeah and this is coming directly from the dropbox app and you can kind of look at i think i'm just kind of scrolling randomly here um looking at page 231 and um so there's one here that you know shows the date and, and the time but it's access the access date right 1935 17 and you kind of see that 1935 22 i mean i guess it could be scrolling it too it could be just somebody mm -hmm. scrolling down so that makes sense as well there was a few that i found that looked like it was at the exact same time but um maybe i was reading it wrong so this is why that's why it's good to go over it over and over again but yeah it's it's kind of weird this is what this is what someone is accessing why why all the day one journal stuff that's a good question. I guess we'll find out. Well, I don't know if we'll find out why, but. Yeah, and I want to understand the conflicted copy. So if you look at the path, like I'm looking here at page 233, and there's this path, and it uh, ends with David Crowley's conflicted copy. So I'm not exactly sure what the conflicted copy means. Uh, is there a different copy? Is this like a de deleted copy? That's some of the stuff that uh, I hope that maybe somebody can help us with too. So, um, I wonder if that's what he called it. It could be, yeah, conflicted. Maybe that was the name of the day one journal, kind of. He gave it a title, yeah. But... It's pretty, um, that's pretty interesting. Um, so 19, yeah, so 1935-22, this one is 19, yeah, yeah, it's probably scrolling. I mean, unless the auto save, see here, maybe here's one that I was looking at, unless these are the same thing. So looking at page 234, um, there's two, if you look at the access, the date access and the time, 1935-22, and then 1935-22, and that will make sense if these are the exact same thing here. Uh, and they should be so 451 yeah uh, source file one of the source files is 450 and then the next one is 451 I don't know I don't know stuff like that is what kind of makes me you know wonder about the whole backing up thing but it's it's really interesting stuff here but um, for Mason Hendricks, I think some of the stuff he was talking about, what he was really talking about is uh, the searches like, um, 
I think right around, I think the first 30 or 40 pages really have the searches. It seems like the rest is just like the, the day one journal. Mm -hmm. So, um, but he was talking about uh, David you know, looking at, let's say, satanic verses, the Dark Lord or something like that, right? I'm going to go to some of that stuff. Yeah, the the uh, something about Lucifer or something like that, and it was funny because it came like right after searching for Danny August Mason's <laughs> Facebook page, <laughs> so maybe he was referencing. <laughs> but he also did a search for. Uh, Gosh, what was that? Um, one second, let me go to my messenger because I downloaded it. It's an article on from Revelations, and it was the the woman with the twelve stars. Really, from Revelations? Um, That's... Yes, women with twelve stars is rapturechrist dot com woman, and that was one of the searches that he did. And uh, and then she is giving birth to the Messiah, Revelation twelve two, and she was with child. She cried out, being in labor and in pain to give birth. She was going to give birth to the Messiah. Jeez, the Antichrist. <laughs> So, I mean, it was just interesting. Uh, the dragon is Satan, as explained in verse 9. And that's just going through all that stuff, uh, explaining revelations. And it, it was just interesting. So it, it's it's like a book on revelations? or from... it, it, It's a website. It's a website. And then you look at the rest of the stuff that he was looking up, and to me it looked like, it kind of reflected back to the 2013 script. Mm -hmm. I know I harp on that so <laughs> much, but it really did. And um, maybe he was doing adjustments to that script and bringing in some stuff because of the TV series. And that would have been an interesting twist, you know, just adding in the kind of whole rapture thing and, and revelations. But yeah, there's. He had several searches for Danny August Mason. Yeah, I see one of those here, um, from his uh, Facebook. It looks like he's looking at his profile. The, profile. the mind and unleashed. He looked yeah, at I looked post. at some of them. Go ahead. And <laughs> that post, there were several of them that Danny August Mason made in December. So I'm, I don't know exactly which post he was looking at. Oh, on the 21st? Let me go back, and I can tell you. I mean, it gives I... a time. Uh, see, the thing is, it's UTC time, so I always have to remember that. You still have to adjust for that. So he made a post. He didn't make one on December 21st, unless it's not public, or... Unless he took it down. Well, I mean, this this but, also just shows this is when David visited that his Facebook. Mm -hmm. So there is one that says uh, irrefutable proof that Santa is Odin. <laughs> yes. And that was December 3rd, 2014. And then uh, he has, like, another Odin picture for December 3rd. And then December 10th, he has something about 16 reasons once Kansas is the best college town in America. December 12th, he has nothing like going to an addition and sounding like Kermit the Frog because of a head cold. <laughs> December 10th is... This house is a prison on planet bullshit in the galaxy of the sex camel dick. 
And it's a quote. So I, I honestly don't know what the quote is to. It'd be from a movie or uh, something, maybe. He's not probably uh, <laughs> like that vacation, uh, Christmas vacation one or something. <laughs> Also, December 17th, he has Mikey, Michael Keaton puts all other Batman actors in their place just with two words. And then the quote is, no, do you know why? Because I'm Batman, and I'm very secure in that. It's true. Then December 16th, two commercial shoots, a feature film shoot, and another commercial audition, my kind of week. Hmm. He could have possibly been looking at that. Then December 17th, he put a post up, and it's about the director of Bad Mother Upper. I'm not saying the whole word out loud. <laughs> so, and it's it's a pretty bloody film. That's and all. That's all Danny Mason they, stuff. Danny Mason's posting mm-hmm. in December. Yikes. Yes, and then there is a December 23rd post, too, but there's nothing between December 17th and December 23rd. Yeah, I think, this, if, I, if I remember right, December 16th is when they had one of the email ex, ex, exchanges. Um, so, I mean, if he was going to the messenger, it would it would probably, sh- it may show that, it may not, but um, I guess, no, that wouldn't have anything to do with the profile. No, he's going to Danny Mason's profile for some for something, obviously. But it's just then, the the uh, uh, timing is weird because this is right during the whole, you know, the whole loss or not lawsuit, but the whole trying to get Danny Mason to sign those forms. So. Mm-hmm. And it's very possible that he saw that Danny was working and did commercial shoots and a feature film shoot and was actually working, so... I don't know hmm. exactly what that means, but I was looking why? at um, this one on page twenty-eight here um, from David searches, and this one is pretty interesting. Cracking code, fooling nature, Oscar winner approach, screenwriting. Uh, cracking the code and fooling nature, and Oscar winner's approach to to screenwriting, which I thought was pretty interesting. I mean, I, again, this all just kind of shows you know david moore planning for the for the future planning for um uh getting ready for his fame and fortune which it really sounds like it he felt like it it was coming all of this stuff there's no posts in here that make it seem like um oh you know the the script is is dead everything is dead there's nothing in here like that so far right yeah nothing i can find you know i mean nothing like how do you deal with failure of having your script turned down or something it's just a lot of this stuff just all looks like he's just he's on his way out um and craigslist too he's on craigslist a lot looking um for sale for sale silver coin so i wonder if he's selling stuff and we know about the craigslist killers and all that stuff that's some pretty crazy stuff but um it, it's it's always been curious well you know there's very few reasons you would let somebody in your in your home obviously mm-hmm. i mean um you know a, a car sale could be one somebody's stranded somebody you know is a friend or something like that who really needs help got kicked out of their house or something like that but another one could be if you're making <laughs> a, a sale right if you're making some type of yeah. a, of a sale I mean, it's possible you can meet anywhere, I suppose. I really don't know how Craigslist works, but um, so I was just wondering if he was looking at buying or selling this silver coin. And it's not really sure because it's just it kind of, I don't know. I can't really say for sure either way, but I just thought there, there's a lot of Craigslist stuff on here, it looks like, too. And Well, did, I mean, the police talked about silver or gold coins but i don't think that they mentioned silver and he's looking at a whole bunch of silver stuff on here we we should go back through the um through the photos in the basement because if if there's silver um it may be down there of course you know anybody could have 
broken or just walked in through the rear slider and taken the silver if they wanted, I suppose. That 500 ounce box silver, that's super duper expensive. I mean, I buy silver. I know the prices. I wonder how much that would be. Five, yeah, because that's. Uh, well, it depends on the day. Like today, it's at twenty-three something. So we would I have to go back. back I, there's, there's probably websites where you can go back and kind of see. Okay, what, what was the price? I mean, geez, I should know. I was, I was probably buying silver then too. I haven't bought any in a while, but I remember I was definitely between twenty twelve and twenty fifteen. Um, yeah, I was. I was kind of into the whole silver thing. Couldn't get into the gold. It was just, it was just way too much. <laughs> but yeah, but yeah, yeah, I do have some, but it's you know just small pieces. So we're looking at the highest. Okay, let's do sixteen. Monster box. Wow. Yeah, that is. Big. Yeah, that it's a really huge box of silver and. See, what's, 500 ounces, that's a lot. <laughs> yeah, what's, what's really cool about this document is that um, it has the URL. So we can really go and probably find out if he's if he's selling or, or buying. You know, we can definitely find out if he's selling. If he's not selling, then he's thinking about buying. But either this is um, this is was... his thing or and, – and you know what? It says DT. Uh, is that, no, it says CLT, not DT. Yeah. I'd be curious. Uh, we could. That, uh, let's go. Go ahead. Oh, that was eight thousand dollars worth back in twenty fourteen. Okay, that's that's a good chunk of change there. So I mm -hmm. wonder if he's. I mean, if he's thinking about buying. Um, there would be some withdrawals or some transactions, something like that, that you'd see, right? I don't see any transactions after. November. Oh or? gosh. No, no, he did. He took some out in December, but uh, I think it was only like two hundred dollars, and then I think it was the nineteenth or the eighteenth, something like that, when he took money out. Oh, interesting. I have the bank statements. I wonder what he's taking that but out. But he for. took it out of the at the what? Uh, it was an ATM withdrawal on the nineteenth. Wow. For two hundred, I mean, that could have been groceries or a Christmas present or something. True. Could be anything. True. That's pretty. And good. what else? He did some self improvement searches too. Either he did or Kamal did one of the two. But a lot of these things, it's it, it's pre planning for the future. Yeah. The Gatson flag. That's a pretty interesting one. Logging into his Gmail, uh, 1221, on 1221, into the inbox. I was probably hoping to hear from either uh, Jason Allen or Danny. Keeps logging in to probably look. And he's looking at cartoons. Realistic cartoon characters. And scrolling down. Yeah, we'll change your childhood. Answers.com. What's that one? Oh, okay. Realistic cartoon characters that will change your childhood. The Mind Unleashed. There's a few of the Mind Unleashed. Um, and, and it's nice that they have the uh, title cause, because they have a blog. It's, it makes it a little difficult. But if you put in the title at the end after the blog date, um, it makes it a little easier to find. That's twelve twenty one. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> they. This is why they would have to say that David Crowley snapped, right? I mean, there's, mm -hmm. there could be no other, other thing here. Um, here on page thirty one, this is the one where somebody's logging into the mind mind body RD, uh, which is Kamel's page. All right, they're logging into the to the man. I mean, that could be David, but that could be Kamel, like you said. I mean, this this would be some proof where you would think, yeah, maybe maybe it was Kamel using this. She has her own Surface Pro, but I don't know, you know. I mean, who knows? 
So they're going into the messengers, into the messages in that Facebook page. And going into the settings, then on page 31, setting it public or something, looking at the public options, maybe. And then go into the help. Who, how do I see what role is on a page? And that's kind of weird because um, I don't know. I mean, I, there's no way for us to tell how many admins are on a different page or whatever. But um, it's if that's Kamel's page, if it's her di dietitian page, this would make me think that this is more related to um, uh, to one of David Crowley's pages, but. Maybe not because a few seconds later, they're back on the mind body RD, mind body registered diet dietitian. So that would and if yeah, I'm on that page right now. So she's just talking about how she's a dietitian, eating psychology coach. Can you tell when the last one is? When the last post is? October 24th, 2014. Yet they're logging in here looking at the admin roles for the mind body registered di dietitian, specifically on page 32. Wow. How many admins are there? Why would you need to change an admin role? I mean, oh, that was weird. Just lost the whole thing. I don't know. All right, going back to page 32. That was really weird. Mm -hmm. The whole document just went kabuya. Yeah. A glitch. <laughs> yeah, it's a, a glitch. glitch in the matrix. <laughs> a glitch in the matrix, apparently. Um, because then, yeah, no, I mean they're logging in to the mind body RD and checking all that. But it's not a group, right? It's a page. It is a page. Can you look up if you if you're on in Facebook right now and you type in this Facebook group number, can you see if this is um what group this is? Uh, are you on it right now? Facebook group. Yeah, six seven 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 four four four. Um, I typed Mm -hmm. Yeah, I tried doing that before, and Facebook just glitches out on me because I, I did it for something else. And, let me see. Uh, this will let what me is do. this? Gray state device. There should be a way to tell what the name. Um, every group has its own number. And I do believe when you go to the page, when you go to the page, it act at the the URL shows it. So if, if it's the Mind Body RD, if you're on her page, it should show this number. But that's a page. Maybe, maybe that is a group. No, that would have to be a group. Yeah. There is the Rise group. Is the Mind Body Although RD was... is the Mind Body RD a, a group? I'm starting to think it's a group now. There is a mind body soul group. There should be one called mind body RD. Of course, it could have been changed, but that's what it should be. It's hard to look that up on my phone. I'm looking. There's mind dot body and a bony. I don't know. Mind body exercise. Mind body spirit. Mind body wellness. Hmm. That's weird. That's pretty weird. Um. But anytime you go to a to a group, it should have, it should have the actual number. 
So I'm pretty sure we can find that out. Okay, so this one does say it's for the rise. So he's looking at the group privacy for the rise here on that one. Um, I have to come back to the RD. I think the mind body RD is a, is a page because I can't find it in the groups. So then all of a sudden they go from that, looking at that on 1221, and then about three hours later, they're looking at the rise the privacy, the group privacy on 1222. Nobody sees, uh, see what's weird about all of this, and maybe this is why they focus on um, just these dates, is that the, nobody's, nobody sees David or Kamel you know, after what, the 19th, the 18th, and that's, mm -hmm. that's pretty much it. Yeah. I am not seeing anything for Gray State the Rise. For groups. So he could have put it private. Yeah, there's definitely a group. Of course, there's two numbers here. So there's a 6777 seven, seven number, then there's a 923. But we should be able to run these numbers through Facebook. You know, you may have to copy and paste the whole. URL, but that should, I don't know if you've done that already or not, but um, I haven't yet. Maybe tomorrow I can. But a lot of this stuff is, when I'm looking at it, I was like, oh, this is gold because it gives you the actual source. This is stuff you can look at in a way, in a way back ma machine or something mm -hmm. similar to that. I mean, there's definitely a lot of internet, um, there's definitely a lot of computer hacking, <laughs> not hackers. I don't want to call them hackers, but people who have knowledge about this stuff, a lot more knowledge than I have. I'm pretty sure they could probably find some interesting data based on this, on these 317 pages. I'm pretty sure they could find some interesting data that to the, to the eye, to my eye may not be that visible or it may be easier too because what what might take me <laughs> a longer time they may be able to look at these documents and say oh yeah this is what this means here or you know um maybe even look some of that stuff up there's a lot of ways to look things up so that's an interesting one looking at the group activity so they're just looking at yeah i don't know gray state the rise i thought it was a was a page it's weird it's a group we'll have to also look at the um uh, the first big set of documents that Dan Hinnon got, because uh, it does have a lot of David's social media posts in there, and you can see if okay. if it is if there's anything in there or not. Yeah, I'm definitely matching up. God, that's gonna take forever. Yeah, I know. So much information. <laughs> we need yeah, some help. So we need some help. <laughs> So here's another one. We're at 1222. He's going back to Danny. Ma oh, he's looking at Danny Mason as a part of the group, as a part of the, um, oh, that's interesting. I'm thinking that maybe Danny August Mason was like one of the admins. For the group, for the rise. That makes sense. Possibly. Yeah. Is that a group? Maybe it is a group. I don't know. Or the page. I, I always, or... Yeah, I always thought all of those were... I think everything I've commented on and got kicked out of, I think they were pages. Maybe they were groups. I don't know. I wasn't in there that long. I know that. But these are definitely groups here. <laughs> Some of this stuff is groups. Interesting. Yeah, because it says group number was. So yeah. I'm, I'm willing to bet that he was an admin for that also with David. And he probably was getting removed off of it. Yeah. David could have been making it private, like like you said too. Maybe that's why I'm having a hard time finding some of that stuff. That's that's some pre pre planning. Um, yeah, that's pretty interesting. But it's because it's not just with the rise; it's also with the other, uh, the diet the dietitian one. That could be why we can't find that one either. Running a, a search, mm -hmm. you could have made them both. Oh, private. and then the print. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then there's the Prince of Darkness for Chapter Dan Younger. Yeah, yeah, oh, it's like goodness. maybe 20 minutes, maybe like, maybe like an hour, right? About a little over an hour later. There's this search on here, WebHP, Chrome on Chrome. Okay. 
Prince of Darkness. That's kind of a weird thing to just say. Hey, I'm just gonna search for Prince of Darkness. Okay, let's Google search it. <laughs> Please, I don't, I'm afraid what'll come up here. That's pretty creepy. You have I don't to know. like totally. You have to do it on Chrome. Make sure you're on Chrome. Three. Yeah. On Chrome. Yeah. Make sure you're on okay. Chrome because he's on Chrome. And then go to first start at Google.com, and then put in Prince of Darkness and see what comes up. Obama. No, I'm just kidding. Twelve twenty-two. Uh, wow. That's a. That's weird. It's so odd. So he's probably searching, scrolling, looking, different things. I mean, this isn't just a few. These, this is extensive. Let's see, 2057, 35. That's the same time. 39, 58. Yeah, these are all different searches. It's crazy stuff. Oh, it's a movie. It's actually a movie, a horror movie. Prince of Darkness. Well, he's big into movies. A 1987 <laughs> horror supernatural film. On YouTube. 1987, you said? Mm-hmm. And he had looked up the wiki on that, I think. Yikes. I would play... Oh, it's a John Carpenter. Interesting. And it's not the first John Car Carpenter <laughs> thing that he's mentioned. Donald Pleasance, wow. Well, that's pretty interesting, for sure. I've never seen that one. I can, I mean, based on the title, you can pretty much figure out what yeah. it is. Yeah. <laughs> Alice Cooper is in that, wow. Well, Okay. They Live, which is one of my and ultimate what, favorite movies. They Live. Um, what time was it that he searched for that? So it's possible they could have. Okay, been so watching that, but... yeah, I mean, there's a lot of searches though. There's like there's a few different times that the search happens. So the first one looks like. Twenty fifty seven. But that's UTC, so you'd have to you'd have to convert from UTC to uh uh would that be central? I think central time. Let's see. Central time. Hey bees it bees. Beastress? 3.57 p.m. 3.57 p.m.? Uh-huh. Right. Beatrice says, uh, Strange Times, Prince of Darkness, 1987, Horror, Supernatural. Creepy. Okay, so... UTC... Okay, that's interesting. I'm just going to keep that open in case I need to look back at that. Um, so that's an afternoon search. Okay. Mm -hmm. And there's like one, there's two, there's three. So what, what is he looking for? Like video, the actual video or something? Or I can't, hard to tell on this. I'm not quite sure. Yeah. It's hard to tell. Them. Them. It's a lot of coding. Maybe he was playing on some of the videos or looking deeper to see what the movie was about, the cast. Yeah. It's hard to tell. Parapsychology, WordPress, Prince of Darkness. Right there. Right where your mouse is. Oh, a little bit paranormal. Right, there, yeah. right here. Paranormal psychology. Paranormal psychology dot files dot wordpress dot com. And then the Prince of Darkness there. Interesting. The 
International Library of Paranormal Psychology. Is there a search here? Special report. Okay, so I keep that open for a second. Prince of Dark. Uh, search this dictionary. And I think just type in Prince of Darkness in that one. If you go back to the other screen. Okay. reveals anything. Prince of Darkness title the devil. The International Library of Paranormal Psychology. Title of the Devil. So what is title? Third sorry is from the Catholic belief system. It is a title of the devil. I don't know if he's looking at the movie. He's but there's really nothing here though. Devil, Prince of Dark, Prince of Title of the Devil. Interesting. Uh, darkness is the opposite of light. God is light. Huh. Maybe there's an older. Yeah. There's. Maybe there's a different. We would have to copy, literally copy and paste this whole thing. And it probably would come up. Can we do that? Ah, uh, this computer is not allowing me here from where I am right yeah, here. Yeah, I, I can't do that on a cell phone. I would have to get on a computer and try. I don't know if I can or not. I'm not the one typing. Yeah. It is fascinating to see what the searches were, especially since right. people made that sound like he was researching, <clears throat> writing on the wall and stuff like that. And, uh, but you see, when you look at it, he was just planning for the future and just doing regular searches like lyrics to a song and watching videos just typical everyday stuff yeah i've never heard of the azlyrics.com lyrics not a surf killian's red not a surf killian's red what the heck is that it, it's a um, it's a song um I briefly looked at it the other day. Not a surf, Killian's right. I don't know if I can play this without getting a another YouTube stream. In the sunshine. Definitely can't play that. <laughs> kind of has David Crowley feel. I haven't heard the song. I mean, I probably have. I just don't recognize the name. I wish we could play it, but YouTube would ding us so fast. Yeah, I know. I better not play it. <laughs> How dare you? Uh, okay, well, we'll have to... I don't know. It sounds like another rock band or something. Let's see, Beatrice, is it Beatrice? I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Is all of the search made by David Crowley truly something tells me that maybe some things have been removed? Interesting. Yeah, that's what we're kind of looking for is for somebody who would know, like a hacker or somebody who knows more about that stuff, uh, knows coding, um, to see if there's anything in here that would tell us what type, what type of software would they need to kind of um for the police to kind of do that which i do believe sophia don't they say that that they were able to find anything even if it was de deleted yeah yes that's what the search warrants cover uh like deleted text 
deleted apps, just all kinds of things okay. they were looking for. I wonder if that would include searches, though, and things like that. I guess if it's a history, it could, but then they could be wiped from the history that, that they have here, too. I don't know. They'd have to really do some deep, deep, deep diving. I'm not even sure how to do all of that uh, to completely erase a search. That's pretty easy. You can. I can I, do it right the, now. I can go these three dots and clear it out. But I don't know if that's if whatever software they're using, if that will take it out. You know what I mean? The blacklight uh, software. Yeah. Let me Google what it does. Because it's coming from their computer, but it's not coming from the internet. I don't know. I I don't know. That's that's beyond my. It's beyond my knowledge, but it's something to think about, and hopefully somebody out there kind of knows and can help us with that. So Satanic Verses, he's looking up another, here's another Google search that you were talking about, Satanic Verses on Wikipedia. Uh, what is that? Satanic. I thought that was that one from that one book. Satanic Verses. Uh, what, what are we looking at now? The, the satanic oh, for yeah, yeah someone so so he has this book in his house the satanic verses which people tell me it's not really about satan it's really about muslims right yes that's actually right um catherine and i were looking at that the other day interesting Answer and uh about. Yeah, it even on the screen that you just had up that showed that. Um, yeah. And that was the 23rd. So, Did yeah. he ever go back to it? I don't know. He moves on from there, or whoever did this moved mm -hmm. on from there, and is more about the satanic verses on, on this website, Answering Islam. Dot org with Han Satanic Verses. So he's looking at that. He's kind of diving a little deeper. And then CNN. Why? <laughs> that's, that's where to go from. What's the time difference in that? 627 UTC time. Uh... And then another hour, an hour later, you're looking at it. He's brave. I, I, I can't stand seeing him. I couldn't even watch it. I know. Even if it was just to see whatever they're doing, whatever they're up to. So it's CNN World News. Interesting. Hmm. Trying to keep up with the news, the mainstream news, which, I mean, in his line, line of work, he definitely should. New contribution to Gray State. So they're still getting contributions up until the 24th? Wow. Well, that should clear in in his um, new contribution. Well, I mm, guess that bank account. Yeah, if it's money. I mean, I guess that could just be somebody contributing, not necessarily financially. But if it's a financial, financial contribution, I wonder how all that works. I don't know. How far back do the financial records go do you know it's still kind of a mess to me it doesn't seem like it's in a lot of order but i think july okay uh it, okay and what day was that that was the 24th mm -hmm. I'm not sure it's going to be on that account this is an yeah this is some an email to him looks like it doesn't really say who it's from or anything Oh, well, here we go. Ego, let's see. That's 12.55. That's a few minutes later. So I, I'm curious what the contribution is, if that means, you know, financial contribution to whatever they had going on. Was there a Kickstarter? Was there something like that? Is there a place where people can donate to Gray State? That's pretty interesting. 
EagleKick.com. Realistic cartoon characters that will change your childhood. It's looking at that again on the 24th. I am not seeing anything. And his hothead, I think, was zeroed out. I'm not exactly sure. Wait, uh, all I'm seeing is just reoccurring transfers all around that time. Hmm. It could be money coming in, money coming out, maybe. Is there Are there any deposits with solid numbers, no... No decimal points. I'm not sure. Hold on a second. Could be one of those. They have several different accounts to look at, all with this one with Wells Fargo. So I'm right. scrolling through it. Okay, this is just transaction. Yeah, I'll send. I'll put the uh, link in the um, chat message in the chat, the live chat right now. So if anybody wants to go and um, check out this document, I I really think you know I felt like this with the um, with the crime scene photos. The more eyes we have on this, the more answers we'll get. And something like this, I think, is. Uh, it's going to be pretty much the same thing. We may even get more answers. So the more people we have looking at this document that I'm going to post in the live chat here, the better, I I think. Um, so let me know if you can receive did, that. On the 19th, he did a deposit from Hothead Productions for $250. And then... He deposited two hundred online transfer from David Crowley savings. That was deposited into their account. Um, there's like five different pages I'm looking at. Mm -hmm. so give me a second. Yeah, if there's nothing for the twenty fourth. I mean, it should either be the 23rd, 24th, or 25th. And that's if it's going directly to his bank account or something, too. You know, um, the donations could be going to a shared account. I'm not sure. I don't know if we tried to, to do, if we tried to donate to the Gray State today, if they had that option, where would that go, you know? But I do believe that their channel is actually a monetized channel, so... That's why I don't really encourage people to go there to their YouTube channel. Because <laughs> I know who's running those channels and it's the same people who think David Crowley is guilty. I wouldn't want to give them my clicks, my my views, so give them my money pretty much. <laughs> no thanks. I'm just not seeing anything for that time frame. Okay. Good to know. Good to know there. So, anyways, it, it may not be a financial contribution, uh, but who knows? We will find out for sure. Here's another interesting one. If you look at page 38, uh, 1224 on 1224, Chris, Christmas Eve. So, 342 UTC, because if I don't figure this out, I'm gonna, it's going to drive me crazy. Um, 324. So, what do I do? I put in 3... I don't know if UTC is AM or PM. It doesn't say. Well, no, that would be AM because it's military, right? So 324. And to CST time, 12.04. Okay, so that would be 9. 24 PM. 9.24 PM. Okay. I mean, this is. <sighs> Sometimes I'll, I'll do this on uh, YouTube late at, late at night and just kind of watch. I stopped doing this about a couple months ago, but I used to, um, if I was really bored or couldn't sleep, I'd watch some of these, the par paranormal videos, ghost videos, things like that on YouTube. So he's doing that. I mean, that's obviously not that late, I guess, for him. Um, but abandoned places that will make your skin crawl. <laughs> 
That's pretty yeah, interesting. I'm good on that. <laughs> I don't, I'm just good on that. I, I really don't need it in my life. I have no idea what would ever prompt me to do that, but I did it several times. And finally, I'm like, why am I? Why am I doing this? <laughs> this makes no sense. <laughs> it's just I don't know. To me, it's just like it. it yeah, I don't know. A lot it, of a lot of that stuff does seems, not seem real that I've seen on YouTube, by the way. Well, it just seemed like Kamel and him liked horror movies. They, but they also liked comedies too. Right. So, I mean, maybe it was just something that they do. I know my daughter and her husband. They watch the weirdest crap. <laughs> you know, on YouTube, they spend all afternoon watching it. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, I'm going to my room because some of it is just so dumb. It's like paranormal stuff, but it's like obviously fake. Mm -hmm. And they're just having a deep conversation about it. It's so weird. <laughs> well, here's another one, um, DogTube. I've never heard of DogTube, but I guess if you go to dogtube.us, 20 things dog owners do that cause their dogs to misbehave. Uh, I mean... There, there you go, you know. But it's not 20 things dogs owners do to try to shoot their dog before they kill themselves and kill their family and kill everyone else. But they miss the, the dog somehow. It's pretty crazy. Like, uh, uh, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> there's so much here that it's just... When the police are going through this... Who, I wonder what detectives are actually who they are. What that, man? I'd love to get some statements, some quotes from the the detectives that had to go through this. And I guess it would be the one, maybe Brian Bone. I think he's the one who said we looked at everything and couldn't find anything. Um, but whoever, whatever detective was tasked with with actually going through the the internet log uh, and then logging all this stuff too, you know, doing all this stuff. At the end of it, they got to be like, wait a minute, there's, you know, there's definitely something, something wrong here. And, uh -huh. I mean, how could they not know, you know? That's pretty interesting. It's a li liability issue at that point, I guess. But And so, as everybody can see, there's just this normal search history and mm -hmm. it goes all the way up to the 25th late on the 25th so. Napoleon Napoleon Hill what the hell is that Self-help author. He's a writer. He's known for books, Think and Grow Rich. Ten best-selling books. Interesting. Improving one's life. Interesting. Wow. Good stuff there. He's got his quotes. So he's looking up some of his quotes. For something, then it's back to the Rise Group. After that, that's page forty that we're looking at here. Back to the group, to the group activity, to see what the group is doing, pretty much. Huh. And then, okay, here's the one you were talking about: RaptureChrist.com backslash woman. Oh, we're going to need the Wayback Machine for this. What that? Is that secure? Okay, that's okay. Huh, yeah, we need the Wayback for that one. Uh, unless it's... Which one is that? Because I might have been able to find it for you. The, the Rapture Christ one? Yeah, that's, I have that. I'll send it to you. Okay. Just curious why it's not coming up unless I'm not doing it right. Rapture That's the group. one with the woman with the 12 stars and... That's weird. I can't get that. That we were talking. 
Yeah, I can't get it to come up. HTTP. Did you look at that recently? Yeah, I was just looking at it just now. What? Why is it not coming up online? Here, I just sent it to you on Messenger. Okay. Here, I think my browser doesn't want doesn't want me to go there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can't look at it. Uh, possible causes. It doesn't like HTTP. I know that, but so what? Who cares? Yeah, it doesn't like Rapture. It must be um. Must be something else. Okay, I have to go here. It's a non secure site. Um, which is stupid. The Rapture? Is that what it is? Or just Rapture? Let's see, this takes me to Rapture 2. I guess my question is is this like a Christian? site who's what's going on here what's their mission let me look at their mission statement here mission is to alert people that there is not much time for preparation before the rapture occurs christ told us that his coming would be like in the days of noah uh oh like in the days of lot noah warned people uh oh while he was constructing the ark lot had less time to warn what? people of some of the Oh, when that when I hear this phrase, like in the days of Noah, this reminds me mm -hmm. of um, people that predict the end of the world. Um, I used to work for a place like that. I think that was the title of his book, "In the Days of Noah," <laughs> like the days of Noah or something like that. And he made but a lot of. That's not actually what he was looking at, though. That's interesting, though. If you could. Um, just send me that link, please. Uh, just send it to Catherine and I, please. Okay. All right. Because this is interesting. Okay. We'll come back to that. I know I can't stay up too late. Um, I know you probably can't either, but... uh will circle back. <laughs> <laughs> this is a lot Sorry. here. <laughs> Where is Spartan Fidelity? Okay, and that's 1224. Yeah, to me, like those last days, because Mason Hendricks kind of set up the anticipation. You know, if you read mm -hmm. the if you read the last searches, look at his last Google searches. And of course, he was acting like I had already done that, or like I would I would be able to. It only took me seven years, I guess, to look at it for somebody to you know, and show me this, but, um, I don't know, it just sounds like another rabbit hole, another dead end from him, you know, not really a dead end, I guess a misdirection, maybe, <laughs> I can't think of the right word, it's mm -hmm. too late, Justin Kinsey, I have no idea who that is, but that's interesting, and we also have Old Chick, has joined us uh is it just me or is it blurry let me know if it's if it's blurry it could just be the the document um i'm looking at i mean on my phone it looks okay i guess if you're on your phone or if, if you're um make sure that the quality setting for youtube is also set to the highest quality that could be it too so just make sure <laughs> make sure that that's uh that's the best setting but yeah um it does kind of look like it's maybe photocopied or something or scanned okay mm -hmm. okay that makes sense yeah a lot of the stuff that they sent us was scanned and it's kind of blurry and crooked and you right. know just low quality <laughs> i am grateful for it though i mean so i won't go and be too harsh <laughs> Justin Clancy. He was looking at a Facebook page for that, and I tried to put the um, the address in, mm -hmm. 
and it just it did nothing on my Facebook. Okay, you put the uh, whole thing in. Mhm. Mm yeah, I wonder. And it just and nothing happened, huh? Yeah. No. Interesting. And then I tried looking him up, and there was a lot of people with that name. So I honestly don't know who he was trying to find. Yeah, or why? Because that could be a key there. Um, this is another good one to put in when you're logged into Facebook, obviously, you know, um, but this photo one here too, what do we see? There's a few photos. I was looking at mm -hmm. some photos at that time, 1920. So let's see. What was this 24 hours? So 19, 20, and that would be. Thirteen. Okay, so one twenty p.m. Daytime. Lots of daytime stuff here on Christmas Eve, and nobody's seeing them. And it's weird because the police said that he was staying up late <laughs> and on his computer late, but these were a lot of daytime searches. Yeah. Guardian. Does it look like he's on the computer a lot? I mean, mm. or is he like doing a search and then leaving and coming back and doing another search? It's pretty regular. Some of the stuff is pretty regular. I mean, some of the weird things you have here is where you have uh, the the visit time. Is the visit time? Last twelve, nineteen twenty six fourteen, and then it's not really in order. It's kind of backwards. Hmm. Bader, that is familiar. I think I think I'd look that one up. Bader Airlines, Battle of Bader, uh, more Muslim ties, Muslim searches, things like that. And I have to wonder if that just goes back to what was going on in the world at that time. Maybe there was an attack or something, because he seems to be circling around those churches and just a thought mm -hmm. if we can google that Bader. Uh, so this is what he was looking at here b-a-d-r wow there's a lot of them though so it could be geez it could be any of these look at how many places there are with they're all kind of in the Middle East. Even in Jerusalem, though. That's interesting. Egypt, Libya, Saudi Arabia, where um, Kamel was born. I think Sidra was born there, too. I forget. Battle of Bad. Uh... Interesting. There could be a lot of stuff there. Something here they're looking at. Best sure, Bader. Why does that sound familiar? Mm, Urdu language. Yeah, there's something there. It's pretty interesting. The problem is there's too much there. <laughs> so what you would mm -hmm. expect next is to see, okay, he looked, okay, Bader, Iraq. Okay, page 43. So something to do with Iraq and Bader. But on here, there's no Iraq. Beta organization, a political party in Iraq. Uh, Iraq divisions will delay counter offensive on Islamic State. That was December 1st, 2014. Hmm.
Uh, I'm looking still. Uh, there's one for December 26. Uh, are the U.S. and Iraq on the same side in Iraq? Hmm. Middle East. Yeah, so it's probably related to that. Here's something on the Drudge Report, too. He's just looking at the... Yeah, because you can go to the main Drudge Report page and just... Well, he, didn't, he didn't find anything, whatever he was looking for. Then the next day, 1225, okay. Spirit, Spirit Science and Metaphysics. Top five things you didn't know about Christmas and probably should. Oh, great. I can imagine what that is. I tried to find that <laughs> article and could not. Top five things so we you didn't do know that about on the way back machine. Okay. <laughs> We're going to need the way back machine for a lot, it looks like. Um, mm hmm. Uh, ten things you should know about Christmas. No top five things. Yeah, it's way back. Way, way back. All right. Aleister Crowley. I mean, <laughs> there you go. We've been, you know, he's even commented on that too, how people try to connect him to, to Aleister Crowley because of his name. And maybe he finally started looking deeper into it. But I think that's a pretty weird one. And the witchcraft here too. And this is, um, let's see, 23, 17, 23, 17. All right, so that's um, 5.17 p.m. A lot of this stuff is all daytime stuff. I mean, it's weird because you're like, okay, he's looking at Baluster Crowley, but then you look at the website, and the website is called JesusIsSavior.com. So, huh. and then Wicca, Witchcraft, Aleister Crowley. I mean, why? Aleister Crowley exposed. So it's, it's kind of like exposing Aleister Crowley. Well, yeah, because you know what? If he's going to be rich and famous, if he's going to be out there, once people, you know, if he's at these these Hollywood L.A. parties, et cetera, et cetera, once, they, once he says his last name, that's, you know, every, everybody's going to ask about Aleister Crowley and all that stuff. So, but that's mm -hmm. pretty interesting that that is um, that day. So he's alive at this time or somebody is alive at this time working on this computer here on 1225. And then that's basically it, right? I mean, that doesn't... Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. All right. So he's looking to expose uh, the truth about Aleister Crowley, basically. That is the last search. And then he does the myth doc. And, well, if he did it, and then that's basically all the activity. The other stuff was uh, going through the journal, but like you said, it could have been backed up or somebody just scrolling through it. Yeah, here was another good one about the myth um, where he wrote, I have loved you all with all of my heart. This is part of a project. It's not a... Um, it's not a suicide note. It's not something that he just right. This is this is in new projects. It's in Dropbox. It's backed up. Boy, that size. Um, three sixty one kilobytes. That's small. I don't know if that would be. I wish I had a word count. The word count should just be a few. You know, I don't have to look that up. That's bites though. That's big. That's a little bigger. Three hundred sixty-one bites. He know. was working on the script. It's in one of the photos 
um, next to the computer on a clipboard stand. There's, yeah, there's the Hera thing, right? So, I think so. Yeah, so it's like, okay, so what was written on his laptop, I have loved you all with all of my heart, could be, like you said, it could be part of um, be part of the script, be part of the story here. Mm -hmm. Nothing more. Curious that they don't really mention that, um, but whatever. It's not their job to point out every little detail that helps prove David Crowley innocent, apparently, just to point out any speculation that would lead people to falsely believe that he's guilty. So that would be a good, um, that would be a great document to have. It was created on 1215. Hmm. I mean, that's a long, created on 1215. It's sitting there for, uh, for days? I don't know. For another 10 days, just sitting there with nothing in it. That seems weird. But this is a project. You can clearly see that. It's something that is backed up to Dropbox. It's not something that he just randomly wrote on his laptop. I think that's pretty clear. Look at page 45 and decide for yourself. Uh, let's do a few yep. more. Unless you have anything else, I'm going to close this one out here. Um, just check check the comments too. Um, we do need a time. Yeah, we do need a time machine for sure. Um, we can make that a different show. Okay. Put everything through that, but I'm gonna have to wrap this up soon. Okay. Yeah, me too. I need to. <laughs> I need to. I was supposed to be in bed like 20 minutes ago. So, all right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> a new but project means he was planning for the future, not planning to end it all. Exactly. It's a great place to end it. Yeah. Yep, and we'll come back. Um, we just went through quickly some of the first 45 pages. Uh, Sophia, any final comments? Uh, when we come back, I will have a photo. Well, actually, I'll send it to you so you can show the listeners of his script that's next to the computer. Nice. And uh, it looks like there was a bunch of papers behind it. So he was working on an outline for that. Hmm. So, interesting. Anyway. That's great. Interesting how they would try to use that as uh, one of the quote-unquote notes that doesn't explain anything, but then some people still believe that it is a suicide note. I think this pretty much puts that to rest for any of us doubters there. <laughs> yeah. Yep. All right, my friend, uh, good to chat with you, and I am going to end this live stream here.
you not stop? There we go. Going, going. Let's see. I believe we are live. Uh, I waiting for... Yeah, I, I see you. Okay. Yeah, Why do I hear myself? <clears throat> okay, there we go. Auto play. Wait. I, I see you. Okay. Yeah, Why do I hear myself? How's, mm -hmm. how's the sound on YouTube? Okay, there we go. Sounds like Charlie Brown. Does it? Yeah, I can hear myself. Let's see what to do this here. Yeah, I mean, I could hear you before on YouTube, of course, with the delay, you know. Okay. It was just weird. I could hear myself. Yeah, I mean, I could hear you. Before. See, now I can hear you for some reason. We should try oh. this earlier. <laughs> just wondering if it's because yeah, I mean, I could hear you before. testing one, out two, here too. Testing one, two, one, two. Yep, you're there. Okay. I hear me. Everybody hears me. I can hear all of you. Welcome. I hear you. How do we sound? Welcome. I hear you fine. <laughs> How do we sound? See, I hear myself. Okay, now you're muffled. I hear everything yeah, just fine. Yeah, I mean, it, it sounds just clear on, on my end. It's just weird. I can hear myself in a delay or something. Test one, two, one, two, one, two. Testing one, two, and three. We will begin here shortly. Just verifying. Mary says that she can hear all of us just fine. Just fine. Okay. Thank you, Mary. As long as it's coming through YouTube, fine. See, now I hear myself. I'm on YouTube. Well, you're going to have, pro or don't you have to mute your YouTube to um, turn your sound off because you're, you're going to hear the delay. I thought I did, though. It looks like it's off. Oh, okay. See, I'm looking at it here. Uh, what happens if. Yeah, because I don't hear an echo or anything, I hear just you talking. Well, I've muted YouTube as well, but yeah, I only hear you. Okay, so just testing my argument. Did we lose you, Greg? I'm still here. Okay. Okay, I'm just going to run with it. As long as everything is okay in YouTube, as long as you're, anyone in YouTube is not hearing a um, delay or anything like that, I think we're good to go. So please, if you are, please let me know. Or else, here we are. How's everybody doing? Tired. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Glad to hear it. Stay tired. Um, it's it's going to be, uh, yeah, pretty interesting, uh, interesting thing here. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and start. Um, thanks to everybody who has joined us, um, everybody in our chat, and everyone that is watching this on the replay, everybody around 
the whole world. I know it, this is a different time zone, so we can never, there's no way we're ever going to match it up where everybody's time zones kind of match, but we're going to do the best that we possibly can. So um, this is late for the USA and very, very early for our UK listeners, and I know we have a lot of UK listeners. UK is number two, Australia is number three, and um, then there's just a ton of other of other places that kind of Canada too so oh Canada I know we have a lot of great people there so tonight we are going to um, be talking about the ballad of Tony Floyd now if you don't know who Tony Floyd is that's exactly what we're going to talk about and how does Tony Floyd relate to the David Crowley case and the accusations against David Crowley and if you want to go directly to the website that we're going to reference just go to crowleyfamilydeaths.neocities.org lots of documents lots of things that we found there um, a couple days ago Tony posted into the Justice for David Crowley and Family Facebook group and that's what we're going to be talking about tonight uh, obviously one of the first things at the very top he wants to make sure to stop playing detective which is a very good um, very good quote so I wanted to add that in here as well and this is what he posted I believe it was Monday if I remember correctly this past Monday um, he posted the link and he said file dump of public records as people like to play games and get territorial I don't support your cause so at first I was a little confused about what this was what I was looking at here um, and uh, so it was I was very confused about this whole thing now um, Tony Floyd had joined the group maybe a couple you know a day before, a day be- it was he, a day before. was it yeah and he had created it, this is a fake uh, account obviously um, this was created like about maybe eight minutes before he tried to join the group so usually I don't do that usually I'll kind of you know, I'm a little skeptical, but I figured, no, let's let's see where this where this goes. And I'm glad I did. I'm glad I did mm-hmm. because this is what, what we got here. Um so this is also you know, go ahead. I'd like to say something yeah. for the record. Uh I'd like to thank Tony for this website. It's eye opening to say the least. I also want to say that we, um, admins and myself, received everything except for the ME photograph. We received it all a couple weeks ago, but and we were releasing it a little bit at a time. And I know that we were redacting some things from the journal that uh, Apple Valley had overlooked. And that's the only reason why we hadn't released it yet to the group. But we already had most of this stuff. And uh, we're still waiting for even more records, like over 7,000 pages worth. Wow. So, and when that comes in, that will be available to the group once we go through it and make sure sensitive material like uh, addresses and certain phone numbers are redacted and uh, sensitive in the nature of uh, uh, personal. (laughs) (laughs) Is that the right word to use for this? (laughs) Uh, Intimate. Intimate. Stuff is redacted. (laughs) There we go, intimate. And I know you and Catherine uh, have a different view on that than, than I do. Catherine, any thoughts on that? Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, I am probably the farthest thing you will find from a prude, but this, what was in there, I just, because it it was so personal, and I mean, what goes on between a husband and wife is nobody's damn business, and not even my own, um, and so that stuff, I just don't, it added nothing to um, the, con- the the real context of what David was saying and the parts that mattered. 
So what they did, how they did it, you know, all that, it's none of our business and that really, it should remain private. Um, and again, because how many of us want prying eyes, you know, in your bedrooms? And that's pretty much what's going on. You might as well just open up, you know, your entire house and, and do whatever it is you do with, with windows wide open and everybody can stare in. And I don't think anybody wants that. So, yeah, I I would never be okay with, with um, releasing those intimate details. I, I just never will. And I know that we had debated within our just ourselves about releasing the journal itself because it is so highly personable but we knew that real researchers who care about this case would want to know certain information in regards to what David wrote I can tell you right now it doesn't show him spiraling into darkness uh, like the documentary says, or all the news articles says, uh, there are, I mean, he's, he's writing about deeply personal things. And if I ever kept a diary, I wouldn't want it plastered everywhere. So I feel very conflicted about having this put out. It, it does help. But I feel very conflicted about it. Yes, yeah. sir. We received these by FOIA request. Who do you think did a better job at redacting? Tony or the AVPD? Tony. <laughs> <laughs> Without a doubt, it was Tony. <laughs> and, and that's why we didn't post the one that we received to the group because we weren't done redacting. And Tony's is redacted so we were like okay well we'll just let uh, the one that's on this website be available to everybody so yep and that website we had wanted to redact the addresses like the GPS uh, stuff and like I said a few things intimate details uh, that Apple Valley had overlooked by accident and uh, so those were the things that we were still trying to get taken care of. But we had released the um, internet searches, and that was really helpful because that also showed that David was not Googling the things that uh, Lisa Hendricks said that he was Googling. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and that's why I think, you know, um, when we get to that point where the journal actually is going to set a lot of things straight and it shows you know just the amount of lies that were told by the gray state guys and david yeah. explains in his own words what he did why he did it and um like you said it wasn't a, a spiral into depression and it, all that garbage that you hear from everybody else but you know again uh, um I, and I, I just, I can't stress this enough. I think anybody who puts the personal stuff online needs to have their personal issues and their intimate details and everything photographed, videotaped, recorded, and then stuck online. You know, because then how would, you know, that, yeah. I, okay, I feel strongly about it. I guess that's enough to be said. That's great. I mean, he was, he was conflicted in a lot of ways and he struggled. But what person doesn't? Exactly. And what person isn't conflicted about certain things? Yeah. But this is being used against him mm -hmm. in the worst way. I mean, they have totally flipped this around and said, okay, this is what proves his guilt. No, it doesn't. It just proves he's human. Yep. So, Okay. Uh, that that website. Shall we get on with the website? Yeah, that website. Anybody can go there. Go to CrowleyFamilyDeaths.NeoCities.org. Uh, uh, so I got the link up here, um, and that's what we're going to go over here. But everybody can go there and check it out for themselves. I don't think there's any any malware or anything like that on this website. Uh, so 
we were able to download all of this stuff so if you're not comfortable downloading it there we will have it to where you can download it in other places but um, you know because Tony put this out please think think about downloading it there hey defro I want to say hey to Derek and I want to say hey to Mary as well and everybody else in the chat um, defro says Tony Floyd my hero shout out Tony Floyd yeah yep I was thinking that too um, defro I was thinking the exact same thing I was like okay first it was Red Ron he was my hero then it was a soldier who served with David named Mac he was my second hero and then we have Tony Tony Floyd here so all different all you know talking about different thing different different data and stuff but it really shows how deep that this goes regardless of your view on David Crowley and we're gonna see how different Tony's view is from um, the justice for David Crowley and family Facebook group this guy is a is a class act uh, whoever this person is is a class act and I don't know <laughs> go ahead I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you okay. off, but I wanted to um, echo what uh, um, Sophia was saying and what you just said. Um, even though Tony is on the opposite end of the spectrum of this from us, it takes someone of class and someone with some ethics to be able to say, you know what, I don't agree with your stance, and in fact, I, I will vehemently disagree. However, everyone should have the same information. So that that truly is a rarity these days. So thank you so much, Tony. Yeah, and I mean, why hide information? Right. If you, if these people actually believe believe that this information proved David guilty, why not put it out there to shut us up? But instead, they greedily held on to it yep. like even to the point where they watermarked information <laughs> and said that they owned the rights to these Copyright. yeah which you can't even legally do that is a total that is against the law what they did wow and you know that they they're <laughs> they are treading a fine line you can't take a photograph someone wants from someone else's work um, especially um, the BCA, right? <laughs> this is their mm -hmm. work. And they put your watermark on it. That is actually illegal. So, I mean, <laughs> anyway, yeah. if they had really wanted to prove David's guilt and they thought for 100% that this proved his guilt, they would have shown it to everybody to shut us up. But instead, no, they wanted the drama. It's the secret anyway, knowledge, huh? The information's here now, and we're going to go over it with you guys. Yep. So, Greg? Yeah, I'm, I'm not a big fan of the secret knowledge, or we have the data, but you, you can't have it. You know, I've never really been a fan mm -hmm. of, of that. Um, that uh, those carrots have been dangled before us for since the case really first started and it's sad that some people actually fell fell for it and took it and then yeah. just kind of you know sat on it i don't know how long this information has has been sat on um it sounds like a very long time and that is not good that's not cool and um that is probably the most frustrating thing with with me that's that's my real big beef is how long um this information was sat on um and why we're going to talk about this too why only certain derek brought it up too why only certain people are getting certain data um and that is not cool either right because the apple valley police and they they know this that's why they're being pretty quiet right now um they know mm -hmm. that they they cannot pick and choose what type of data that they get so, um, you know, I don't know what, what, I don't know if you two have reached out to the Apple Valley. Um, you're definitely free to talk about whatever you want to talk about there. But when I reached out to them and um, I'm still expecting some more data, I wanted to make sure that what they're seeing here, what I'm seeing here, what we're going to talk about should be included in the data that um, we're still waiting for. So let's hope it is. It should be. Or else there's a there's some legal problems there you know there's some not only fairness whatever you want to say but again it's like 
you either give it it's either public or it's not but you don't get to say who 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 gets it and who doesn't get it that's just not how that's not how those statutes work and i think even tony covers that so um then a few days later this was yesterday uh tony floyd mm -hmm. wanted to correct so he posted in the group for a second i think he's only posted twice here in the group so far that i've seen um and so what he posted yesterday to clear some things up i don't agree with this group's theorization of what happened i originally sided with facts versus fiction because of aligned beliefs even regarding the disclosure of ma materials and lack thereof after dealing with their lies he's talking about the facts versus fiction after dealing with their lies exclusion and patronizing tones i eventually got sick of them and have published these materials as i disagree with their hypocritical attempt at a virtue signaling especially i lost my train of thought uh, virtue signaling monopoly, virtue especially signaling after monopoly. receiving threats and attempts at slander. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Attempts at slander. Uh, oh, okay, here we go. This is a gross oversimplification, but I doubt anyone cares much. If the blame is to fall on anyone, it was their responsibility to not start a game of chicken with the release of materials under quote unquote my name. Lots of stuff to cover here. What do you guys think about? about all of this he's very frustrated um and I, it, I see it as as a man i'm assuming it's a man um who you know what they they pushed him they pushed him too far and he's like you know what you don't own me and i'm not going to hide this because this is what i feel everybody should see and so he just said up yours i'm doing it and then you know he did it. Yeah. I have to admire him because he's actually calling them out for who they really are. I mean, these people, they will slander you. They will threaten you. They will threaten your family. Yep. Uh, you know, and they feel that they have the right to do that because we are looking into this case. Do you think the family has um, told him to do that, to do those things? They claim that they are protecting the family. By I don't know us. if the family has asked them to do it or not. Jeez. And honestly, they're liars. And even Tony will say that, that they are liars. And the fact that they claim that you and Dan hide evidence of David's guilt, but in reality, they're the ones who are hiding evidence from other people. I mean, how hypocritical is that? That is their one reason for why they don't like you or Dan and why they turn other people against you guys is because they're saying that you and Dan have evidence, and I know for a fact that this is not true, because I have been submitting FOIAs to Apple Valley, to the BCA, to the um, Sheriff's Department there in Dakota County, and everything that I have received back does not show guilt for David, and there is nothing that we have hidden from the group. We have posted everything once we've gone through and removed sensitive information. So it's complete and utter BS, and it's a tactic that they're using to turn people against the justice group. It's a very shady tactic. And it's not working. Let's be honest. It's it's not working. It's only helping us. <laughs> just, like yeah, Eric, in, just like Eric Nelson. In, yeah. um, can I... Uh, yeah. Also, I wanted to say that... Um, you know, yes, we did receive um, a lot of this information uh, about a week or so ago, um, maybe a little bit longer. But again, we weren't holding on to it because we don't want to share it. We are holding on to it to make sure that nothing inappropriate gets out. 
you know, anything and everything that is absolutely pertinent to the case needs to stay in, but, you know, we're not trying to hide information. We're just trying to redact the stuff that didn't quite get redacted very well from the police department. Now, if they're redacting it, that means they don't want anybody to see it. Unfortunately, we could still see some of it, so, you know, and there, there's the difference. We don't, as far as I know, the, our group is not about hiding information. It's ridiculous. Yeah, I'll be honest with you. Um, this data, you know, I just received um, the documents here personally. I just received them a, a couple days ago. Yeah, maybe yesterday, mm -hmm. Wednesday, whenever yep, Wednesday, I don't know, they know what day it is. But um, uh, I'll be honest with you, if I would have received it first, I probably would have just put it out the way it is. Um, with everything the way it is. And maybe I would have regretted that two days later, four days later. I mean, who knows? I don't, I don't know. But um, it's not i don't want to withhold any information there's no need to withhold any anything if i don't have if people don't have it if i haven't put it out there it's because i don't have it yet um what i what i get i usually just want to just put it out there uh, the only and i guess that's where you and i kind of split hairs because if um it's not uh, for me it's not withholding information it was redacted but it was poorly redacted and just because it yeah. was poorly redacted doesn't mean I should go and let out another person's mistakes. So we're not asking, and I've never, you know, we, we've gone back and forth over this, I'm never advocating redacting what was not originally redacted by the police department. Again, they just failed to do a good job at it. So, you know, we're taking out what they should have taken out and, and covered up better anyway. That's not the same thing as withholding. True, true. Yeah, and this is just intimate details that we were trying to redact. It, it, it was to put in the addresses or GPS locations, yeah. uh, only to protect certain people and to, I guess, to not put embarrassing stuff out there for the Internet to read. I mean, it, it's really not the Internet's business. I mean, it, it gets... I don't want anybody... It, it, ever reading about that <laughs> i know it, it's a it's a really tough one because obviously you know i was on a different side about the whole um the the one photo that we had of those bodies and that was a big that was a big issue then uh, because i was not for releasing that but at the same time if i if i knew somebody else had it and they're just holding it you know i i can see the other side of it and i can see how that would would bother people to hold things so i have no interest in withholding anything i've never withheld any anything except for that one photo there um but we've never you know we don't i i'll say this again and, and people i want people to know it's it's a fair question to ask me and i know many people have and there's nothing wrong with asking those questions if you ask me anything i'm going to tell you my view i'm going to give you my thoughts there's no games you're not going to get any games here i'm going to give you my direct thoughts as long as you're honest as long as you do it you know just in a regular human human way you know hey greg are you do you really think um that david is guilty and I'll, i will keep saying this i do not believe that he's guilty 100 percent. i believe there is no evidence to back up the theory that david crowley is guilty i know dan hennon feels the exact same way we do not have any evidence we have not seen anything to lead us to believe that david crowley is guilty we're looking for it We've been looking for it. It is not there. It is simply not there. The Apple Valley Police, the BCA, they've told us we've given you everything. Obviously, here we have another case where that is not true. Okay, so unless they're withholding something from us, the smoking gun that will show us David Crowley is guilty, it does not exist. So I just want to say that once one more time, 100%, I believe David Crowley is is not guilty based on the evidence based on the facts not based on the fiction um the stuff that has been told 
about us is fiction. If someone was using David's day one journal to say that this proves he's guilty, that is 100% fiction. Anyone that believes David Crowley is guilty and says that they have the evidence, that is 100% fiction. The police are very clear that everything that they have, everything shows that they could not find any motive and no reason why David Crowley is guilty. That's why the million, That's the million dollar really question bad. has always been the same. Well, what does prove him guilty? Fiction. Fiction. So Yeah, they, they came up with their answer because they couldn't come up with a different answer. I mean, with what we've been presented, there's not even circumstantial evidence that he did it. They have nothing. Right. They, you know, so it would never stand up in a court of law. They, they couldn't even, you know, get him arrested. So, you know, but because he wasn't here and there wasn't a person to... Um, charged with this crime, then they were forced by law to um, to close it. You know, uh, what was that term you used, Greg? Uh, ex exceptionally, exceptionally clear. Exceptionally That's clear. it. So to exceptionally clear something is when you have nobody that around that you, you think they did it, but they're not here. So in order to close it, it's quote unquote exceptionally cleared. Well, <laughs> that's not okay with me. That that's not good enough. I I you know they always say that if you see the documents, you'll see, you'll understand. Well, the more I see, the more I'm like going, ah, uh, no, not getting it. I know that each of us read the journal individually, and each of us all commented that it did not prove guilt. No. No. I and think the it same thing the with the searches before we even had posted them that night we all had gone through it and each one of us said nope this doesn't prove guilt either so you know i don't know why this information why they hold on to it apple valley for as long as they did because well we don't we don't I mean, know when tony got this information right but we know that um he's he's been sitting on it we know that these fiction this fiction group has it but yet they're saying that dan and i are withholding stuff but here we have the real facts that show that they're actually the ones who have been mm -hmm. withholding stuff from the people you don't withhold stuff if it like you said you don't withhold stuff if it, if it will help your case because all that we want to do hey is either say look if there's something that proves david crowley guilty show us so that we can we can like dan said close down the whole group move on to other things that's not it that is not what's happening what is happening like you said are the same thing that's happened to tony it's probably happened to many people here um and it's just it's just pointless because it it didn't stop tony it's not going to stop us it is only going to make them look foolish and it's going to come back and bite all of them anyone who is playing games anyone who is doing the things that you're doing to tony you will pay God sees everything. You are not going to get f any further away from, from that. Justice will come to you, too. Uh, there's no reason to play, to play games. There's no reason to slander. There's no reason to do all of these things that you, you're going to see that happen to Tony here. And it's, it's, just, it's just dumb. So um, it's whatever. The thing, um, go ahead. I was just wondering if you had wanted to move on to the next, next slide, slide because I think that explains a little bit more about what Tony is trying to prove. Okay. So this was added to Tony's website. So if you go to the website, he has added some things there and he makes it clear that he does not support our group. He does not support a gray stage, which is me, apparently. He does, or any other representatives who claim David Crowley was not the perpetrator of this crime. Uh, he has viewed many of their videos, read The Gray State, read my book, um, looked at all of the documents and has viewed everything and he still believes David Crowley is guilty. Okay. Uh, through this I have come to the same unbiased conclusion as the AVPD 
MNBCA, and other agencies involved in the investigation that David Crowley murdered his family before killing himself. Context. I see the name Cow. Now, this is, I'm not sure exactly if he's talking about us. I don't. I know. I don't think we've called him cowards, attention seekers. I don't know mm -hmm. who he's who he's talking about. No, there. no, that was the other group. I believe it was either Louise or Joe that called him coward. I think it was Louise. He's a coward for yeah. releasing the data to the public. Mm -hmm. Data that the public should yeah. have had six years ago. Uh, he's he's yeah. like like what what Defro says. He is a hero. <laughs> he's not a coward. Definitely not a coward. No. And an attention seeker. If he wanted to seek attention, he could have he could have done this at any time. And he could also say whoever he he was to get the attention to him. And evil <laughs> for being thrown around. Um, okay. So so that's not directed towards towards us or anything. It, it's just it's just. I mean, I was Sorry? just I was just baffled by that by some of the allegations that were tossed to him. Yeah. These three points he is discussing the other group. He is calling them out for what they have been posting about him since this web since you posted the website and the group. Okay. That's when they found out about it, is when you posted it in the group and they got livid through a temper tantrum and this is his comeback to them. Or excuse me, his clap back to them. Who's clap back? Hey, William. Hey, William. Tony. Hello. Hello. Oh, okay. Hello. Hello. We're just talking about the what's happening between Tony Floyd and the fiction group. <laughs> Those jokes. Uh, <clears throat> um, <laughs> yeah. 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 My fans. Your fan club. Your fan club. All of us. Oh man. Yeah, those I'm your guys are hilarious. Fan or, uh, I mean, it was. It was. It's. It's so ridiculous. They're just. What do you think about all frustrating. this? Frustrating. What are your thoughts on? This? What do I think about? It? Yeah. Um. Well, I mean, the fact that a they're claiming they own the image, <laughs> that right there is huge red flag. I don't like that. I mean. I don't think they can claim ownership for one, but um, no. But for two, the fact that like, like they want to go and prove us wrong, right? Well, then why, why would they withhold anything? <laughs> you know, I mean, the thing is, I think they withheld this because, from what I can see, this proves our point even further. So, I mean, from the close, um, then you've also got um, the photo of the gun. I mean, all this has already proven our point a little bit further. So, I mean, the fact, like I said, they withheld that, that's, I think that's just mainly because they knew they're wrong, and they're trying to go and keep everybody in, basically in the dark, and just let everybody think that we're wrong. But when they come over and they see what we have to go and offer, you know, what we explain, and then on top of that, then they get to see this now, it's just, everybody can see it for what it is, and AVPD obviously called, the, they made a terrible terrible call here and the fact that also that photo um as you guys probably already seen uh, well I, I of course you guys already seen it um uh, <clears throat> you know obviously it's somebody took it with a cell phone that was not done with a camera like one that you would see crime scene investigation use they'd be use they would be using a dslr hands down just because that's going to give you the clearest possible photo you know but with I mean, you can definitely see there's graininess there, which, I mean, I, I, like I said, I can't blame anybody for thinking it's Photoshopped to some degree, but once again, you know, I enhanced it to show it's not. It's absolutely not Photoshopped, because if it was Photoshopped, you'd see that there would be, the grain would be way off. So I don't care how good somebody is at Photoshopping, there's no way they're getting that level of grain like that to replicate that perfectly, so. Well, you can if you um, you fix it, you Photoshop it, and then you take a photo of the Photoshopped photo. Um, there are ways to go about that. Uh, I've I've done it, but you know. Um, however, I would I would like like I, said, I would love to see somebody do it. I'm I am a hundred and ten percent they cannot perfectly replicate it. But it, the we whole actually, thing, we took a class. the whole thing is mm -hmm. though is that like um, um, how. How I guess I want to know how do you know 
is there, did you look at the metadata? Is there any metadata to see on how that photo was taken and with what it was taken? Oh, like I guess I, I only looked at it from the Photoshop aspect. And I didn't get a chance to look at the metadata. I've been kind of like running around with like, you know, like a chicken with his head cut off all day. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Join the club, but, William. But I did, like I said, I looked at it through Photoshop, but I'm assuming it is, like I said, it does appear that it was done with a flip phone. Wow. So maybe so, somebody because took it. Because once a... again, it, it, like I said, it had to have been a flip phone because if you look at smartphones, their cameras are they're way better than that. That was not done with a smartphone. Well, did they have smartphones yeah. back in 2014? I know it sounds like a stupid question, yeah. but I don't know. Okay. okay. Oh, yeah. No, they totally is, did. I think there is a photo in either the Apple Valley PD or the um, BCA that shows one of the detectives with a flip phone. Mm-hmm. So... And, I mean, the thing is, this is the other thing. I, I'm not sure if you guys have talked about this yet, but really this had to have been done. I mean, I already, I think I already posted that. Maybe it was on the infographic, but um, this had to have been done by one of the officers who entered and cleared the house, because they would have picked the gun up and everything. That would have been done in clearing the house. Well, could it could it so, have also been someone who legally or illegally had access to a crime scene photo, was able to see the photo and snap it, snap the real crime scene photo image with their phone. You mean like somebody got into the crime scene and used their phone to take a picture? No, like somebody was shown crime scene photos, a friend, mm -hmm. a, an alleged friend, and they were able to just oh, pull out yeah. their camera and pull out their phone and snap a photo of it. I don't believe so. Um, there would be, I guess, I'm going to be doing some tests this weekend, um, just to go and double check. It will actually get a hold of a, a, a flip phone, so... I'm going to go and see if I can actually go and run some tests with that. So I don't believe so because, once again, there will be things like gloss. Um, if they're taking a picture, let's say, on another phone, on a computer, something like this, there will be some glare to it. You definitely see some, like, for instance, if, um, you guys have seen the pictures. I take a picture when I'm working on my tablet. I'll just take a picture of what's on my tablet, right, or monitor, graphics monitor, whatever you want to call it. And you'll definitely see there's like some lines coming down. That's all just, I mean, that's standard when you got like electronics and stuff, you're taking pictures of, you're going to see that kind of stuff. And there was nothing like that. This is just pure grain, which like I said, that tells me, A, there was bad lighting, um, which once again, we know there wasn't great lighting in there. You know, they didn't do anything, you know, to, to lighting so that way they could see everything clearly. Um, on top of that, um, this had to have been done with a uh, really cheap camera, which once again, we know flip phones have. Um, they're really, really crappy. And then, of course, you know, if you go with, with a smartphone, you're going to have a higher quality. Well, and I it mean, doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we do know that they were using professional cameras. That it's it's evident by that. However, you have to also consider that it's possible that someone had a printout of this photo and then took a picture of the printout of the photo with their flip phone as well. I mean, there are so many ways to make a really bad photo. However, I think it still comes back to the point of um, that is the gun on the floor, you know? And, you know, I had to eat crow and admit I made a mistake. That is a, the gun on the floor. Um, but even though that may be the gun on the floor, it doesn't change the end result of the case. Sure. You know, that being right. there, it's like, you know, so what? Now we know that, yeah, a gun was on the floor. Big deal. What is, how does that, you know, what does that matter? Well, I think what matters to me the most looking at that photo is, was that photo given to the public or was it not? If it, if it was, then, you know, we all should should have access to it if it wasn't then the two people who um, are claiming property ownership of it have a big problem a legal problem yeah i agree yeah. well well they wouldn't necessarily have i mean they wouldn't necessarily have the legal problem it's whoever gave it to, gave them the photo if it wasn't meant to be public they would, and i don't think it was right well they would still be they would they would know who that is and they would, they would be part of exactly. that legal problem Definitely. They could be, yeah. They definitely could be, but it's, I mean, I would definitely say it'd be whoever the clearing officer was. Their, their best bet. And like I said, I mean. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. No, go ahead. Oh, no, go for it. Go for it. 
I was going to say their their best bet. If this if this photo was not obtained in a legal manner and they were given it, they need to go to the Apple Valley and they need to tell them where they got that photo from. And that person Absolutely. needs to be something needs to happen to whoever did that. If it was not legally obtained, if it was legally obtained, was, and... then. You know, if I mean, it, it, the other here's the other scenario because there is a scenario C um, that it was released, but it was not supposed to be. And that's on the Apple Valley, then. Yeah. That's on them, and yeah. that that makes it public. If they released it through a public f data dump or a public file request or something like that, that's on them. It's public. I mean, last I checked, I mean, they're not supposed to be taking photos with their phone. <laughs> the crime scene something like this you know um so any photo is supposed to be taken i believe it's through the crime scene investigation or they're supposed to have a camera on on hand which like i said that's like i said this is where i think it's it's kind of problematic for whichever cop took this so this had to have been done by what like i said it had to have been one of the uh, clearing uh, police officers so but, yeah i don't but I last don't thing know. before i gotta go is go i ahead. do gotta go in like go a ahead. second but um Oh, um, no. the, other, the other thing I really wanted to go and mention that's actually really relevant about this is we also get to see the positioning of the gun, which, yes. once again, I mean, I feel like that's really, really relevant when it comes to, um, you know, trying to say David's guilty or not, you know, and I think the way where it's at and all, everything, I do think that it, it does show a little more innocence here than it does guilt. I see no guilt here. Yep. So, yeah. So, I get a bounce, so... Uh, thanks for having me, guys, and I will talk to you guys later. Oh, Thank thanks you, for dropping in. We'll talk to you soon. Of course. Have a good night. Uh, you guys too. You too, man. That is um, Mr. William Rail. He is. Um, you can catch him on Twitch. He does a lot of Twitch videos covering this this case. Um, whether you agree with him or whether you disagree with him, he and I disagree on a, a lot of things. Um, where you can see, we're still able to have a cordial chat here and just talk about this this stuff, um, and that's 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 what this really is you know a lot of the stuff that happens in the justice for david crowley and family facebook group is a think tank we're trying to figure out what is happening we're not acting like we know what really happened or we know we have it all figured out but we're just going to play games with other other people ha 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 all this stuff like that's not the way that you get to the truth and that's not how you help people including helping this this family if you're playing games you are not helping this family at all right if you're withholding things if you're making threatening comments to other people if, if you're attacking other people that is not helping david's family or kamel's family at all and you should it's be counterproductive ashamed. it's very counterproductive and it, it it also you know does not help them um it, it doesn't help their cause it <laughs> Unfortunately, it does help us because it, it helps us show why these people are liars and frauds and just fiction writers. That's it. So, and that's time that obviously we don't want to be spending on this, on talking about them. Um, and maybe that's what, what they really want. And that also is not helping the, the family, you know. So nothing that they do is helping the family. If you want to help help the family, let's find out what the truth is. Let's get some solid facts of what will prove David innocent or guilty. We have thousands of solid facts of why he is not guilty. We have not seen one fact to show that he is guilty. Um, okay. Go for Next it. Next slide or? Next slide. Uh, let's see. Did we miss any? So he had three points here, right? He says, yes, I am. And I think he's being facetious a little bit here yeah I, sarcastic i <laughs> yeah. guess you know uh smart ass kind of way <laughs> <laughs> which is okay you know because it's the only way to deal with these people yeah <laughs> so <laughs> he, he, you're right he does seem frustrated and he does seem like he's just you know fed up i mean he does not support our cause he does not support um what we're doing but at the same time um he also makes it clear that um i mean he posts in the group and gives us all of this data so there must be something there 
there must be some common ground that we've been able to find and, and we found that with i mean i've spoken with many people who believe that david crowley is guilty and we've gone back and forth on private chats and things like that and that's that's fine you know um so I, he just believes that everybody should have access to information in regards to the state. Yeah. I, and I, a decent human being would believe that. Oh. Yeah, I think the only thing that I didn't like about what he posted yesterday was he said, I don't agree with this group's theorization of what happened. And I think that's a very general and broad statement because obviously, you know, we all, and I think, Catherine, I think you commented on that too. You know, we all have kind of our own views, our own things. I, you know, I've made it very clear that I do not have a theory. So when I hear people, you know, telling me that, you know, about Ethereum, it's like, wait a minute, I don't have Ethereum. <laughs> I've made it very, very clear. I've made 2,000 videos, you know, making sure that, you know, people understand that I do not have Ethereum. I do not have one working theory. I will entertain many, many theories, and I will keep going back to several theories. Um, and I, maybe there's a – I think somebody even asked me one time, you know, if you had to, like, rate different theories. I've been able to really do that, but they're just theories. But I really don't – I don't think that the group itself, the Justice for David Crowley Family Facebook group, has a theory. We have not come up with just one theory and then just kind of ran with it, whereas this fiction group has a theory that David Crowley is guilty, and they just kind of run with it and just, you know, have the blinders on to anything else to uh, thousands yeah. of pages of documents thousands well, yeah, of photos and, and that's the frustrating thing is they spend their time slandering anybody who says david is innocent and they you know they go through all this effort to rip and tear them apart on social media in their videos and um, all this other stuff but present not one not one thing to back their position, but we are trying to back our position with evidence, stuff that we, is given to us by the police themselves. Right. And um, like you were saying, there isn't one theory. I, I think I've read, it's like everyone who looks at the case and then comments on the group page, everybody has a different idea of what they think happened. You know, so it's, it's people, they're, you know, you're, you're throwing out ideas and talking things over. Well, what if this could happen and what if that happened? And, I mean, that's a good thing. I think, you know, to throw and toss ideas out is how you can get and whittle things down. Right. What else? Okay, so we're going to um, look at some of the files that are included mm -hmm. in this quote-unquote data dump the image of the gun found at the crime scene which this is the this for me like i said this is the the big one because i've been asking for this i know i'm not the only one but we've been asking for this for six six years and i believe in the 21 questions for detective gummer this is one of the questions that i asked i said hey give me a censored photo a censored photo. I don't want to see the bodies. I, all I want to see is where the gun is. I want to see where the butt of the gun. I want to see where that gun is facing. That's all that I wanted for six years. And it took our hero, <laughs> Tony Floyd, and his data dump to get that. And again, people have been withholding this photo, have been withholding this thing. And I do hope that this was legally obtained. Um, and if it was then Detective Gummer and I are going to have a, uh, hopefully we're going to have a chat here in the very near future to figure out why I was not given this photo when I specifically asked for this. Now, Detective Gummer has been nothing but professional. The Apple Valley Police, same thing. The BCA has been more than that um, yeah. as far as my personal dealings with them. But it's, it's kind of weird. The BCA has given us so much stuff and the apple valley police you know the, i did two or three requests and i got 464 photos and 94 pages of police report that's it that's all i've ever gotten from them until a couple days ago until wednesday all of a sudden there's all of this other data whatever that's fine whatever just as long as it's as long as you give it you know as just 
just give us the public data this is stuff we could have had six years ago and we could have gone through all of this and a lot of the speculation a lot of the things well maybe he did it because of this well the david's journal his day one journal shows this none of that turns out to be true i mean Greg, can i interrupt please, for a second please, please do okay because some in the in the chat are asking when i sent my FOIA request this last time I was extremely specific about the things that I wanted. I gave item numbers. I gave the name of the files that I wanted. So when you send your FOIA request, uh, you have to be extremely specific. Otherwise, they'll just say that they don't have the information, or you'll just get the regular 93 pages, I believe, or is it 94 pages? of the police report mm -hmm. that's redacted and you know just uh the photos just like 400 and something photos you'll yeah, we, we get that did every that. single time well we, we we did that dan hinnon specifically asked for certain things and they they didn't give him it looks like the video that is on this list is one of those things that we should have been given yeah the 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 gun um, photo i mean i asked detective gummer specifically for that so now what you're saying is okay and and i'm going to do this probably monday hopefully or maybe we'll see when i'm going to do this very soon but just like you're saying okay here's what i'm going to do i'm going to request a gun a photo of the gun as it's found i'm going to give them the actual freaking photo and say i want this photo because it's it's out there you guys have given it to somebody and if you have not given it to somebody, please let me know that. Because then maybe I won't put it up there if it wasn't legally uh, obtained. Or maybe we should look into how somebody was able to get this. Maybe there should be an, an internal investigation or something. But I think the very first step, like you said, I have to be very spe specific. I'll give you the model number. I'll give you everything that I know about this gun. But it's just very you frustrating. Also have to, Go ahead. Yeah, and you have to say that as it was found in situ, not when it was being taken as evidence. Right. Because I, I guarantee if you're not specific, they will send you the evidence. To yeah, so. just, yeah, on, on, on the living room floor. How about that? I, mm -hmm. I have the... the the coordinates you know it's they because it's in joe joe cooksley's notes of how the gun is found <laughs> these coordinates of this day this time what do, you, what do you what do you guys need you got they you know what i'm asking for they know what i'm asking for but okay fine whatever but that's all that i want you know i want that photo and um that does tell me a lot and it does well, we're not there yet. We'll, we'll get to that photo, and then we'll kind of go over that a little bit. But um, So that's the image. Uh, David's Day One Journal, which is a redacted version. This is not the same version that, um, we've, that we have. Um, it, Tony did the re redactions, a, a very classy person, because he redacted mm -hmm. more... Um, than I would have. Um, he kind of, it sounds like he redacted what you and Catherine um, were <laughs> kind of having to do, and that was going to take a while. And then it's like, well, he's already got it. And it sound, it looks like his, his uh, version is actually a clearer quality version, which makes me, which does make me think that this was an older version. Um, in, in, on his website, he also talks about things that he took out that was given to him. So there are things that he has that he is not even sharing on his website. That is technically public data, whatever they have given him. But then there's some electronic re reports. I believe that's the 360 or 317 pages of David's um, searches and what is in the day one journal. Uh, the medical examiner photos, which again, we do not have. We only have 464 photos. Thanks to the BCA, we have over 700 photos that at least give us some, you know, it gives us a lot more than what the Apple Valley did. Where did these photos come from? If these were requested, um, if these were giving, given, 
um, through a FOIA through from the Apple Valley, then why it just it doesn't make sense why some of the photos are given to some people and some aren't. Are they given photos to it, it, if I were to say that I believe David Crowley is guilty, would I have received thousands of more photos if I would have lied? So um, and then we have this crime scene photo here, too. Um, that, like I said, Dan, Dan Hinnon requested. I know he he, he requested um, audio. He requested other other things too. Um, we we wanted photos. I mean, and so, like you said, maybe we didn't fill it out right. Maybe we weren't specific, and and this person was. Um, whatever the case, uh, the main thing is that the public has this data. That's what matters. Not my feelings about this. Not because, oh, I didn't get this or that or whatever, which does frustrate me, but it's not ab about me. As long as this stuff is out there, we're going to make sure that the public will have access to it. This is public data. This is not my public data. This is not public data that sh some people get and other people don't. That's what Sean Wright, that's what people like that were, were telling us. They had things that proved David Crowley guilty, but they couldn't share it with us right now back in 2015 but if we just kept our mouths shut if we didn't act like david crowley was guilty then at some point they were going to share it with us that's total bs man i mean that is just total bs that is not something and those were red flags huge red flags and when i posted the um the text messages between me and and sean I, people could clearly see that i didn't have to leave any comments on it a person like that, you just let them talk. And this is a known <laughs> felon. This is someone who has a criminal record. And this person, who David in his day one journal talks about and not in a good light, this person is yeah. acting like he's David's savior and David's friend. And then you have this fiction group that has this criminal in their group. And people are supposed to take them seriously? And you really think the family really is going to side with them? With known criminals? Oh, yeah. He's not the only one in there that got a record. That's crazy. Uh, anyway. It's crazy. Any thoughts on that before I move on? I know I'm, there's probably some great comments that I'm totally missing in the um, in the chat room. I do apologize for that. Uh, um, they're just talking back and forth about the case and how Tony, I guess, released it and read it too. All this information. Oh, great! So That's he's great. making sure it gets out everywhere. <laughs> Get oh, it out there, they Tony. Must have really pissed him off. <laughs> they woken <laughs> the beast. <laughs> go and go get him, Tony. Um, there's yeah, and I'll please. upload the electronics crimes report and uh, Detective Vaughn's report. Basically, it's uh, just saying what types of tests that they ran, forensic tests, and on all the electronics. Mm -hmm. And uh, Greg has already released um, the blacklight report to, I think it was item five. Mm -hmm. Which was the search. The, okay. the other one really didn't show anything, so it's, it's not of use at all. And I think that's the only reason why we never posted it. Okay. But uh, that would be the laptop that was on the island. Okay. And uh, so we'll make sure that everything is in the group for people. And do you have it all on your website, too? I have... Currently, I just have the journal and the 317-page electronic report that we covered. But if you could get any of the stuff that you have, if you could add that to the group files, that would be very, very helpful. I'll add everything except the journal only because we have not redacted. Can you... Um, but they could get it off of Tony's website. So. Yeah, that's the one that I have on on my website too. Maybe you can download it from my website and add it to the group files. Is that possible? Yeah, yeah, I I can do that. Okay. And um, 
Shall we move on to the next slide? Or? I think so. I think so. If I have another slide, is that it? Oh, I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> I thought I had more. Okay. Um, oh, maybe that is... Is that all I have? I thought I had one more. Maybe not. Okay, I guess that's all of the um, slides that I have, but we do have the actual website here. And um, I'm not sure what this video is here. I, I don't want to get a copyright strike or anything. I have no copyright strikes on this channel, which is really weird. Could but, we great. Go ahead. move past the photo? Because I don't want you to get any strikes on your YouTube channel. I'm, I'm not worried about that, actually. I actually do want to talk about that. Um, well, I guess I did already talk about it. So I don't know. I mean, this is all I wanted right here. I just wanted to see which way the gun was facing. Okay, a guy shoots himself with his right hand, and the gun ends up here, where his left hand is. And you look at where his, no, no. This is exactly the whole, the whole thing. Now, that is just really weird, because um, we were kind of told the gun was kind of down here where this lemur was, and then. It's um, like, are you gonna show the photo? I'm not seeing it. Are you not seeing it? It's there. I see it. Oh, okay. Right. There it goes. I'm sorry. Yeah, for some reason Greg, my, my laptop was slow down. Okay, now I see it. Thank you. Okay. Greg, you can actually enlarge that part so everybody could see the gun. Okay. Um, I know that I can do it on my phone. Yeah, but... it is kind of blurry right there. So I don't know if that, but um, yeah, it's just such a bad image right there. There you go. Unfortunately. So that's it right there. That's where that gun was found, as far as I know. I mean, this is where the gun is found. You shoot yourself with your right hand. The gun is found here, and the police are not disturbed by that at all. At all. I mean, it speaks for itself. If I wanted to hide to hide something, and if I was a part of some fictional group, I, I'd probably hide this too. Because words, you know, the um, the images speak for themselves. That's why we weren't, you know, we just wanted the photos. We wanted, you know, all of the stuff that would that would show whatever that they're saying. What did you guys see when you walk into this house? Because we asked Detective Gummer. I asked him. When did you realize David Crowley was guilty? He said, as soon as he assessed this scene. So based on what he's saying, he walks into this house, and this looks like a double murder-suicide to him. No. No. Sorry, just not, not buying it. Um, he's a police officer. It's not his job to, to, to do that, first of all, to just walk in. Oh, yeah, double, double murder suicide. Cool. Okay, done. It's a big problem there. Anything on that photo or else I'll just keep moving on here. I'm a little frustrated. Uh, they were asking if the gun could have been moved by the dog. <laughs> I don't think so. I mean, anything's possible, sure. I mean, it's, I guess, yeah, it's, it's possible. It's possible. I mean, anything's possible. Yeah. He did, he did <laughs> things at the crime scene. We know that he did two on bone. I think We're it's not a... denying it. We can see the proof of it in the photos. No, I, he I. He destroyed I, things. I, I do think that's a so, question. I, I don't want to. I don't want to act like I'm belittling that question because it is a very valid question. It's a question that we all ask. We all will ask at at some point. Um, but then you know, um, you have to just kind of okay. That's a great question. Let's look at the pros. Let's look at the cons, and you kind of just go from from there. You know, have you ever seen a dog move a gun uh, with this with this much weight? Um, if the dog did move the gun, would there be you know other blood, or would there be other dog saliva, or something like that? You know, how would that affect that whole thing too? So I guess you would have to look at so many different things. Um, I would kind of assume that if he shot himself with his right hand, which David was right-handed, the gun should be closer to his right hand. So for the dog to have moved it 
from where his right hand was over to where his left hand was is also another um you know it's it's like like you said it's possible Joe, but... oh, sorry <laughs> joe howard would like you to zoom in on the gun again please i'll and zoom in on the gun Garrett... i know it's not very good here so let me know if you want me to zoom in a little more um and I can do that. I know there's a lag on the YouTube site. And Derek says, even not fully loaded, it's not impossible, but the dog has been blamed for everything. Come on. Yeah. And he's still right. The dog has been blamed for everything. <laughs> I mean, not like it's not impossible. I mean, but he does have a point. <laughs> yeah. And even when you look at the gun, um, when they later on, when they put it on the table next to the Christmas tree, next to that front uh, window, um, it has hair on it. It has blood on it. We know that there's blood on the magazine, too. If I remember correctly, it's David's blood on the magazine, Kamel's blood on the actual gun. I mean, and then hair. There, hair. Why would there be hair there? You know, it's... It, it's very very odd very odd stuff about this this gun so this to me for the gun is pretty much the final piece of the puzzle um this is just more proof to me so i don't know if that image is clear on my screen it looks very very fuzzy so i see what William yeah, is talking about fuzzy. now when i zoom in <laughs> yeah it's like whoa that's grainy because when you're not zoomed in and you're just looking at it from the website it's like well that looks like a pretty decent photo actually but the more i zoom in yeah the more it uh it does not so i hope that helps Go uh, Greg, red. please go to the red on david's leg okay let's see uh, i guess it's right across from where the gun was okay on his leg yeah so there is right there. uh, there's a big big red spot flesh what? um yeah, and this is interesting because there is no wound on David's leg, as the ME state. They don't mention any wound, anything. I mean, they do mention, quote-unquote, evidence of animal scav or possible evidence of animal scavenging. And that's in relation to his neck, face, and his hand. Oh, interesting. So they're actually mm -hmm. specific about the animal scavenging and where they think the animal scavenging is. Well, because the rest of his body was intact, so they don't mention any other injuries to his body. So I'm saying, I mean, people are more than welcome to read the autopsies that are either on your website or in the group and they'll see for themselves yeah this this makes me want to go back through david's aut autopsy to see if when they mention animal scavenging in relation to david are they specific about where the animals i don't think they are i think they're very very vague and that's just the final report right there's obviously notes and there's recordings that they're doing as they're looking at the actual body which is the real stuff that we really wanted again you know i don't really i'd rather just have what the medical examiner is seeing i'd rather have a recording of that than really see the actual bodies but you know whatever um this is this is what what happens when you go when you have to go digging for for things you end up having to exhaust all different scenarios possibilities and that's exactly what is happening here what we're looking at here if it's not specifically mentioned in the autopsy why not why not if if they thought this was animal scavenging they should say an possible animal scavenging on david's left leg or <sighs> i don't know it does say it does say with defects on left front and left lower pant leg. Pants are covered in dark green to red stains. 
are present with numerous short white hairs. And... Can you read that first part again about the left leg? And where is that located, please? Uh, it is David's autopsy report, page three. David's okay. autopsy report. Thank page you. Three. Uh, clothing and personal effects. And I believe it's bullet point four. One pair of Nautica jeans, company brand, black and white and blue striped sweatpants, size medium, with defects on the left front and left lower pant leg. The pants are covered with dark green to red stains, are present, and numerous short white hairs. The staining is also on. Yeah. The staining is also on his short uh, boxer shorts, yeah. and the staining is also on his black sleeve. No, no, no. The on his shirt on the left on the collar in the left side of his shirt. The the black shirt, they said. And then, um, I'm looking over his body. Yeah, there's no mention of the wound on the leg. I can't find it. Mm -mm. Interesting. No. Nope. Very disturbing right there. No head. No head. Gone. They said they also found red brown blood-like material on the dorsal left hand between the thumb and the first finger. Hmm. Anything else on that image? I really want to move on from that image. Yeah, yeah let's that. move on. Okay. We can move on. Uh, okay, the photograph was obtained through Luis Gibson and Joe Tomato, Joe Tomaso, at the Crowley case facts versus fiction. So that's the group, right? That's what that is. That's a Facebook yeah, group. Yeah, the okay. group. So they obtained the, this. We are David Guilty group. Is 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 this the image they they try to copyright? Is that what happened? Here? Yeah. Really? Yeah, wow. that's the image that they try to copyright. They wouldn't copyright it if it was legally obtained. I don't know. I mean, that would... That would be weird. Well, here's what he says. Let me keep reading on. Um, they initially claimed that they obtained this photo through a source at the AVPD who was assigned the case in 2015. But a after building a relationship with them... Hmm. That's... Not... I mean, Luis was in our group at that time, and she was one of the big, um, one of the people speaking up that David Crowley was not guilty. Who? Miss Gibson. Yeah. Yeah. For years. Really? For years. Yeah. Up for many years, up until she got she got booted out. Um, oh yeah, she was you know anti Judy. Uh, totally thought David didn't do this, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> Anti Sean too. Anti Sean, they were all crazy, you know. Yeah, talking smack about all of all of them, and she, I, I no, uh -uh, something wrong there. So um, it sounds like Tony doesn't believe what they're saying either. I mean, geez, look at this. This is crazy. The lies. Well, Louise used to tell me stories about how she owned Judy. Judy would say that the couch was in one position or something like that, and she had this huge argument with her. I don't know. It was just announcing her all buddy buddy with her. Like, okay, whatever. Oh yeah, I've but got... she's very proud of that, you know. <laughs> yeah, she's, she's told me okay. that for for years, for many many years. We have a lot of data backing that up. What she really 
thought about Judy back then. So that's kind of weird. Um, or Rob or Sean. There's there's lots of proof. Yeah, Rob. Rob. Just, Rob got know. caught. He got caught in some some lies because he was. Um, yeah, he definitely got caught. So he was he was probably he was probably not being truthful for a very long time, and maybe other people were too. But it just shows that they're not interested in in truth because See, if and you I, are, you don't. You don't I act came like that. into the group at the tail end of that when Rob finally got booted or left. <laughs> he got called out and, and could not answer a couple of questions, simple questions, mm-hmm. <laughs> and then backtracked, and, and then it, yeah. Yeah, and that was interesting. And he was the first one. He and Mark Anthony were the first ones who were claiming that you and Dan were withholding evidence. And that is still the mantra to this day with the other group. And we like, know for what, a fact. What type of what the, evidence? Uh, what evidence do they think we're we're withholding? Evidence that the police doesn't that have. That David. Guilty, and that you guys are milking this for all it's worth. <laughs> the, the, here's the thing: though, the cops don't even have that evidence. I so know. How, right? how would we have it? I don't get it. I mean, the cops even say it throughout the report, even at the very end, <laughs> even the ECU paperwork. We have no proof. We have no motive, but because they don't have, I guess, quote unquote, proof of somebody else. Mm-hmm. David must be the guilty party, even though the backslider was unlocked and slightly opened. And you know, no signs so of, much of, of somebody that. forcing their way in, though. That is a fact. Yeah, yeah. No proof <laughs> of forced entry. No forced entry. Don't don't force entry. entry with an open door. I know, right? Well, <laughs> <laughs> or, or no proof of missing items for that from the household right well you don't need to steal anything to kill a family no signs of a, of a struggle even though there is a <laughs> knife there is a knife on the living room you know no signs of a struggle people and yeah an open knife an open knife and <laughs> right there bullet holes in the floor and uh you know case things on the floor that are like an unfired bullet that had jammed more shots to Kamel than needed to be. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no struggle, though. No struggle. And, and the crime scene is chaotic, but yeah, there's, there's, there's no sign of a struggle. No. Um, he says, although I later, when I later confronted them about the legality of obtaining this photo after being lied to on numerous occasions, I want to hear more about that from you, Tony. Mm-hmm. They changed their story because he probably has all these screenshots, too. He probably has all this stuff. They changed their story and claimed that they obtained it through a legal records request, meaning that apparently anyone could obtain it. This is a lie. He's He's got them right here. He's got them yeah. right, right, where, right where he wants them. This guy is really, really smart here. Um, he's got all of this there, and the fact that they changed their, their story... There's no need to change your story if you're telling the truth. So the truth doesn't change. No, truth doesn't change. But he's really got them in a in a in a in a legal bind here, because yeah. either they legally obtained them or they didn't. So when they first say that they didn't legally obtain them, which is what it sounds like in the first sentence here, mm-hmm. and then the second sentence, it sounds like now they're backtracking and saying that they legally obtained them. That's something that we can definitely figure out, that you can definitely prove. And it sounds like that's pretty much what Tony said. Is, hey, this this statue, the um, the Minnesota statute 13.82, subsection 7, boom, right there. Um, and it's a simple question for the Apple Valley. Was this image legally obtained or not? That's what all I've asked them. I have not heard back from them. I'm sure they're getting their lawyers and, you know, have to pass it up the chain, blah, 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 whatever. I know that they may even be listening. They may even be watching. They may be watching the group, whatever. We're only looking for the legal stuff here, the stuff that the public has. Based on what the public has, there's, there's no way you can say that David is guilty. Even this image here, 
you know but it's but now you have something here where you're, you're talking about um things that are being given to people illegally possibly why why you know it's 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 really really odd this is i mean when i'm reading this it really just opens up he opens up a can of worms here <laughs> he really does so um he says i believe that is a lie as i have been denied access to much less graphic photos pertaining to the case uh, we've we've all gone through the same thing i'm sure um images so here's the statute images and recordings in, including photographs video audio recordings which are part of inactive investigative files and which are clearly offensive to common sensibilities are classified as private or non-public data and that's again that's backed up by you know what we asked gummert is we just wanted a image of the of the of the, of the gun blur out everything else and all of a sudden other people have it i mean that's just it's that's too coincidental and just too shady it's just i mean there's it just adds to the shadiness of all of this case and it doesn't need to be like that it never did you know just give the public the 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 data and you got you know obviously the apple valley the police think that they have it solved well, fine think whatever you guys want but give us the public data don't withhold the stuff so i hope that they haven't been um but if they haven't been then that means that th that photo and maybe other stuff too was obtained uh was not obtained in a legal way um so i'm gonna put this out there yes i'm not saying this happened i'm just saying sean wright and judy are in that group and they both have had access to the files and to things that we didn't have for the longest time in regards to this case. Well, it's very possible that, and I'm assuming here, that things were shared with the other group that weren't shared with us. And that's why the lies were happening. But, you know, well, they should not have. Now it's out there. They should not have access to anything that we don't have access to. They're public. We're public. There's no difference. But the thing is, is that Sean and Judy were both involved with the documentary, and we all know that Eric Nelson and Sean had the files. Even Mason had the files. Mason Hendricks. I'm fairly certain of that because he was asking long ago if you had seen the data searches and you told him flat out that you hadn't but obviously he had that information at that time and that would have been and then when you said that he, he maybe yeah 2017 yeah and then when you said that you hadn't seen it that's when he lied to you and he told you that there were certain things on there near the end that david was searching for he didn't. So, I mean, this is just, we're doing, I'm doing deductive reasoning here. <laughs> yeah, I think he said, he also said so, one of the last things that David post or commented on was one of, was one of Hendrix's posts. So I don't even know if that's true or not, um, whether no, it is or whether it's he didn't not. Go to, mm -hmm. He didn't go to Hendrix's page on Facebook. We would know because it would be in the data searches. Well, that's but similar. He went to... Go ahead. No, but he did go to Danny August Mason's Facebook page a couple of times. So. Yeah, and there's there's no reason to withhold any of that stuff. If anything, they would black it out, similar to this blackout thing here. If they didn't want Hendrix to be mentioned or anything like like that, it would be blacked out or something but you know that could that could have been a facebook i think it was a facebook post too so i don't know but you're 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 right because there are facebook posts and things like that in there so again unless the police are picking and choosing 
um, which it doesn't look like they're really doing. It looks like it's, I mean, with the 317-page thing, maybe because it looks like it's on a spreadsheet, but with the phone calls, with the phone records, it's it would be really hard for them to kind of censor that and kind of make it look like they didn't censor it. So we're mm-hmm. talking about some of the phone records, calls that were that they people say they made the call, and then the records say something completely different. I mean, what yeah. what other conclusion could you could you come to? So, I mean, well, I'm waiting for the celebrate files, and once I receive those, I'll compare them to another spreadsheet that I made in regard to people saying that they either text or contacted David and it doesn't show up in the AT&T report but if, if they show up in the celebrate report then then obviously it happened yeah. because those are legit so I'm, I'm going to hold off on that yeah I mean it, it could have been one thing where you know um, and here's where the day one journal kind of ties there is is that you know we have um, the uh, police are saying that the day one journal ends in September obviously now that we have the day one journal you can clearly see that it doesn't end until November 5th right November 5th Mm -hmm. so there's obviously something going on there maybe the file that they had was the stuff that was not deleted and somehow doing the whole you know pulling everything out using special software they were able to find other posts uh, past September and so maybe they'll do something maybe with these records that you're talking about maybe we'll see something with those phone records too whatever it is Um, but because these are text messages and I'm not sure exactly what whether they're emails but definitely text messages from David Spelton right so we'll we'll definitely be seeing if he was actually contacting but they should have shown up on the AT&T record so I'm a little confused about that yeah only if they were taken off only if what we're seeing on the AT&T records for the text messages is I I don't know how that how that works you know I'm just um, trying to think of scenarios I guess if it was a deleted message would it still show up there I have AT and T. I will look at our. We just had our phone bill come in, so I'll, I'll take a look at it and see. Yeah, try to try to send your, then, send a have somebody send a text. Try to delete it and see if it's if that still comes up there. It should still come up because it, it got pinged, so it should come up. You sent it through the service. It would come up. Even if it was deleted off of your phone, yeah, it still went through AT and T service, that satellite, and got things. So yes, it would show up. I'm not a techie, but <laughs> common sense would say that it would. Sure. Well, he does. But, uh, he has the uh, Day One Journal, 162 pages there. He says, "I obtained this via records request a while ago, a while ago." And we just got this a couple days ago. I received it on August 4th. Okay, I just received mine on Wednesday. So, Mm -hmm. (laughs) I mean... Well, I mean, I gave it to you to read. Yeah. You just received your copy. (laughs) Yeah, I received my copy. I've been asking for this for years, but whatever. For six years? (laughs) For six years, but all of a sudden, you know, yeah, it's... it's, I guess I just got to keep asking for it and keep asking and keep asking, which I don't want to do. I know they have other things that they have going on. We wouldn't even be in this spot now, you know, going back and forth. They probably, the Apple Valley police probably feel like we're just wasting their time. It's like, no, man, you know, if you guys would have just given us all of this stuff way back when, there would be no need for us to contact you. Yeah, we wouldn't be contacting you about any of this stuff here. Why are we just receiving this all of a sudden? My contact with Apple Valley, who's been fulfilling these Apple, uh, my FOIA requests, has been very patient, and she has answered my questions, and I am incredibly thankful. 
for her time and her patience. So. Yep, I am too. I am too. And maybe we're just not asking in the right way. <laughs> or maybe they finally decided, okay, you can have those. We've given it to other people. So, I mean, I don't. it doesn't matter now. We have it. Yeah, yeah. I, um, I'm not trying to go back and, you know, what it should have, could have, whatever, you know. I think I think you're right. It's on me to just take that responsibility. Maybe I just wasn't filling it out right. Okay, whatever. We have it. So there's going to be a lot more requests that I'm going to try then. And I'm going to try to fill it out right. Okay? Maybe I'll wait another five years before, <laughs> before we get more. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Um, so I he says I obtained, of, uh, I obtained this via records request a while ago and gave a redacted and compressed copy so he redacted this a redacted and compressed copy to the clowns at the crowley case fact versus fiction so yeah he's not he's not really too happy with them he's never called us clowns and I, he doesn't agree with us so it, like you like you were saying there's, there's definitely um definitely some some other issue going on there their claims of obtaining it months prior are yet more lies visible by how compressed their photographs are their photographs from it are so he's saying something similar to what william is talking about how the the um photo is very compressed and i think that's why william thinks it's coming from a what does that mean compressed you say that mine was yeah, it just looks to me like they're saving it at a much lower resolution. Which is you can compress okay. it to, which will shrink it down as well. But it just, it's not a very good resolution file. Yeah. Okay, because when they sent it to me, it wasn't compressed. That's why I was asking. Yeah, my as far um, as I know, it wasn't. I mean, I I think the one that you got looks um, the quality is a lot reduced than the one that um tony has so your yours could be a compressed i don't know i can't oh, prove that okay but. once again i'm not a techie <laughs> <laughs> well well here's here's what he says he says theirs is 100 his is 107 um and theirs is four so all you have to do and we can do this later we can look at it and see how big is is that file that you have if it's 107 it's not compressed if it's four it probably is uh, i won't do it here because we're live but if you want to go if if you want to look at that go go to the file do a right click and go to the properties and you can you can see that oh i don't have it on the computer okay. i have it on yeah. my cell phone it. okay yeah we, yeah but, we can definitely do that i mean could they have removed information from their journal? Yes. That they're showing people? Yes, but if they're showing it to him um, and they're saying, it, obviously he's seen theirs, so they've com compared files at, at some point, he would also know mm -hmm. if they've removed anything from it. If, the, if it's the exact same file, there's many reasons why it why they could have reduced it to four one could be because if you're going to share it with people um most like gmail and things like that there's a maximum um oh, yeah. you know thing it's like 20 25 or something like that so obviously they would have to lower it in order to share it to many many people so there could be many so reasons just, why yeah i just automatically save it to uh dropbox and then share the files that way right and that's the best way to email keep is the pain. i know i know but if you did try to share you know like if he tried to share this one at 107 he wouldn't be able to unless he went through like a google drive or something like that so but it's possible back then yeah back then it was still possible too um he says the reason why they're taking so long to publish is because they need to get their own copy and want and want to because of the following in, information. So that's pretty interesting too. So 
Um, they want their own copy. Yeah, so it's like... Well, what I copy they, were they using, kid? They, they may have taken his and lowered the quality, compressed it, shared it with a bunch of people, and then... You know, showed him, hey, we have the same copy too, or something, and probably took out things where he had redacted. They probably just, said, oh, we're just going to redact that whole thing, and they, who, you know, mm -hmm. that's all speculation. I really don't know. Really does does not matter. What matters is what he's saying here. This is a very articulate person who is making a very strong case to let anybody know why this group is completely fiction, no facts. They are challenging just, facts because they're fiction. I don't understand why he wrote the original file of 107 MB. I mean, I don't understand the point of that, but obviously he's making a point. Yes, that is a big point because that shows how big that, that file is. And, and that will also help us too. And now I can go look at my file and make sure mine okay. is, is 107 because it should be. So that is a that is a oh, big big point. Right. Yeah. Maybe the email will tell me. It sh it it may I don't know I don't know you'd have to download it somewhere but you still have have to look at the properties to see. Um, he says the reason why they okay we already copied that because they want their own because of the following information, I redacted very small portions of the journal as it sometimes detailed the couple's intimate life and on two occasions with photographs that should not have been provided to me. So these are the ones, obviously, that I'm interested in here. Two photographs that should not have been provided to me. Um, I'm curious about that. In the, in the journal. So it, it sounds like it's just stuff that's in the journal. So it's not like any, you know, crime scene or anything like that. But it's like, okay, um, what was in the okay. journal that would need to be taken out? And maybe it's Mine not Mine is, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt. Go ahead. That's okay. My day one spreadsheet, redactedcopy.pdf is 7.35 MB. And that's small. Very small. So, I guess it was compressed. I apologize, Derek. My mistake. Yeah. So, and later I'll, I'll go. I'll go look at mine. I doubt mine was 172. Mine is probably the same as yours. Probably about seven. Um, okay. Now we can always go back and ask them why. You know, why did we get a spot? Is it because you had to compress it? I don't believe that that's the case because the way that it was sent, to me at least, was through a secure server where I know that they could have uploaded it um, at a at a much bigger rate. So we'll see. Um, if it seems like he says, as such, I notified the AVPD of this and will not be sharing these files, although you can find the aforementioned copy of the journal and original uncompressed copies and images contained within it at the links below. So the only reason I'm curious about what those um, photographs were are just because what is the proper context of, of those photographs? Was it uh, more of the intimate? stuff you know was it something else so that would kind of be the only thing and obviously that's kind of a little um you know everybody's gonna reading this we're all gonna kind of wonder oh what is he what is he talking about here the mind wanders and wonders etc cetera, etc cetera. but hopefully maybe tony can kind of clear that up to just I, mean, I know you can't say exactly what it is or whatever but maybe you can at least give us you know some proper context on that um to just let us know kind of what it had to do with you know is it personal stuff it's just stuff between them i don't know i don't i don't need to know too much i don't need tmi or whatever but you know it would be nice to have just a little more information about uh some of the proper context of that so anyways if not that's cool none of my business not really relevant obviously not relevant to this case like you and Catherine have both talked about um the stuff that was redacted um is not really relevant. 
Uh, so there's the two documents if you want to see them, if you want to read them. I do have the day one journal on my website, so you can go to thegraystage.wordpress.com and you can check that out. And you can probably figure out what size it is too. <laughs> I can guarantee it's under 25 megabits. So um, the original metadata from the spreadsheet suggests it was exported from, ex exported from day one into a PDF by David on his iPhone and had been completely unchanged. The photos embedded had no discernible file names or metadata. I don't know if you two have had a chance to compare those either, but if you compare them, um, some of uh, everything on Tony's PDF has all the dates in blue. The one that we have does not match that it looks like it's like photocopied or something like it's added back in so it does make me you know based on that maybe you can kind of see what stuff where you won't see what stuff but you'll see where some of the redactions were done by the apple valley after tony let them know that hey you gave me this stuff this this stuff should not be here maybe um Let's see, okay, there's that. The electronics report. So that's the big one. I believe that's the big, um, uh, or no, this is just like one page here, maybe one or two pages. But um, we'll make sure that everybody has access to that as well. She says this page was obtained through Joe Tomato at the Crowley <coughs> case, Fact versus Fiction. As you can see, it clearly reads not for public release and was redacted from the full copy, was redacted from the copy of the full report I have provided below. So even Joe Tomato had something here that Tony did not have, is what it sounds like. How would he get that? Better have been legally. Well... No, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm no, not gonna. No. <laughs> I mean, no, if it's I'm not legal, it and it, I mean, this is that pretty much says it right there. He says this is more evidence of a shady, less than legal methods to obtain these materials, right there. And they of course, often he often bragged about having a special relationship with the Apple Valley detectives. And so, I don't know, maybe maybe they told Tony that that's how they got this information. That but they, they also be. said that I would never get this information, that I was, I guess, barred from getting anything else from Apple Valley. Obviously, they're wrong because I have it, and I have the email to prove it. <laughs> I mean, a quick search on... <laughs> This guy. Mm -hmm. Would the police could have could have done a very quick search on this guy and, and found out a lot of information on him, and um, it would not have been, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't know what cop would want any relationship with him. No, oh, some of the stuff Joe that P. he's done. Joe P is the one you're talking about. No, I'm talking about this guy, Tomato Head. I'm talking oh. about this guy. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you want to elaborate? Um, no. <laughs> okay. But I will, <laughs> since you asked. <laughs> um, I mean, people who are listening need to know what yeah, these no, people are right. like right. and who they are. Yeah, no, you're right. I mean, um, this guy has been known of filing... Um, lawsuits oh, yeah. fake lawsuits that get thrown out of court frivolous lawsuits i think is the proper term the police can figure that out they can see this guy has no money cannot even pay his own bills and has many times filed frivolous lawsuits so why would they want to deal with with a guy like that so 
maybe they did maybe they didn't know maybe they didn't care but i kind of find it hard to think that the police would really want anything to do with a guy like that but you never know yeah so there's the reports um there are the photos the medical examiner photos and so you can download all of those directly from here. Um, we will make sure that if you're, if for, for whatever reason you're not comfortable downloading them from here, we'll also make sure that you can download them other places. And um, uh, there's also a video that we have here. So he says, um, so this is oh, right here. Yeah. These were obtained through the AVPD through several records requests. Uh, photographs such as bone frags near ME 0367 were denied and were not withheld. So I was a little confused about what do you mean? They were denied but not withheld. <laughs> I was a little confused by that phrasing there of what that meant. Um, so, because obviously there is no 0367. So what is in zero? No, no, no. That's that um, Kamel's uh, number, her case number. It ends in zero three six seven. I believe um, David is six six. Ah, okay. Photographs such as. Bone and Frank's I name. believe that Kamel's family has said, "Do not release maybe anything of hers because almost anything that we do of, of hers." Redacted, I guess. I mean, I know that we have some bank account activity, but a lot of that's redacted. Uh, the only thing that isn't is her uh, credit report, because we have both hers and David. Well, I mean, we see her tattoos here, and this is what bothers me about this part of it, is I specifically asked for photographs like this from not only the AVPD, but from the Hennepin County Medical Examiner's Office, and I was turned down both times. They, they wouldn't give me anything, because I specifically was asking, too, for where you see on the bottom one where it says Skull Frags near ME15, that's David. Those are the ones that were collected near David, sent with David, because I wanted that photo of that skull cap, and they they said, no, we, we're not releasing these to you. And then look, they give it to him. They were up obtained. Through a record. I was release. denied and they were granted to him. And that, you know, I, I'm not happy about that. No, I mean, that doesn't make sense. Because, again, they don't get to, to pick and choose. Now, they have said that there's still data that they're waiting on. When they, when I spoke with them or when I, you know, had a whatever, when I conversed with them, they, didn't, they were not specific as to what data. So I let them know what data <laughs> at least what data needs to be included in that and I am when they f fulfill that request I am expecting all of this data that we're looking at here nothing less I'll take more but nothing less or else there's some legal issues there and they they know that I don't have to tell them that they already know that so they know that they have a problem here um, unless they're going to say, no, this was not legally ob obtained. Which, you know, if they say that, okay, then, you know, I understand why you're not giving it to me. But it has to be one or the other. Um, and the, then the photo here, or I'm sorry, then the video, which is about, what, nine minutes long? No, it's about 13 minutes long, I, I believe. So that was the other thing I was like. We've been asking for a video, and you guys gave it to this person, you know? Yeah, Why? I got <laughs> flat out denied twice for yeah. that one. Yep. And I was very specific in both times. So, okay. Yep, I'm glad I, to have it now. <laughs> yeah, I, I did create a video that has this video and um, these photos, so if you do want to just go and watch that, obviously you, you can download everything directly from here too. 
but again if you're not comfortable with it um, we'll make sure that there's other places that you can download it but if you just want to view it um, as a video and a slideshow you can go to my website or to my uh, to my YouTube channel and you can you can look at that now and, and it, it's public data so anyone can take it and also you know do whatever they want with it too it's not I'm not copywriting it it's not nothing for me to copyright okay so all I did hey, was whole freak issue for me and <laughs> this is, you know, I know I shouldn't like, laugh it's I shouldn't laugh at it but it's just so ridiculous like how anal can you get over that crap you know you either trust your people or you don't but well I mean, and I want there was um, old yeah, I'm sorry Go ahead. Um, those who are listening right now I wanted you guys to know that on my YouTube channel tomorrow night I will be premiering a video I just did covering the bloody the bloody clothes from the new data dump right there so I'll be going over that in detail I, uh, only for um, David and Kamel I will not be covering Rania okay good okay. Uh, yeah I was gonna ask you more about that um, I'm glad you're using the that function, you know. But um, I was going to ask you more about about that. What can we expect to see from that video? So I'm glad you covered that. And I hope everybody here is subscribed to Catherine's channel because uh, she has a lot of great great data there, a great reach. And um, you know, make sure that you are subscribed to that channel. She posts all of her videos in our group too. But if if you want to see it first, if you want to see it quick, if you want to make sure that you don't miss anything. Um, that is the the best way to make sure. So if you just go to YouTube, search for Catherine, M I C H E L E, one L, and you'll definitely find it. I will be watching that too. I may have to sneak away for a few minutes. Um, can you tell us about how long it is, Catherine? Um, it's about a uh, half an hour, almost about thirty minutes, I think. So it's not too long. Okay, and if people go to your YouTube channel right now, will they be able to set their reminder? Yes, on? yeah. Okay, great, great. Great, 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 great. Uh, is it in the Let's Get Ready to Rumble? Um, Derek, it's, it is not that one. It's the one right underneath it. I think it's just called David Crowley Crime Scene Video and Photos. If I remember correctly, that's the name of the of the video that has um, pretty much the 13 minute, 14 minute video, which you know we could always play here too, and then it has um, those photos. But I know it's late for both of you, so I do appreciate you both being on here. Um, it's, oh, late. <laughs> it's, it's late for me, so I know it's late for both <laughs> of you. Here. But we're we're almost we're coming to a to a conclusion to the end here um as yeah, far as all this of is us. the interesting part <laughs> <laughs> lies confidentiality that's and shady dealings yeah at the crowley case um and that's the other thing why don't they just say we believe david crowley is guilty that's the name of their group that's what it should be david crowley is guilty david crowley murdered everybody and killed himself you know what i mean the the name just gives I don't, it gives it away that they're just trick people. Would people seeking the truth join a group no. saying <laughs> David Crowley guilty join us? Nope. We can hate on everybody who thinks he's innocent. Nope. But if these people really thought that David Crowley was guilty, they would use a name that backed that up. And they don't. Mm hmm. And the thing is, is they lure these people in, and then they bait them. Mm -hmm. Share your opinions on the case. We welcome all views. And the minute that they start talking about the case, they get attacked. And then boot it. And then they sit there and they talk shit about them. When they can't even respond. So, right. Yep. That's the people that you deal with. In that group. Okay. And, of course, we'll see it right here. And Tony backs it up, too. Yep, says they like to claim... They like to claim that they're good people who would never disclose things told to them by the family and trust, 
hurt them or play games with such a case. That's pretty much what they're all doing. Their entire stick is dragging out drama to virtual signal mm-hmm. about how respectful and smart they are, saying that they are on the side of the families who likely only tolerate them, and while they, behind the scenes, share graphic photos and confidential information the family entrusted them with, with complete strangers. So they're still saying, they're, they're acting like they're getting all this stuff from the family. Mm-hmm. Um, that's yeah. It's hard for me to believe, but maybe they are. Whatever, let's give them the, the benefit of the doubt. Tony would definitely know more than me. I, I have no interest in this group, no interest in paying attention to anything that these people are doing because it is complete fiction. You know, if, if you really want to figure out what's happening here, I wouldn't spend too much time. I wouldn't spend too much time there. Just read what Tony says here. You'll get the kind of <laughs> the whole bullet points of what, what it is. So save yourself a lot of time. All they're trying to really do is play games. And um, so that's really, really sad. But uh, then we get to, so this is from April 25th, 2001. And Louise Gibson, I don't know who she is, but she says she said David was resentful of Rania that he never wanted children. I've heard that many times. Um, I've heard Sidra say I that. Have a, uh, I have a feeling that she's speaking of Sidra. Yeah. Because yeah. there's even more intimate detail. And I want everybody to understand that this group they are all middle-aged adults and older so for them to be acting this way is just beyond shameful Hmm. but emmy said no signs of pregnancy or recent pregnancy or anything so um yeah and it this is backwards by the way so um this is you know you can see that 20, 1959, so it's kind of backwards, so it would be kind of better if we read it the other way, but just for time's sake here, um, no signs of pregnancy or anything. I mean, what does that have to do with anything? It's Keep reading the... down, and, and it'll go over that. Okay. Maybe I should start from the bottom then here. Is that what I should do here? Well, it's where Sidra's telling her that Kamel wore the corset, and that's what I'm saying. Keep reading it okay. down there in the corset when she was pregnant. Right there. you see it. Okay. So this is April. Uh, I'm, I'm going to start right here then. Sidra's friend said that David was being on mushrooms and got mad at But that's in June. Kamel and Kick. Yeah. You know, and that's never mentioned. Yeah, he did take mushrooms. Uh, later, oh no, this is. Uh, does does their basement lock? He did take lock? mushrooms like in June or something like that. I don't but think he, the basement locks from that side, but I mean we have the photo of the door, but I don't I don't think it locks that way. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, that gave me an idea. Okay, go ahead. Okay, so starting here, I'm gonna start in April, twenty um, fifth. 1956 i'm just going to read up so she says she said she was staying at their old apartment and they had another dog and that was and that something happened and david threw the dog against the wall okay i mean it's all just reaching right everything we're seeing here is just just games this is all just games yeah just try to get people oh this is why david did it none of this shows why david did it you can this is just attacking his character this has nothing to do with the actual case of, you know, all of this is, is just reaching. It is completely reaching, which is completely different than what she was doing. Maybe, you know, I don't know what happened to this person. This is just like a completely different person. So I don't know who the real Gibson is. Was it the one that joined the group way back when? Or is this the real one? One of the, It can't be both. <laughs> it can't be both. Um, also, that in his journal, there was something like 20 ways to kill a fetus. She said she contacted the inmate uh, to make sure no, that the male wasn't or hadn't been pregnant. Is there anything about in his journal about no. 20 ways to kill a fetus? No. That is a flat out lie. So is Louise lying or Sidra lying? Here we don't know. 
Correct. Well, if Louise had the journal back when she's talking about this, then she flat out lied. If she, they said that they had the journal for months. This is April. Mm Mm-hmm. That's yeah, and that's it. So either she she had it, yeah, and she never read it, or she did read it and she's just continuing to lie. Or she's just she knows that it's not true and still telling lies. And so she's trying to pass the buck on to Sidra, which is what Louise has always done. She always passes the buck on to somebody else. And so here she's saying basically the implication, which we are now inferring, is that Sidra told her in David's journal there was something like 20 ways to kill a fetus. And we all know that's a load of crap. There's not even searches like that on the computer. So where the hell did that come from? Oh, God, with her, who knows? Um, See, uh, n- never mind, never mind. <laughs> she also says here a minute later, I mean, she's quick, like every minute, she's like, boom, boom, boom. And mm-hmm. These are all like just talking points, like a CNN talking point thing here. Had all sorts of things through her head that David had forced Kamel to get termination. And she also said because Kamel had the corset, where she used to wear it after she had Rania, as she had a week back. She thought if she was wearing it, she might have been pregnant. These are probably all stuff that uh, Sidra told Luis in con- confidence, I'm, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. Um, this is all stuff that obviously, if there was any validity to it or anything like that, all of this would have come up. You know, this is this would be something to um, that you could... You could definitely prove was she pregnant? Was she not pregnant? I mean, really, David killed everybody and himself because she was pregnant. It is a big, it, that is a big reach. But Luis could be fed in information here. So could Sindra, too. You don't know. You know, we don't know at, at that point because um, we don't know when Luis and Sindra talked. Um, there were different times when I talked with Sindra and. She had a lot of questions, and she found the answers and then realized that that stuff was not, you know, maybe accurate. But I don't know. Just from my dealings with Sidra, she, she, she had a lot of questions, not any answers. Yeah, and, you know, I'm pretty sure that she had first contacted me when I first started this case because someone with a fake name, you know, um, and... If it was Sidra, you know, this person, she was very, um, it was like an honest um, digging, so to speak. Uh, You know, I know digging might be the wrong word, but here, and I think this is the perfect example of what Tony's saying, you know, that throwing people under the bus, Louise is throwing Sidra under the bus. Now, whether or not Sidra said this stuff, that's to me neither here nor there although um, it's a lie we know it's not true that these things did not happen but the fact is is that if Sidra had said this why is Louise putting this out to everybody she should be keeping her mouth shut that that has nothing to do with the case yeah only if she's trying to get how she is proving (laughs) David's guilt to all the unsuspecting people and see Now that we have the journal, we know for a fact that David did not talk to Camille about quitting her job. She just up and quit it one day, and David was shocked. Yeah. He writes about it. He's like, oh, my gosh, she quit her job. It wasn't, oh, my gosh, she quit her job. I can't believe she did it. You know, it worked. No, it, it, it was just out of the blue. It took him by surprise. And see, everybody in the documentary was saying that he coerced her to do it. And then he was happy about it because he won. And that's an absolute lie. Yeah, He fact, had no yeah. idea. Yeah, he, he, in fact, he talks about supporting her and not, you know, making sure that there will be enough money for the family and that he wanted to support whatever it was his wife wanted to do. But mm-hmm. that doesn't bode well for the narrative. Yeah, and then she started doing, I believe, online counseling and, I guess, personal sessions. But I'm not exactly sure because I had assumed that she quit, like, early fall. 
but this was back in like May, late May, when she quit the practice. And then so I, I know that she kept leaving to for appointments and stuff like that. But I'm not exactly sure if she was just on her own at that time. I don't have very much information. So. Just going off of what the journal had to say. And the corset thing, I've always thought that was weird. So. Anyway. Greg? I know, did we lose him? <laughs> um, his microphone is muted. Or oh no, oh, it's, he might. no, the other one the other thing is I oh maybe he's there now. I'm here. I'm here. Okay. Okay, okay. Sorry, I just had to step out. I <laughs> was like listening. To get dead I was error. Listening. No, I was listening there. Um Yeah, I mean <laughs> the the corset thing like you said yeah i think that is kind of strange too um have you guys ever heard of something called spanx yeah so mm -hmm. maybe it's like an early version of that you know women just kind of use it to kind of keep their body in shape or something or you know what i mean i don't know so. well she might have been having back pain and if she had used it before while she was pregnant with ranya and maybe she tweaked her back or something with all the exercises that they were always doing because they love to exercise together. You know, maybe it helped her. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, we're, we're just kind of, you know, grabbing at things here, but, you know, it, it makes sense. Sure. I mean, that's, and, and I think that's what this group is really trying to do is they're trying to plant those seeds and there it, tony has proof of that later here too they're trying to plant those seeds to get you to go down false false trails yeah and i don't you know anyone that that has happened to i don't want you to feel you know don't don't feel bad man people fall for that stuff there's nothing wrong with it but it's about what you do with it once you realize that it's that it's not true that it's all fake that people have been lying to you you know i said this years ago you know people don't like to be lied to if you lie to them, these are the consequences. You get a guy like Tony and, you know, he doesn't agree with us, probably doesn't like us. I don't know. Um, but this, these are the type of things that, that happen. This is why you just need to be honest, be, be truthful. You know, there's nothing wrong with saying, hey, man, I think David Crowley is guilty. You know, I can't, I can't prove it, but I, but I think it. You know, we, we get that stuff, you know, I totally get that. I understand that point. You know, I was I was there, you know, I wanted to believe it. But when I looked, I was like, wait a minute, I, 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 why? Why do I believe it? Oh, because of the, you know, oh, the FEMA thing, the police, oh, here we go again, you know, the conspiracies, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, take all that stuff out of it. Take all of this stuff out of it and just kind of just like look at the facts not the fiction look at the documents look at what all of these documents say and i know that it takes time you know um even have a guy here like tony you know he, he's read my my book the the purpose of my book was so that people would understand why david is not guilty with tony i, I totally failed he still read my book. He took the time to read the book, and he still believes David Crowley is guilty. I can't do any. I I can't help him any anymore. I, there's no need for me to bash him or for me to talk smack about him or to go after him or call him a clown or do anything that these people did that Tony obviously trusted with certain documents and certain stuff that he didn't trust us with, you know. Um, so it's just these are the type of things that can happen just just be a good person just tell people what you believe stand by those beliefs and don't play any games yeah there's really no need to it so um 
this old thing where she says, uh, she said David was resentful of Rania that he never wanted children. Now, those are the type of things that can't, that I believe Sidra, I believe Sidra was fed a lot of false stuff. I don't believe Sidra looked at a lot of things because when I um, conversed with her, it didn't sound like she really knew a lot and she wasn't, didn't really want to know about certain things. But on, on other things, she was very curious about. So she was looking, she was fishing for certain stuff, but um, you know, I, I always felt like um, some of the Grey State goons were kind of feeding her a lot of false stuff, and they were sheltering her and kind of like a like a gatekeeper, right? Pretty much doing what this group does to these people. Hey, man, we're here to help. We're with the family. This is Sean Wright, Mason, H Hendrix, you know, these guys, they told us the exact, it's the same script. It's the exact same script. You know, hey, we're just trying to help this family, blah, blah, blah. Look at their public posts. If you go back and look at the, I know this is going to be in a long podcast, way, way in the future. One of, one of my last chapters of my book, you know, covers a lot of that. So hopefully it covers a lot of that stuff. But it's like they were pretty much trying to tell us, look, the family is grieving. You guys, you know, if you want to be respectful towards this family, you know, don't bring up any of this stuff. Don't talk about this stuff. And I, I think Sidra kind of fell into that line too. I think a lot of people did. And I think at some point, just like just like with Tony here, man, everybody is going to realize these people are full of crap. They are not your friends. They do not care about you. They do not care about this family. They are there to play games. They are there to make sure that you don't look at the facts. They are the fiction. And that's it. I would like to add something about the journal. Yes. That uh, I found extremely interesting. Even though David did discuss working on the script, he didn't really discuss any conspiracy theories or the collapse of society. Nothing like that, really. He just, he focused on researching and writing and setting goals for himself. Mm -hmm. Lots of self-help. Lots of uh, talking about he and Camille. And his struggles as a parent. Um, a soldier who had left was stop lost, which when he refers to himself being kidnapped and having PTSD, it's in reference to the stop loss. He says he wasn't injured on duty and he didn't see things that made him have PTSD on duty. It was the fact that they held him over there against his will. And that's what he's referring to because I think it's April or early May that he starts to talk about it. But then later in June, he explains it in detail. And once you read it, you're like, oh, that makes complete sense. Right. So, I mean, the, the guy had things he was working on. Yeah. And he wasn't perfect. But they said earlier, neither of us are. None of us are. That's right. That's right, and we're not trying to be. I think that's the whole the whole difference. There's no, you know, oh, well, you know, we're just going to, our whole group is going to just be calling people out on, you know, things that, that they get wrong or things that we don't like or blah, blah, blah. It's like, wait a minute, you know, the purpose here is to either prove David Crowley did it or he didn't. That's what it really should should be. Any 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 group or any people that take the focus off of, of that you know it's like well you're kind of dis distracting from what the real goal is here why why would you do that if you really care about this family if you really care about this case that doesn't make sense and it's going to raise red red flags you know there are people out there that are watching this that are listening to this maybe they don't you know maybe not live but they will hear this that know david that know Kamel. And the other thing that we keep hearing is that there's some type of pact that not only did David do this, but Kamel did this too. 
yeah, and there's no proof of that. But um, Greg, let's just finish what okay. he has on the website because we're all getting excited. <laughs> okay, sorry. Okay, so uh, Louise Gibson, yeah, so he said Scissors Friend said something about David being on mushrooms once and being mad. We already talked about that. Um, uh, so Louise Gibson thinks Jason Allen leaked this, leaked the scripts to, to Dan Hinnon. Um, she says Jason Allen is a douchebag. Does she know Jason Allen? Does she know something we don't know? Danny Mason rides off others' talents. Uh, David didn't like wing distract. I can't hear you. You can't hear me? I all hear is Catherine typing. Oh. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, you can, yeah. talk a little louder, please, Greg. Or move your mic closer. I would, but there are people here sleeping, too. So. Oh. It's okay. <laughs> Uh, Sorry. That's okay. I will move the mic. Is this any better? I'm going to move the mic right up to here. Okay. Um, David didn't like Wing distracting from his plants. I don't know what that... Did she mean Rania? I don't know what that means. Who's Wing? I would assume that means Rania. It seems like all this is like... It, it, she's basically trying to show Tony why uh, David didn't like Rania. She's pretty much trying to say David did not like his own daughter and killed her. When we have, if, if you look at the sloppy mentry, if you watch only one part of that piece of crap documentary, watch where David and his daughter are on a tire swing and watch their interaction right there, okay? That is a father who loves his daughter. That's and stuff. the little girl who loves her dad. That's She's right. Like, Amen. Daddy? Amen. No, it's like... That should have been there. at the end of the film. That's how I would have closed the film out, right there. Yep. And there's a part in the journal that really melted my heart. Basically, David says he wants to track down his lineage and Camille's lineage. And I guess do like a tree yeah. and write the story of him and Camille and their families and give it to Ronnie when she graduates. And so, I mean, that's, that's extremely special. And that doesn't it's, sound like a father who doesn't like his child. Yeah. He is being extremely thoughtful, trying to do something for her for the future. Right. I know that this was either June or July, but yep. it doesn't matter. No, that's, you know? that's a he big... Doesn't no, that's a that's a big thing where he's you can see he's not only planning for his future, he's planning for her future too. Mm -hmm. For her 18th birthday. And then you're going to tell us a couple months later he decides to kill her? No. I mean, all of the evidence that you see in this day one journal proves that David didn't do this. I mean, it, it, if there's nothing in here, if you read the day one journal and you think that David did it, you obviously already have some preconceived stuff that you already want you want to believe that David Crowley is 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 guilty there there's nothing in there the the cops also say that too so anyone who reads the day one journal and thinks that you know that proves David did it, it I just I don't it's personally possible. understand that I just don't understand everyone is free to believe whatever they want this this is the greatest country ever we have freedom believe whatever you want but don't try to tell me that because you're not that's not going to work on on me definitely it's like they're going to warp david's worst days ever into the actual reason why he snapped in december some of these worst days that he had were in july and june right and yes he's down sometimes who doesn't get down and he does admit that he deals with mood swings. But, you know, I don't know him personally. So, it just seemed like he had a lot of stress. And he and Kamal were trying to work through things. And obviously through the journal, they were definitely working through things. And they seemed to be in sync. He writes that numerous times. So. Yeah, I mean, I, okay, I've, I've, I've never come across any soldier that served for the, for this country that has not had stress. And things that they will carry 
for the rest of their life. But what I read in the day one journal is David trying to, first of all, to recognize those problems and then to get over them. And that's what I see when I read the and full journal. The, yeah, and that was the old David. He was trying to shed right. those feelings, those emotions, so he could be a better person. And you see that with all his searches and the different things that he was doing with yoga and meditation. He's trying to help himself become a better father, husband, in person. Right. And that's that's the first step is is admitting your faults. Most people don't do that on paper. <laughs> they don't do that, you know. In they don't type that stuff out, you know. You're so it takes a really strong person, first of all, to really do that. And you can tell reading the journal, David planned on doing something with this with this journal too. You know, I I think he was, you know, once he made it big and made it famous and got rich and all that stuff, I think he was going to go back and use this journal um, as a documentary or maybe have Rania use it. Mm -hmm. You know, I think there was there was a lot of reason why he was doing this day one journal um, to document everything. It's more planning for his future. You're not going to do all this stuff and then kill yourself all of a sudden. And if you do, you're going to delete every I don't know I mean I really don't know that's all guessing but um she also or uh Tony also says about Louise Gibson that Louise said that uh David didn't want any more kids uh Rania was a little slow um I don't know where that came from either I mean that's I did not get that from any of the journal stuff yeah I didn't really get that either um Kamel was David's number one fan Kamel was more upset with her parents for not listening to her views, getting chemo, the dietary things. Yeah, I think that's definitely evident in the day one journals. Felt offended mm -hmm. that they wouldn't listen to her to her views. So, I mean, it's like she can speculate on all of this different stuff here, but nobody else can. You know, oh, there's something wrong. We're disrespecting the families and everything if we even talk about all this stuff. Like, screw you. You know, whatever. You know, everybody, <laughs> you can talk about whatever you want to talk about. You know, believe whatever you want to. But, man, I mean, when it, when it really comes down to if you're going to try to act like you have facts, you better have them. And if you don't have them, don't be shocked when people call you out, which is exactly what's happening here. Um, she says, they told, Sh or he says, sorry, um, this is Tony now getting back to it. They told Sean at the time, but he didn't think it was odd. If something isn't prepared, if someone isn't prepared to hear you out, why bother with them? Well, consider the source with that. I mean, the fact that they have Sean in the group at all is like the mm -hmm. biggest thing that dis discredits anything that they have anything that they do if they don't know who this guy is they're just not looking they're they're not researchers research this this guy run it run a background check on this guy find what yeah, you'll find you'll find what you need to know about sean wright David and Kamel nearly split in early 2014. Again, you know, speculation. We don't have anything like that. We know um, that there's been things said in news articles. So this is all just repeating what um, mm -hmm. the all of those hit pieces said. Whether it's true or not, we know that, sh that they stayed together and they were working it out. Um, and David talks about that in his day, day one journal. So it's just it's just really odd the things that they want to make sure that you understand. It's all a mind fuck. It's just just subconsciously just you know get you to just you know oh this that oh, okay well maybe he's guilty you know I mean these are just zombies and they just want to turn you into a zombie too. Don't fall for it, people. Please don't fall for this crap. Do your own research. Come to your own conclusion. If you come to the same con. con conclusion like tony did tony came to the exact same conclusion that these fiction groups did you know but at least he did his own research you know um he's our 
articulate. He has he hasn't really expressed why he thinks David Crowley is guilty or anything. He just says that he agrees with him. But at least he's done all of that, and it doesn't sound like he's playing any of the games that this fiction group is playing. So that's something. There's something to be said ab about that. Um, David makes an effort to be more empathetic and understand. They pull closer. All stuff from the whole journal, everything. I mean, this is all stuff people read it for for yourself. Read the journal. Um, it's just the dark David's dark places was in Junish. Uh, he thought he was a god. I didn't see anything like that. But uh, here's the main uh, uh, thing: when you say when you're gonna tell, was, me, go ahead. <laughs> there was one part I think in July, and I believe that he was euphoric mm -hmm. over the whole um, getting to speak with the producers and everything. And so he kind of mentions at that point that he could do anything, that he's a god. He's a god. Okay. And I, <laughs> I think, you know, if you just got called out to L.A. to speak with producers about something, you worked extremely hard about, and you had all types of uh, other spinoffs for this idea. And you literally could see it all in front of you, everything laid out of how your future is going to be. You would feel a little invincible, too. Mm -hmm. um, Tom, I mean, anyone who thinks Tom Lydon is, is a decent person, I definitely got to <laughs> gotta question that one. Because um, if you look at just the way Tom Lydon reported on this case... Man, I don't know. I'm just, I'm Ray. just not seeing it. Like we're living in two Ray. parallel worlds. If that's the case, I have to do the mommy voice, Greg. Okay. Now we have to ask Tom Lydon's kitty cat how he feels. I think a <laughs> kitty cat would think he's decent. <laughs> that guy, somebody better call Peta or somebody. That guy should not have <laughs> any cats at all. He should not be allowed to be anywhere near any cats. Anybody look at his uh, Twitter page, you'll see he's a slime. Oh, he's so gross. Well, let's just talk about yep. that. Let's talk about what 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 tweet are you guys specifically talking about here? Tom Lydon said he wanted to f a cat. Is that what, what we're talking about? Yeah, that's what we're going for. <laughs> okay, so I know we have people listening, uh, watching this that have cats. So imagine if Tom Lydon said he wanted to do that to your cat. Okay. And this is a real tweet, people, and it's still on his Twitter account, so <laughs> you can still find it. <laughs> and he's still with Fox 9 News for some reason. He's still there, and he's still reporting. And, of course, he just happens to be the guy who was able to lob a bunch of softball questions to the Apple Valley police. Um, Sean wanted him to report real news. I mean, to me, that tells me that Sean was trying to tell him, hey, you're not reporting real news. Can you report real news? I mean, I, I don't understand this. What, is, what does this mean? Like, why would you, what does that mean to report real news? I think what Sean really wanted was for Tom Lydon to agree with them that David was guilty and make sure that you don't stray from that, which is very similar to what Sean Wright had told me, too report real real news sean wright's version of real news is that david crowley is guilty he killed everybody and himself he went into a dark place and kamel did this too in sean wright's view that is the real news that there was a pact well to everybody else maybe not so much um, eric nelson is is a good man again here we have another thing if you watch eric nelson's documentary you can decide for yourself what you believe about eric nelson and this is the whole thing it's all about character right it's not about well you know what do they do that proves it's all about the character tom lyden is a decent person you know eric nelson is a good man i don't give a shit about any of that what did <laughs> okay, they say okay, about i need this to case? interject okay <laughs> eric nelson took recordings and edit them. He cut and pasted to make these two feel like they were insane. He picked and chose which journal entries would be taken out of context throughout the whole uh, 
journey of the documentary and manipulate the viewers. This is not a decent person. A decent person would have done everything. They would have revealed everything about this family instead of making them the villains. I mean, when the dad is sitting there reading some of those journal entries, they are highly out of context. Right. And now we have that person. And, yeah, and it's very sickening. And then, like I said about the, like the so-called rapture video or whatever, if you put headphones on or you listen it with earbuds, you will hear every time they stop the tape and slice. It's there. You can hear the clicking. But, you know, he's a decent person. He's a decent person. Well, we know that he's he a... didn't do right by the family because um, if, if he did, then Kamel's family would not have had all of their footage taken out. So he did not do right by the family. So I don't know what that means exactly. Um, but I don't see anywhere where he did right by this family. He a accused the family's son. Uh, if you're talking about David's side, he accused their son of being this crazy person who killed everybody and himself. And um, and then, you know, um, he also tried to throw Kamel under the bus, too. So he didn't do right by their side of the family. So... To say that he did right by the family, I don't know what that means. I really don't. He did not make I anybody mean, look good. Nobody looks good in that film. Except me, maybe. I'd say me. Maybe, maybe Dan, too. Maybe Dan. But, you know, we're the only ones who really look good in that film. Because we're the only ones who are telling the truth in that film. Um, I, I would say David did, too. But they've taken a lot of his stuff out of, out of context. You know, they had... You know, we gave Dan and I um, uh, were we gave them as much data as we had at that time. We didn't have much, but we had enough for them to put in there. If you if if they really wanted to give the other side, they would have put everything we told them about the bullet hole, item fifty seven, which I believe is this this one of the smoking guns. They would have put a lot of things that we were talking about the facts. There's a reason why there's only two or three minutes of our footage in there when they recorded over one hour, not including our live broadcast that Dan and I did that same day live, no edits, while they recorded that too, and they put like two or two or three minutes in there. But yet they put Joseph Seaton, Sean Wright, all these losers, all these guys who David was trying to distance himself from. They put all of them in there, and these are the, and all, all these also... people that thought David was guilty. There was no balance in there. He didn't do right by anybody. Not even himself. I'm glad he lost $40,000. He should have lost more. And what he did to you and Dan was he took you, highly edited your, uh, your interviews and then twisted what you guys were saying, taking it out of context. Right. It was like almost gotcha moments to make you guys sound insane. Yes, yes. So they had, they had, not... they had looked at um, what Sean Wright. They had looked at what I had said about Sean Wright. Um, obviously, they had the text message is between Sean and I because they were very focused on that. They wanted me to talk more about him. They wanted me to. They wanted the quote that I gave to Sean, which was the the credibility quote, where I I told him point blank, I don't care because he was telling me don't do this. You know, don't keep going forward because of your credibility and I told him I do not care about my credibility that's the quote that they wanted that's the quote that they got it that they got that's the quote that they used and that's and that's fine because I, you know I know that people real people are going to not take that out of out of context they're going to realize that what that really means that if you're really serious about this case and if you are a real journalist, if you really want to find the truth, if you're a researcher, you don't care about your credibility. You don't withhold stuff. You don't hold back 
because of your credibility because somebody threatens you that they will sabotage your credibility you go forward because that's what the truth tells you to do you go where the truth is the credibility means nothing to me and it still doesn't what matters to me is getting to the truth and that's where we are that's why we've gotten this far and that's why we, we, we will continue to keep going on three hours later even though <laughs> i really only wanted to go one hour here but we've gone very very long here so i really appreciate everybody who has um hung in there i know both of you are, you know it's 12 a.m here <laughs> That's yeah, one one here, two the for sun her, is coming three up. for everybody on the East Coast. <laughs> well, at least all of our British people are, you know, they're just waking up and, you know, it's like uh, 7 a.m., 8 a.m., so it's a morning show for them. Well, there's not much to go, right? You can just read through the rest of this real quick? I believe so. Please. Uh, okay, uh, let's see. Let's see. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. I mean, a lot of this stuff is just not, you know, uh, relevant. Unless you guys... a plot. Is that it? Did you all make it through that? Which part? That David could be a twat. David could be a twat. Tension with David and Kamel. Uh, the garage sale. Oh, the garage sale, oh, yeah. Oh, he could be clean. Yeah, yeah, they focused a lot on the garage sale. The early news re reports focused a lot on that, and I, I didn't really think there was too much to that garage sale, but apparently that was a big deal. I don't really know what that was about. Um, David would go to the garage and smoke weed, MD smoke, and tell her to fuck herself, go look after the kid. I don't know where that's coming from, so... I mean, yeah, unless I mean, it, unless it's coming from Kamel or from David, who knows? This you know? is just hearsay. It's all hearsay, and it, it could be things that people are fed. Um, mm -hmm. That's it, you know. So I don't know. I don't know what relevance any of that would really have. But you you can see what what she's trying to do. She's just trying to get people to think that sure. there is some distance you know that there is something here when there really isn't there's nothing there just, you know just trying to show emotional abuse right and then ig ignoring all of the facts ignoring all of the documents there's nothing in here about the documents there's nothing in in here about the bca reports about the dna evidence i haven't seen anything so far here. It's all hearsay. Yeah, I mean... I mean... <laughs> I mean, I, I was hoping to see, well, you know, hey, they've, you know, David did it, did it, blah, 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 but it's it's nothing like that. It's all just rumors, speculation, all things to just cast doubt, and it sounds like Tony realized, man, you guys are full of, full of crap. Mm-hmm. Um... Now, here's an interesting one um, where she says Sean Hendricks Peck and Adam Schaubauer all got taken under David's dad's wing, had TV series planned, and documentary took Sean two years to convince David to do a supporting documentary, The Rise. This is why Sean Wright did not want The Rise put out there. They rough cut because they wanted to make money off, off of it. And eventually mm -hmm. they realized you can't do that because we have it in David's own words not to do that. This was damage control. And what uh, this Gibson person is doing, what some of these other people are doing, is trying to, con trying to ride the coattails of damage control. So while they may say that Danny August Mason is riding the coattails of David Crowley, they're doing something even worse. They're riding the coattails of people that are riding the coattails that are riding the coattails of David Crowley. And they don't even realize that. They're right there with them. You know, except Danny mm -hmm. August Mason was actually there. These people are just riding coattails, adding things um, that they that they cannot prove but here's where she says this is a big one here so you tell me which joe she's talking about here because it's um joe was tampering with and this is a direct quote from gibson too joe was tampering with stuff and found something about the gun plus store okay first of all 
tampering with stuff. <laughs> I mean, why would you need to be tampering with anything? There's no need to be tampering with anything. Sounds like a crime to me. I believe it was Joe T. I mean, and found something about the Gun Plus store. I mean, is is that the, the the Gun Plus store? Is that the one document that the police gave us that shows that she purchased the gun? We don't really know what it means. She doesn't even know what it means, if anything. We haven't got anything with the Celebrite. We're just sending the group. We're just sending the Justice group into a spin. So it's a, it, there's their goal. So everybody that is in the in in our group in the Justice for David Crowley and Family Facebook group, if you join that group for whatever reason, that is their goal. It's not to find the truth. It is to send you into a spin. Why would you want to join a group like that? Um, I honestly don't care what they have. I'm working on my own to get my own stuff. So they can sit there and pretend to have whatever. I mean, she pretty much she's admitting she doesn't. They don't have anything, but they're sending. They're trying to send the group in into a spin, and it's and it's not working though. That's the other thing, it's not working. Um, but they get off on trying to send people into a spin. It's just like, well, why don't you try to? Why don't you try to get people to understand why you believe David Crowley is guilty? Focus your efforts there. That's why you're frauds. That's why you're phonies. That's why nobody takes you seriously. That's why you fail. Because you're not focused on that. You're focused on a spin. You're focused on these lies. You're not focused on truth. That's why nobody takes you seriously. They may act like they do. They may be fishing you. Um, so then there's something here about the disclosure. Um... It all depends as to what you want to disclosure. Then you come up with multiple scenarios. Most involve having to tell white lies. So, I mean, they're admitting they tell lies. <laughs> they call them white lies. You guys have heard that before. Santa Claus, that's a, that's a white why lie. Why are they oh, telling lies? I mean, yeah, why I tell mean, lies? What, what's the point of that? I don't know. Are they telling their group members lies? I don't know. And sending Is them on a wild saying? goose Yeah, I mean, why? They want to send their members on a wild goose chase. It, it's right there. Or coming up with holy the backstory holy. to send them off the scent. Here's the other thing. To send them off the scent. Because they know that we are on the right track. They know David Crowley is mm -hmm. not guilty. Here it is right right here. They want to send people off of, of the scent that, oh, okay, David Crowley is innocent. That's the scent that they're talking about here, that she's talking about. That's the purpose of, of their group. That's why nobody should join them. That's why nobody should entertain. I mean, I, I, I get it. You know, um, people join groups. You know, they want to see what's going on. That's why they can't maintain people in their group. You know, that's why this group yeah. continues to, to grow, and theirs, theirs doesn't. Their group is toxic. I mean, if this is they... what they do... Yeah, you're right. You're right. It is toxic, and Tony just proved it. Yeah. They have no information. They lie to their members, and anybody who's within this group, uh, you need to confront your admins and demand the truth because you've been lied to. They've withheld information from you. And they're lying to you about information that they say that they have. So they have no problem sending you on a wild goose chase and coming mm -hmm. up with the backstory to send you off of the scent. Powerful words, right there, man. It doesn't get any more clear, right there. You got burned. It's you got power. burned. Yeah. Yeah. And with your own words, and there it is. That is the truth. What you're seeing here, Tony presented you the truth. Okay, um, final thoughts, final words. Everybody's still with us. Wow, somehow we still have nine people in the chat, in the live chat. <laughs> I don't know how. I, I'm really sorry. I did not expect for us to go this this long. Um, but, I mean, 
just this last sentence, just read this paragraph here. I mean, this pretty much is, this is why nobody pays attention to them. It's all distractions. Catherine, any final words? Um, <laughs> no, <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I, 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 I have mentally dropped off this okay. a, a while been, ago. <laughs> you've been killing it in the in the chat room there too. So I know. I know. We're great. all talking. It's just that. silly because I, I just, I can't. <laughs> I just can't keep going. It's just. Um, I guess my my final thoughts are is that I think Tony did an amazing job. I think he called them out. He laid it out. He showed his proof, and um, they can't backpedal out of this. So, you know, I just hope everybody goes to the website and looks up or downloads these files and reads them for themselves. Okay. I right. second that. I'm tired. Can you wrap this up, please? <laughs> all right. I'm going to shut this down. Thank you all for joining us. I really appreciate that. Um, you can always watch the replay, and uh, until next time, and there will be a next time. Thank you. Until then. Thank you, everybody in the chat. <laughs> Bye. Hey, everyone. Uh, we got some more um, updates here about the Crowley case, and I'm just going to read some of these things here and then um, discuss it a little bit. Um, we'll see where this goes. This is regarding some of the data requests that we have put in regarding the David Crowley case. And still still some more questions, even with this, right? We still There's still some questions about the public data. And obviously, we feel uh, the public, everybody in the public should all get the same data. And so that's what we kind of contacted uh, the AVPD. And uh, September 20th, 2021, which would be yesterday, got a response from Christine J. Caselius and she is the Apple Valley City Attorney. So this is um, uh, this is very important here um, and I'm just going to read some of this stuff but hope everybody is doing good and another day here on Rumble of course we're going to uh, always try to put the newest latest stuff here on Rumble first so appreciate everybody joining me here and um, then it will be uploaded to YouTube and to the Gray Stage podcast, probably as a bonus show, most likely. So, uh, but hope everyone's doing good. It's a beautiful day here, and no complaints on my end. As I sip this nice little white wine that we have here, that will accompany us here. Um, so this was sent to me yesterday, as we said. This is in regards to the recent requests for data. In the Crowley investigation. Now the attorneys are at, actually at the top here too. So it's uh, Doherty Molina attorneys. Doherty Molina, Solfest, Hills, and Bauer, PA. So pretty official. And um, once again, I found the whole thing. We are going to read this here. I found the whole thing to be very pro professional and respectful. It's just about all of my dealings with the Apple Valley Police Department, the BCA, and anyone else, any other law enforcement um, that has been involved in this. I found all of them to be very respectful, um, truthful, and willing to admit their mistakes when they do make them. So I do appreciate that. So go ahead and read a little bit here. Dear David, dear Crowley data requester, here's what she writes. In 2015, the Apple Valley Police Department, ABPD, assembled a packet of public data once the ABPD determined there was no one to charge at that time. The public data included the police reports, investigator observations, and photos of the scene, all, which, all data which had been created by the investigating team. Release of this data complied with Minnesota Statute 13.82 sub 7. The AVPD released data to a variety of requesters, including appropriate family members of the decedents. In January slash February 2021, the AVPD responded to a request for a few very specific photographs. So I don't know if they're talking about 
some of the stuff that we have requested or um, maybe it was maybe it was because they're talking to me I'm, I'm assuming right <laughs> so but they're not very specific in that and we can follow up on that there's lots of stuff we can follow up with them on it goes on the AVPD received additional data requests between the dates July 26 2021 through September 6 2021 uh, from a total of four requesters, all of whom have previously received the aforementioned data from the AVPD. These requests included the digital reports of data the AVPD extracted from the decedent's private electronic devices. Data on individuals' private electronic devices is protected by Article 1, Amendment 10 of the Minnesota State Constitution. The right of the people to be secure, quote, the right of the people to be secure in their persons, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures shall not be violated. Also see State versus Barajas, 817 NW, 2nd, 204, 215-216, Minnesota CT, APP, 2012, REV dash, REV dot denied. Um, the AVPD was required to obtain a search warrant before examining the family's electronic devices. We will make sure that you can um, read this whole thing fully. And if you have any thoughts, any comments on that, please feel free to go ahead and add those too. Uh, it goes on. The Constitution protected the Crowley's personal electronic data from collection by the AVPD while the Crowley's were alive. Thus, their personal electronic data would have been classified as private while they were alive. I mean, we're talking about dead people here, but I'm, they're very thorough. So remember, they're lawyers. I'm not. So they know what they're talking about. I'm just trying to understand what they're saying. Here. The AVPD will not be releasing any data from the decedent's devices because it is private data on decedents. So even though you know, they say it's private data while they are uh, live, it still sounds like based on those cases, it's still private data, even though they're no longer with us. She goes on to say, we are reviewing the remainder of the recent requests to determine whether there is any additional data the AVPD can release. So that's good. So we, you know, they told us that this would take time. The data that we've asked for, et cetera, et cetera, would take time. Um, so they're still looking at what they can release. If there's any additional data that they can release, which should be the stuff that Tony Floyd got, the stuff that Tony Floyd posted. That stuff should be part of the data. That we should be able to get if other people have it and it's all public stuff if it was released to the public legally then obviously we should we should have access to it too if it's not released if it wasn't released legally that's a whole nother legal issue that um, this lawyer this attorney and uh, the Apple Valley City attorney may want to think about goes on also a document entitled examination report which was allegedly written by AVPD detective Shane Klaconis was provided to the AVPD by one of the recent requesters thank you for bringing this absolutely false document to our attention I'm gonna read that again thank you for bringing this absolutely false document to our attention in close please find an affidavit by Detective Klaconis affirming this is a fraudulent document. Yours, very truly yours, Christine J. Caselius. So we will be following up with her. Uh, the AVPD was also CC'd on that as well. But um, so I was like, okay, what, what are they talking about? Okay, the examination report, remember, that's the five page report that we have on our website, um, on the Gray Stage website. It's the same one that Tony Floyd. Um, also posted and I didn't notice a difference looking at it again um, It was pointed out to me to look at it a second time and the one that is on Tony Floyd's website is different Than the one that we got from the Apple Valley police. So this is the five page one here now um, Let me just go to my website so I can if anyone wants to quickly find it um, and kind of look at it, but This is where it gets a little interesting here so I'm on my website, take a look at that, but this is what was confusing to me. So I'm glad they're still looking into it, so that's great, data requests, all that. 
sounds like um, anything that is from their phone, you know, like the actual text messages, things like that. It sounds like we won't be getting that. Anything that is from their devices, the actual stuff, even though they got the day one journal, so they were that was from the device, I believe. But because David even said he's doing this all from his phone, so we were able to get that one, but apparently not any of this other stuff that's on there, which is also kind of curious, but okay, whatever. I mean, we, we know that there's nothing on these devices that helps prove their case. They've made that very clear, so it's not the biggest deal that we do or that we don't get it, um, except for some of the questions about calls that people said that were made and then calls that um, cannot be verified that were made. So it's things like that that kind of um that's you know that's the reason to get some of the data so even if it's just timestamps or just you know um some of this stuff that will help us get a better idea of okay well like you have you know klein or um you have chris peck who said you know there's this call was was made and then um then we have what the phone records that we have show that that call was never made things like that you know david crowley's father same same thing um and so that's the type of stuff that, you know, it, it's the clarification on it to say, okay, well, yeah, um, you know, if, if the police never followed up on it to see if that was actually true, maybe they should have, you know, maybe that would help this, their investigation or their, I guess, I don't want to call it lack of investigation, but I can't think of a better word for it. Anyways, um, but that's the reason why we've been trying to get a lot of these documents um, the day one journal just happened to be kind of one of the things that they gave to us that is from his electronic de device and I don't know but now we're told that we're not allowed to get that so I don't understand that because we have it they gave it to us <laughs> anyways um, so the search history things like that are good you know and that's all that that's all that I would really want to look for at this point when they've already proven that you know there's nothing that they found in this to help prove their case so they made that very clear um so anyways if you go to my website it's one two three four it's the fourth one down it's titled examination report dakota county sheriff's office electronic crime unit and so when you open that up you'll see it's a five page document look at the very first page and right under the big box where it says examination report to and then reported report prepared by um so it's like well here is a document this is a five page thing that if this is fraudulent where'd you guys get this from so we are gonna have to kind of follow up on on that because um this was given to us by the avpd that's why i was a little confused like wait a minute so who made this did it a superior make this or somebody else made this if detective Klakonos said he didn't make this then why is it here <laughs> why is it part of all of this so that was very confusing in the beginning there but um and we'll kind of read through some of that here too but that was the big question and then it was pointed out to me that if you go to tony floyd's website and you look at the same five page document um there's an extra paragraph in there so i'm going to open up that so um, the affidavit, we do have the affidavit by Detective Shane Kokonis. I'll read a little bit from that. Shane Kokonis, being duly sworn on oath, states and deposes as following. So this is an affidavit from him. I am MN Post licensed peace officer and have been employed by the Apple Valley, Minnesota Police Department since 2004. I have been a member of the Dakota County Electronics Crime Scene Task Force since it was created in early 2015. So it's pretty new there. Um, in 2014-2015, I participated in investigating the deaths of three persons whose bodies were found in a single-family residence at 1051 Ramsdale Drive in the city of Apple Valley. My investigative responsibilities consisted of forensic examinations of digital evidence. I'm going to pause for a second here. Let that go by. If it will, hopefully it will. Or else I may have to move to a quieter location, which may not be a bad idea. <laughs> okay, so then it goes on. Um, I have reviewed the attached document entitled Examination Report, placed upon alleged letterhead dated October 5th, 2015, and states that I prepared the report. 
prior to seeing this document during August 2021, I had never seen this document. I am absolutely not the creator of that document. Further, I have reviewed the applicable case file uh, 1500303 maintained by the Apple Valley Police Department and I did not locate this document but again this was one of the documents that uh, that they gave to us so I'll go back and verify that one too but and it goes on prior to seeing this document during August 2021 I had never seen this document I am absolutely not the creator of that document. Further, I have reviewed the applicable case file. Okay, and he says, and I do not locate this document. So, further, your offendant saith not, dated the 20th of September. So that, I mean, the same day they had him sign this and, and include this in what they sent to us the exact same day. And he signs it right there um, with the notary. And then, so this is a two page thing here. Um, you know, I don't know how bad that is in the background or not if you guys it's pretty bad I apologize for that um, so then what you see here is you look at page number two and it looks almost exactly like what we have here there are some differences though and so i see what what he's saying here because they've only given him so he's only talking about this one page it looks very similar to the five page document that we have but it is a little bit different and so you'll be able to compare those two documents to kind of see how different it really is um so in the fraudulent one you know it has the header the letterhead everything like that dakota county sheriff's office electronic crime unit the examination report that all looks right that all looks good uh, this is what happens when you record live folks <laughs> out in public i mean um yeah it's just apologize for that again but kind of just got to roll with it here um and it says to detective tommy booth and brian bone apple valley police department that's the fraudulent one you look at the real one to detective tommy booth and brian bone um apple valley police department i mean it looks very 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 same very much the same um i guess you know even the report prepared by detective shane Coconis, dakota county ecu it's got the address of them regarding the incident so all of that stuff in the in the top paragraph there looks legit it looks the same it lo all looks kind of the same there um so Hastings, Minnesota. Yeah, I mean, all of that right there. But he says he didn't do this. So when he says he didn't re re create this document, I don't, it's hard to believe he's talking about this five page document here. He may just be talking about the one that is in the PDF, the affidavit PDF, which is just one page. There's just one page here. And um, I will try to read the fake one. I'll try to read the fake one here if I can. And so this is, it says, not for public release, right? That's how it starts at the top. You look at the one, the real one that they sent us, the five-pager, and it starts on January 17th, 2015. Two completely separate things, two different things here. So, I believe I am going to, um, I apologize for this. I'm just going to, okay, maybe they're going to stop now. Let's see. If they don't stop, I'm going to take a little move around here somewhere. Okay, we'll give it one more shot. If it doesn't work, then I will move into my garage and we'll continue on. Um, yeah, so fake document, not for public release, and it starts, Tommy, attached is the full examination report regarding 1051 Ramsdale Drive, Crowley family, it's very hard to read. Um, all, as you can tell from the photo and the journal entries, there was widespread yeah it's really hard to read um and drug use by the perpetrator but not slept in many days so this is all fraudulent here and i know it's really hard to read maybe we can get um a better copy or whoever whoever got this whoever obtained this wherever this came from um maybe we can get some more but th he's like i didn't write this somebody fraudulent this somebody 
forge this document here. This is not an active document. The top head, the letterhead, the top part is all le legit. But when it starts with Tommy, and then it's talking about widespread, you know, use of drugs, uh, illegal drugs, um, had not slept in many days from the evidence we were able to obtain, we believe he was substance, awake, and the journal entries show him becoming increasingly agitated. Somebody wrote this. This is not, somebody forged a police document here. Um, why? Why would somebody do that? So you have to ask yourself, what would motivate someone to actually do that? You know, how bad do some people really want David Crowley to be guilty that they're willing to fake documents, police documents? This is a big deal here. This is criminal stuff. Whoever did this needs to be punished for this, for sure. Why would you do this? So now it makes sense because I'm reading this for maybe the second time. Um, I, I, I am having a hard time reading exactly what is written here. Um, we'll, I'll try to get a better transcript for you and maybe we can get a more, a copy that has um, that is not so blurred. It's just, I'm sorry, the one in the affidavit is very blurry. So I'm glad they they saw it, but it's really hard for me. It looks like they may, may have just scanned it and added it to this. So um, this, this is a big deal. So let me see if I can read anything else. We, we believe the actual incident occurred at either December 24th or December 25th, and that substances as well as sleep deprivation contributed. Shane Kokonos didn't say any of this. He's not saying that. He's not saying that. It's, it's the same cast of characters saying this. Who faked this document and why? Why would you fake this document? This is a huge, huge deal here. Someone is desperate, very desperate. In order to go this far, forge a police document just because you have no evidence that David Crowley is guilty? Why would you do that, you know? What is the motivation for that? Um, so I hope the police do follow up on this and we are going to try to um, see if, if, if they need help following up on this, um, where this came from. Um, in the coming days, we'll have more information about that, about who created this document, where did this come from? And actually, um, I think it's on Tony Floyd's website, so we can kind of take a look at that there. Um, let's see. Again, we're all live, or not live, we're not live, we're live to tape is what they call it here. There will be no edits in this one, um, just for time's sake and everything. But it, I just felt this was really important to kind of get out there. Uh, let's see, where can I go? I mean, this is, this is really crazy. Why would somebody do this? Why would you add all this? And you can see what they're talking about here. It's all this stuff that kind of contributes to David's death. How many people have they shared this with? and try to fool, try to fool people. Why would you do that? You know, if you really cared about this case, if you really cared about getting to the to the truth, if you cared about the facts, you wouldn't do that. You would not create something like this. This is ridiculous. I mean, they, they basically, whoever created this in Shane Klokonos' name, um, why would it not be for public release? I mean, there's so many weird questions about that, but I will try to get the, the transcript of this um, paragraph and add this into the description I just have not had the time to really do that just with a lot a lot of other things going on I just have not had the time but I felt that this was very important to kind of get out so let me see if I can so sleep deprivation concluded uh, contributed as I discussed our evidence coupled with DCA with BCA's co-investigation cornered with your findings who used the word cornered that the adult female was shot first, was shot first and from a short distance. Um, the minor child was then shot at close range and placed near the adult female. And at some point the male perpetrator uh, took the gun on, or took the weapon on himself and then discharged it causing his subsequent death. I mean, Shane Kokonis is saying, I didn't say any of this. And you I mean, this, this, uh, this is the first time I'm reading this here, folks. Um, 
this is troublesome this is very troublesome but it shows the the length that some people will try to to go to in order to just trick you to trick people it's not about getting to the truth you know, we are the ones getting to the truth here um, this is how we do it this is how we do it here um, we just look at the documents we post them people we crowdsource the documents from what my friend Ross is saying, it's pretty much what we're doing, just crowdsourcing all this stuff here so everybody can have it. And hey, do your own research, do your own investigation. We'd love to have you a part of, of what we're doing here too, but don't feel like you know you have to just do whatever we're, we're doing or even have to agree with us. You know, you, you can hate us, you can you not like me, you can be one of the pe people that I've blocked. It, it does not matter to me. You have the documents. The documents are not blocked. <laughs> So you always will have access to any of that stuff if you go to my to my website. It's 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 all there. So, um, but that's how you do it. Creating a fake document is not how you do it. That just exposes yourself. That really shows who you are, what your motivation is, and that you're full of garbage. You're full of crap. So, um, this is interesting. I did not send the. Uh, the lawyer this i did not send this to them this is the first time that i'm reading this now i probably had skimmed through this on tony's website we i need to go to tony's website we need to read more about um where this came from and of course i can't remember what his website is i think it's like strange investigation no that's that's way more real um i'm gonna have to go to my youtube channel and try to pull that up um, but that's all that is on the fake document. So we, we will be closing our case file to reflect the same. Please let me know if we care to be of any further assistance. And then it just ends with Shane. I mean, it's it's really weird. Tommy and Shane. And, but he's Shane Coconus is saying he didn't write this. Who wrote this then? The date is October 5th, 2015. It's, it's a, the same letterhead. Is they use the exact same letterhead to try to trick people. Is that what it's really come to? Because people are so desperate to want to believe David Crowley is guilty that they resort to these games? And we know the cast of characters that have been caught doing this, that are still doing this, right? It's nothing nothing new, but it's just like, you just keep doing it. You just keep going to exposing yourself. And now you may have some, some um, now you may have some legal issues big legal issues but um whoever did this you know whoever did send it in to them thank you for that um and uh now let's let's track it now let's see where the, where the source what is the source of this information this false information here uh, okay so let me see if i can go there back to my channel i gotta find what um tony's channel is then we'll kind of go to there ah nothing like a little white wine on a hot summer day all right, so there's okay. The Ballad of Tony Floyd. Then I'm gonna go. To, okay, CrowleyFamilyDeaths.NeoCities.com.org. CrowleyFamilyDeaths.NeoCities.org. So let's look at that. Where is that image? Because that image came from here. Okay, here it is. <clears throat> And that's the spreadsheet okay electronics report so it's a little ways down and they have the okay this one i can read a lot better from his website let me see if i can reread that okay from tommy to shane just i'm gonna oh even better okay here we go so here's the falsified document this is not a legit document and then we're gonna see what tony says about where he got this from where this came from this is not for public release tommy comma Attached is the full examination report regarding 1051 Ramsdale Drive slash Crowley family. As you can tell from the photos and journal entries, there was widespread drug use to include a plethora 
of illicit drugs and the perpetrator, David Crowley, has not slept in many days. None of that is true. From the evidence we were able to obtain, we believe that he was using substances to remain awake and the journal entries show him becoming increasingly agitated. Really. Although we cannot say with 100% certainty what set the wheels in motion. We believe the actual incident occurred on either December 24, 2014 or December 25, 2014 and that the substances as well as sleep deprivation contributed. The police have never said any of this stuff, really. Um, they just say he snapped, right? And that's only what, one or two cops who say that one. So, um, so interesting. Um, Okay, as discussed, our evidence coupled with BCA's co-investigation concur with your findings that the adult female was shot first from a short distance. The minor child was then shot at close range and placed near the adult female. And at some point later, the male perpetrator turned the weapon on himself and discharged it, causing his subsequent death. We will be closing our case file to reflect the same. This is October 5th again. Please let us know if we can be of any further assistance. I mean, all lies, all just blatant lies. None of that. It, whoever created that is in some serious trouble. And whoever created that, shame on you. Shame on you for that, for making this false document, trying to use the police headline, the header for it. And um, thanks to the police for calling them out on it too. Maybe we'll see what other documents the police want to call people out on too next so look for that in the future let's see what tony says about this one okay this page was obtained through joe tomaso at the crowley case dash fact versus fiction as you can see it clearly reads not for public release and was redacted from the copy of the full report that i have provided below which was obtained via a records request. Okay, so that's the same one that we have too, the five pager. And he says, this is more evidence of shady, less than legal methods to obtain materials. And he's right, not only is it shady and less than legal methods to obtain materials, they created a material. So if this was really obtained through Joe Tomato, Joe Tomaso, then he created this fake document. Something needs to happen to him for that, legally. I hope the police follow up on that. I hope the investigators follow up on that. And I hope whoever has a drill back here um, will follow up on that. <laughs> and there it is. There it is. I'll let the drillers drill for a second. You know, we've been drilling for information for such a long time. Which everybody's drilling for something, right? And um, wow. I did not expect that, you know. So thank you again to whoever sent that to the Apple Valley Police to let them know that there was a, a fraudulent document out there. And it does make me wonder if there are any other fraudulent documents out there that the police are not aware of. And if there are, whoever you are, please get that to them too. And, um, you know, it's not surprising to me that it is Joe Tomato. Not surprising at all. Not at all. Um... So, according to what Tony says here, if he obtained it through Joe Tomato, Joe Tomato has got some rotten tomatoes that he needs to, uh, needs to clean up. Clean up your act, you know. Stop tricking people. Stop trying to fool people. Stop trying to get them. Sincere people. Sincere people, you know. It, why? Why would you do this? Why would you create this? Why would you put this on on this fake group, on this phony group? This is why nobody takes them seriously. It's all fiction and no fact. I mean, that's pretty pretty clear to me from the little that I've seen that people have sent to me. You know, it's pretty clear. I have all them blocked, so I don't look at this fake group or anything like that. But here it is, you know, and, and this is not the first time that I've been sent, um, or I've looked at some things that people have, other people have sent to me, and it's like, man, you know what these guys are doing, you know, you know, they're slandering and this and that, and it's like, man, let them do what they want, you know, but, um, it's a, it's a, it's a free country, everybody has the, the right to say whatever they want about me, or do whatever they want, you know, but, um, when you start doing something criminal, 
when you start to create false documents, you are the fiction here. And again, we know that because we got the facts. So the facts are on our side. Um, so the only real group that you really need to be concerned about is the Justice for David Crowley and Family Facebook group. That's the only real group that's out there um, that is focused on this case, focused on getting justice for this family, not lying to people and playing games like you see here on Tony's website where he calls all these people out for different things for different reasons. So it's not surprising to me that Joe Tomato would have this and would try to spread this fake document. Um, and there's there's no need for it. There's no need for it. If he really believes David Crowley is guilty, there's no need to spread any of this fake documents to show people um, what proves David Crowley guilty and that should be it. You know, we've pretty much done the same thing. We're going to show you what proves him not guilty, and we're going to talk about it. That's what real people should be doing. That's what common sense people should be doing. That's what we do. That's what we have done. That's what we have continued to do and what we will continue to do until we can get the case reopened at least. Um, just that. So again, <laughs> it's just, it's so ridiculous. I mean, the desperation, the desperation and clinging to this false stuff, all these false reports, false documents, um, instead of just examining what the truth is. So um, I guess thanks to, to Tony, I don't know if Tony is the one that reached out to them and let them know about it, but whoever did, you know, thank you for that. And if there's any other false documents, that this fake group is putting out there or anyone is putting out there make sure that you report that to the police they need to know that um, it does not help their case it does not help the family this hurts the family creating fake documents like this hurts the family it, it disrespects the family it disrespects the real friends of David Crowley it disrespects David Crowley it should not be done it does not need to be done there's no reason for it to be done Unless you know David Crowley is innocent and you just want to trick people. And that's what's going on here. That's exactly what is going on here. Here is more proof here. So that's why I don't waste my time with trolls, with anything like that. Hey, you guys have freedom of speech. You want to say whatever you want. You want to slander me. It doesn't matter. It's freedom. You have the freedom to do that. Um, but, you know, <laughs> this is what happened. This is how God works. You get caught. So just be honest, be sincere, you know, do the right thing, and um, that's it. That's it. And you won't, you won't run into these problems. And this guy is not someone who is new to any problems either. So he's got tons of problems. Don't, don't we all, right? But, I mean, this is just taken to another level. This is taken to a retarded level. This is just very, very dumb. And you have to account for that. You will have to account for that. So we'll see what the police do. You may get a knock on your door one day saying, hey, we'd like to talk to you about something here. Don't be surprised. So look out your window. They you may hear that knock coming. You never know. <laughs> it won't be me. It'll be the police, if anything. Um, okay. Okay. Uh, do, 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 do. Quickly. Okay, um I guess I can read, <clears throat> clear my throat a little bit, but I guess I can read the actual, the real one. It's five pages. So I don't know if you all want to sit here through that. I'm tired of my voice yet here. But uh, I'll take one more sip of wine and then I'll um, kind of read through this. This is the real one here. This is the five pager. Same one that Tony has. So, but Joe Tomato apparently gave um, Tony that fake one. Why? Why? So, thanks again, Tony. <laughs> He's helping us more.
keeps helping us. It really, I mean, he's and he doesn't believe David Crowley is innocent either. He thinks he's David Crowley is guilty, but it, it just shows that you know we can we can work with with people. We be respectful, decent human beings. You know, I don't have time for trolls. I don't have time for games. I don't have time for retards. I don't have time for idiots. So you know, and that's it. Um, we can read through some of this stuff here. It's only a few pages. As long as my battery on my phone doesn't die, we're good to go. But support your local winery too. Okay, on January 17th, and this this is the real one from Shane Klaconos. This is a five-page one. I'm just we're just gonna make sure to verify that this is really from him. I believe it is. I don't think we have to worry about anything like that. I think this is this. I mean, it, the fact that it's the same date, it's the exact same header. And all this at the very top so make sure you go to my website and check that out and, um, I'll try to post the link to the actual five page document the real one and then I'll post um, the link to um, to Tony's website where you can scroll down a little bit and you'll you will see this same photo or the same header but it's different that's what threw me off I didn't even it's just I thought the same header it must be the same thing but it's not okay here's what it says um, this is to Detective Tommy Booth and Brian Bone. This is a report, paired, re, a report prepared by Detective Shane Kloconis. On January 17, 2015, this detective, along with Detectives Tommy, Thomas Jacobson, and Ryan Olson from the Dakota County Electronic Crime Unit, ECU, assisted the Apple Valley Police Department with a search warrant at 1051 Ramsdale Drive in the city of Apple Valley. This search warrant was the result of multiple deceased bodies being found in the residence. The Minnesota Bureau of Criminal Apprehension was also present and processed the scene for physical evidence. Many electronic devices were taken as evidence from the residence. Those items are listed below. And an iMac computer was located in an office type room on the southeast side of the house. This computer was powered on and had several external hard drives connected to it. The power cord was removed from the rear of the computer without shutting it down. A MacBook Pro was located in the kitchen. This device was found to be powered on and active. After the Bureau of Criminal Apprehension had completed processing it for physical evidence, I turned the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth off. There was a text document on the desktop of this device titled Myth and that had the words, I have loved you all with all of my heart. Later examination of this device showed this text document had last been saved on December 14, 2014 at 4.10 p.m. But an autosave version of this document, the open document, had been last saved on December 25, 2014 at 1.18 p.m. Testing on a different Apple MacBook found that the text documents created then saved and opened at a later time and had changes made to the document will be auto-saved after 60 seconds of inactivity. Photographs of the above described were taken and added to this report. This computer was kept in its awake state and transported to the ECU by Detective Olson for forensic examination. So it was created on December 14th, and then there was an autosave um, that happened on, the last autosave was on December 25th, 2014. So it really makes no sense. De December 14th, I mean, you look at what happened. Um, December 14th is a pretty important date, but we know that everybody's still alive. There's nothing really crazy on December 14th. David and Kamel, uh, Ryan is still in, in school. David and Kamel go and meet Chris Klein or Chris Peck, sorry, um, a few days later. Um, when David and Kamel pick up Ranya for the last day of school, the police or the, uh, the school says they don't notice anything weird or anything strange. They were kind of normal. So everything here looks kind of normal there. I mean, it doesn't look like there's anything um, odd. So there's no way, if this was created, had last been saved on December 14th, last saved on December 14th, it's not a suicide note. It's more evidence that this is not a suicide note that was um, the, the typed up note. Um, it also kind of shows that maybe this was David that actually wrote that. I mean, that would be the best evidence that David wrote is because it was written on December 14th, right? 
that he wrote that. It doesn't make it a um, a typed, or sorry, it doesn't make it a suicide note. And because it was last saved on December 25th, 2014, it looks like somebody reopened it and purposely set it on the computer open in an open text box, staging the crime scene once again. That's something that apparently, from what I'm reading here, it looks like that stood out to the police because it was, or, or to the uh, to the investigators, to the, remember, to the people that were able to look at the electronic documentation and when it was last saved. So this is what they do here. So that makes it stage, right? And it doesn't look like there was, it's an auto save. So it's not like there was anything changed and it was titled Myth. Um, that's why you can clearly see there's nothing that would show that this would be anything related to a suicide note or anything or they were going crazy any of that stuff i mean i think that's very clear but i do believe that this is the best evidence that shows david crowley did write that on december 14th but still <laughs> okay um, let's see here. Where was I? Okay. MacBook Photos. Okay. MacBook Photos. Detective Tommy Booth with the Apple Valley Police Department submitted an examination request for digital evidence gathered at 1051 Ramsdale Drive. The examination request was pursuant to a search warrant. Detective Booth provided the Dakota County ECU with a copy of the examination request form and search warrant. Use the following links to view the search warrant and examination request, which I, I do believe we have. We have the search warrant, the examination request form. Not sure about that, but good to follow up on that. So um, we're now on page two, by the way, if you're following along, if you're reading along with this. Uh, and again, the title of that document on my website is electronic crimes examination so make sure that you go and you can check that out um, examination report dakota county electronic crime unit and then it has an item number item one the dis description so item one is a black I apple iphone um, you know, item two is a at&t micro sim card from the iphone item three is a white apple iphone um, item four is the AT&T Nano SIM card. So there's a SIM card that was there, but when, and um, the white one is, is most likely Kamel's, but when, uh, when I talked with Kamel's sister, she said that when they got the iPhone back, it didn't have the SIM card in it. That's what she told me. That's what she first told me. <laughs> uh, item five then is a Apple MacBook Pro. And then six is a 16 gigabit 16 gig blue usb drive item 7 is an apple imac computer uh, with a keyboard and mouse item 8 western digital 640 gig hard drive external hard drive that was in item 7 um, item 9 western digital my book studio external hard drive there's lots of external hard drives that they took here and we we've covered that but this just gives us a little more detail about those external hard drives and they're they're labeled differently here you can see they're they're itemized here but um it has all of those the kindle fire that you see on the kitchen um island is there the camel surface pro which is item 15 so that is there 128 gig Microsoft Surface Pro, um, more external hard drives. Item 17 is a password list, GS slash GSTR password list with a yellow post-it note. That's pretty interesting because, um, you know, obviously, well, who could who could get into there? Anybody with the password list? He's got a written password list here. Anyone could get into that, to this stuff. Um, 18 is a another hard drive. 19 is another hard drive. These are big hard drives. 20 is another password list. So there's two password lists here that are mentioned. Uh, 21 is another external hard drive with the words Iron Enema on it. 22 is a SD card reader. SD card readers, 22. 23 is a 16 gig SanDisk compact uh, flash card mounted inside item 22. So it's mounted inside of the Lexar SD card reader. 
24 is miscellaneous power cores. They took the power cores for some reason. Well, I guess to power, keep powered in or whatever. 25, SIMA Mini, um, another SD card reader. 26 is a SD adapter inside of 25. 27 is a 64 gig um, SD card inside of item 26. So 25, 26, 27, all related. 28, a Toshiba 500 gig external hard drive with quote unquote family pictures on the case. Um, 29 is a USB 2 card reader. 30 is another external hard drive. 31 is a USB thumb drive. 32 is another USB thumb drive. 33, a Western Digital 3 terabyte extern internal hard drive. Uh, interesting. 34 is another internal hard drive. Doesn't say where they're internal from, but okay. Uh, 35 black pelican case with the words hothead production on it and Heil written on the outside containing six three terabyte external hard drives. I mean, this is massive stuff. Backing up, backing up lots of digital data. They went through all of that stuff. Didn't find anything, nothing that would help them understand why David Crowley would be guilty. Nothing. Okay, um, we're now at the bottom of page three. Pre-examination procedures were collected, including documenting and photographing the items, the iMac photos, the scene photos, and the miscellaneous photos. Cellular phone forensic software slash hardware from Celebrite was used to extract data from item one, the iPhone. When conducting the extraction, precautions were taken to make sure the device was not allowed to connect to the network. Specifically, a cellular disruption device was powered on prior to the phone being powered on. This prevented the phone from connecting to the cellular network. Once powered on, the phone was placed in airplane mode. The cellular disruption device was then powered off and the data was extracted. The extraction was conducted with item 01, iPhone, containing item 02, the nano SIM card. Nano SIM card. Data extracted including phone book, SMS, MMS, email, IM, calendar, apps, apps data, pictures, auto music, videos, ringtones, call logs, and browsing data. Let's go to page four. Data from the application titled quote unquote day one was found. Some of the actual entries were still on the phone. These journal entries were exported into a readable form. This device appears to have been owned and used by Mr. Crowley. The text messages found on the device and day one entries indicated illegal drug use by the Crowleys. This information was forwarded to detectives at the Apple Valley Police Department for further follow-up. When they say illegal drug use, they're talking about weed, probably shrooms. Uh, I think shrooms too. I think, I think he mentioned shrooms, I'm not sure. Um, but we know that he does talk about using shrooms once, I think. That was it. Tried it, compared it to weed, which is weird, but... Um, and that was really it. So Mr. Crowley also indicated in his journaling he would stay up for many hours screenwriting for a movie he was working on. A review of the timeline on this device showed it was last used on 12-25-2014. Use the following links to view the Celebrate report. So they have the Celebrate reports in HTML, PDF, and UFDR formats. Um, the Celebrate logical, Celebrate file system, the day one spreadsheet, day one PDF exports and the day one zip exports so we'll see what we can get from that item 3 an Apple iPhone s 5s was found to be locked with the four digit code that was not known and no data was able to be extracted from this device so they couldn't get anything from item 3 which was Kamel's phone which is what um, uh, Kamel's sister said they couldn't get anything from it. So that's act that's con consistent with what she was saying there too. Even though I think later on she said that they were able to get, um, her dad told her that they were able to get data from it. If I remember correctly, it could be wrong. Uh, item 5 and item 7, which were found to be the main devices used by David Crowley. And again, item 5 is, item 5 is the Apple, uh, the MacBook Pro, and 7 is the MacBook so item 5 is the MacBook Pro that was found in the kitchen. Item 7 is the iMac computer that was found in David's office room. So um, 
looking at those, item 5 and item 7, which were found to be the main devices used by David Crowley, the hard drive contained within item 7, which is item 8, was removed from item 7 by Detective Jacobson. These items were examined by Detective Vaughn. See the following links for the reports pertaining to items 5 and 8. So item 5, the black light report, item 8, the black light report, and the detective on narrative, which we do have on the website, so you should have access to all of those as well. Item 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13 were external hard drives connected to item 7. These drives, um, and so that they were all connected to, the, uh, to David's computer in the office bedroom. Um, Let's see. These drives were in a RAID configuration specific to item 07. Because of the RAID configuration, an individual forensic image of each device could not be achieved. It was determined the drives could be connected to item 7 as they were discovered in the Crowley home on January 17, 2015 to preview the contents. This computer and hard drives contain data relating to movie production and editing. Nothing further was done with these items. Forensic software slash hardware from Celebrite was used to extract the data contained within item 14. No information relating to the deaths of the Crowley family was found on this item. So again, item 14 is uh, that's, uh, the Kindle Fire. Okay, so nothing in the Kindle Fire. Um, and let's go last last page here. Page 5, the contents of items 6, 15, and 18 were examined by creating a forensic image of the data contained within them using Access Data FTK Imager. Item 15 was found to be locked. This is Camille's um, uh, Surface Pro. Um, item 15 was found to be locked with a passcode with the device was powered on. Using a list of passwords collected at the Crowley residence on January 17, 2015, the proper password was found and used to unlock this device. Okay, so maybe I can fuse with what Kamel's sister was telling me. It sounds like they were never able to get into Kamel's phone, but eventually they were able to get into um, Kamel's laptop, so I may have confused some of that. Um, let's see, so they were able to get in there, unlock it. Because the internal drive cannot be removed from this device, Access data, FTK, imager, light was used to create a forensic image of the data. So they were able to get all the data from Camel's forensic software from uh, Get Data's Forensic Explorer was used to examine the forensic images of items 6, 15, and 18. No information relating to the deaths of the Crowley was found. No information relating to the deaths of the Crowley family was found. Period. FEX report. Many other devices were previewed using physical write blockers, which protect the devices being previewed from having any data written to or deleted from them. No information relating to the deaths of the Crowley family was discovered. Again, no information related to the Crowley family deaths was discovered. All these electronics. The items that were labeled or appeared to be related to the movie production were not previewed. Uh, con conclusion. After reviewing all pertinent pieces of evidence, and that's pretty important, let me go back to that lessons. The items that were labeled or appeared to be related to movie production were not previous. So they didn't even need to look at those, they just figured, you know, so any, they're not looking at any, they're not making any ties between the murders and all the stuff to Dave, what David was making, what he was doing. Even though in the Tom Lydon report, that's exactly what the, the police chief does he makes those ties when you're, when you're talking about this movie and you're taking taking you to a dark place and if you just focused on that it's going to take you to this dark place but when we look at here the people who are actually doing the actual work who are looking at all of this stuff looking for anything motive all that stuff they didn't even bother with that because it had nothing to do with the case that's not what you do they're looking for evidence or looking for real stuff they can't find it so their police chief just makes it up he just says that that's it's, it is tied to it, even though in here they're, they don't even look at the document. They don't even look at that stuff because they know it's not going to be tied to it. A movie is not going to make you kill your family. It's ridiculous. Here's the conclusion. After reviewing all pertinent pieces of evidence, no information was found specifically related to the deaths of the Crowley family. Information was found that pointed to drug use between Mr. and Mrs. Crowley 
and journal entries found on Mr. Crowley's phone indicated many sleep-deprived days for Mr. Crowley. So this conclusion here, if you look at what, what was written on Tony's um, website, that fake document, you know, they, they're really twisting things here. I mean, they're, they're really trying to twist all this, and they couldn't even, they couldn't even get that right. They couldn't even get that right, and they had to pretty much create this fake document written from Detective Shane Kokonis to Detective Tommy Booth. Big error right there. Big problem. You're in big trouble for that. Believe me, you are in trouble for that. Wait for the knock. Okay, um, evidence logged into the ECU was released and transported to the Apple Valley Police Department by this detective. That's the real document. That is what Detective Shane Kokonis really wrote. Not that fake thing that um, was given to, to, to Tony by Joe Tomato. So, there it is, folks. Um, God bless you all. More to come, I promise. Much more to come on this. And uh, thank you to the Apple Valley Police Department for following through, for being professional for um, making this very clear and for providing an actual affidavit. That shows how serious they are really taking this fake document. It is not cool. I'm sure they do not appreciate people creating any type of fake documents. Not cool at all. I don't think that they would care if it's someone who thought David was innocent or guilty. Um, we know that if it was written by Joe Tomato, if he's the one who really did this, uh, he was passing it around, definitely. But if he created this fake document, the police are not going to care just because you, you because you also believe he's guilty. They're not going to they're not going to pay that any mind. Um, so there you go. Keep knocking, but you can't come in. Um, until next time, thank you all for joining me here. God bless you all, and uh, make sure you check check out the group Justice for David Crowley and Family Facebook group. And check out everything else that we're doing. Um, trust me, more to come on this. Much more to come on this. God bless. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, depending on where you are, what city, what state. Just turn this radio down a little bit. I just figured I would uh, invite everybody to once again join us. We will be live. The plan is if, if everything goes according to plan, we will be live tomorrow which will be thursday at about 12 15 p.m pacific time um, so make sure you set your reminder and that will let you know exactly what time it is um, in your time zone in your country too since we have been reaching um, lots of different countries just with with the podcast i don't know what the youtube numbers are or the rumble numbers are or anything like that but just with the podcast um we're reaching um many different countries so it's always interesting to see that um but tomorrow we are going to continue the discussion and i want to hear some other people's views on this this fake police document um, so that will be the goal. I feel like I've kind of said everything that I wanted to, to say so far. Um, but it, it will be good to get other people's views and see what they think about this fake document that is tied to the, the case. And there are people that don't know. I'll try to let me try to summarize it as best I can. Um, it does, you know, it takes a little while to kind of process it. It took me a little while to try to process exactly what the heck I'm looking at. So, on Tony Floyd's website, there is a one-page document. It's only one page. And it is, it's meant to look like it was created by De Detective, Apple Valley Police Detective Shane Kloconis. Shane Kloconis has stated in an affidavit that he did not create that document. So then the question obviously is, well, who created it then? Somebody created it, obviously. So if you look on Tony Floyd's website, I think it's crowleycasemurders.neocities.org. I could be wrong, but it's something like that. Um, but if you look on his website, he says that it came from Joe Tomaso, Joe Tomato. Um, so that is the source as far as we know. And um, 
So again, that is where we're basically at, is trying to figure out, okay, who created this fake document acting like they were Detective Shane Klaconos? And then of course, the other question is why? This was brought to our attention, to my attention, and Sophia too. Um, this was brought to our attention through a letter from the Apple Valley City Attorney. Now, um, prior to this letter from the Apple Valley City uh, Attorney, Christine Caselius, um, you know, I really didn't pay any attention to this one-page fraudulent document because it looks so much like the real five-page examination report. Um, I thought it, we, were look, we were looking at the same thing. But apparently, no. Apparently, some, what somebody did, what it looks like somebody did, is they took the top half of the real document and uh, created this letter from Shane Klokonis to Tommy Booth. So that will be interesting too. It'll, it'll be, you know, it would be good, um, and maybe we can, you know, thinking of things to kind of how, what do we do to follow up on it? You know, now that Sh Detective Shane Klokonis has stated that he didn't write it, I don't know, maybe it's not even relevant, maybe it's not worth it, uh, or worth Apple Valley's time, but maybe get Tommy Booth to also stay, say the <laughs> same that I didn't receive it. So anyways, but um, that was pretty fascinating in information that we just got yesterday. So yesterday morning, the affidavit, that's what that it's dated September 20th. And it was sent to us on that same day. At the same time, Sophia and I received it at the same time. So, um, pretty interesting stuff there. We'll see how all of that pans out. That's where we are with that one. But tomorrow, um, I'm hoping to have Sophia on, to have Catherine on, to have William Rail on. Um, maybe Eric Spitfire Wilkinson might join us too. But if anybody else wants to join us, send me a message to the Gray Stage at gmail.com if you're part of the group um i'll be more than happy to um send you the Im the information but it, we are planning to do it live you know sometimes the live thing doesn't work out uh, but the goal is to do it live it will be recorded so if something goes wrong um and we're not able to do it live then we'll just do it kind of what i did with the video that i made um where it's pretty much live to tape so there won't be any edits or anything like that but i think this show will be a little bit better because um you know i have i've had time to kind of process what i'm what i'm reading here not only that but um we'll have some visuals up on the screen so you'll be able to we'll be able to go through the actual documents and we'll we'll talk about it i felt like that was one of the things that was lacking in my video is that you couldn't you know i didn't do any screen shares just because of time's sake and everything so we'll definitely do that this time and um it'll be interesting to see what people think of, about it um but it just goes to show you know um it never pays to be shady it never pays to play games anything like that and so i hope i hope joe tomaso has learned his his lesson now i don't know if he actually created it um but again according to tony floyd he is the source Tommaso is the the source um and it seems to be verified <laughs> it seems to be verified there and i think that's all i wanted to say about that for now obviously but i'll be curious to get other other people's views and thoughts and we'll kind of discuss that but you know um the other thing is we do have a source um, that has been able to kind of shed some clarifications on certain things related to the Crowley case. Um, the source does not want to be named, does not want to be out in public. It's not worried about anything, just doesn't want, um, this person does not want their name out there. But this source was talking about, um, January 19th and Chris Klein when Chris Klein's truck was spotted at David Crowley's residence now what the source says is that 
Chris Klein's car or truck, right? The camo truck drove by slowly a couple times back and forth for, uh, by David's house before actually uh, stopping at David's house. I thought that was kind of curious. I thought that was um, very curious as to why, you know, if you're just there to just do what whatever, you know, why kind of slowly drive by a couple times. You just you just would go there. They're kind of it was like he was staking it out. Uh, the source was not sure if there was multiple people in the car or if it was just Klein. So, but that was one that really stuck out. Um, the source also claimed that on Halloween, David, Kamel, and Rania were um, at their house. I don't know if they were trick-or-treating or passing out candy, but the source you know, talked talk to them and was able to, you know, said nothing, there's nothing weird, nothing strange or anything like that. And it kind of goes against, um, I was talking with Dan Hinnon about this, and he was like, it kind of goes against the theory that um, Kamel was being Kamel was a hostage in in her own home. It doesn't it doesn't it, this is one more thing. It doesn't appear like that was there's any truth to that. that she was a hostage in her own home. Um, they're walking around freely. They're outside, and uh, they're just acting normal. So that was another thing that the source said. I'm trying to think if there was anything else there. There's a couple other things. I don't have my notes with me, but uh, we'll be covering be covering a little bit more on that but you know it's it, there's just um, some more stuff to it I guess I wish I could remember off the top of my head some of the other things but some of the things about David's behavior that is mentioned in the police reports you know some of that um, there's other sides to it I guess it's not really that big of a deal with some of these things so but we'll be going over that a little bit more, more in depth too at some point. Um, but I thought that those were, there's, there was a few other things that stuck out to me, but I can't remember exactly what they were right now, of course. But um, that was that was the big one, was that Chris Klein, you know, was kind of driving by slowly, very suspiciously. Maybe that's not the correct word, but it was just kind of, the source found it strange that they would, you know, kind of driving by a couple times before actually stopping there. Um, so that was another thing there. But that's probably all that I can share for right now um, from that source. There is more. There is some more. But again, it's just all background stuff. Just kind of some clar clarifications on certain things uh, of how David was nothing abnormal but he was he kept to him to himself seemingly and i'll try to pull up those notes here because i know i'm not really doing a good job at re relaying that but um nothing strange nothing out of the the ordinary kamel was a very outgoing person very outgoing very friendly other than that you know not too much strange stuff but We'll go over some of that at the later point, but with this whole thing, um, this fraudulent document, it's just, you know, it's very troublesome, very troublesome that someone would create that and um, pass it to anybody, you know, whether you're passing it to just Tony Floyd or to Tony Floyd and other people too, you know, and there's, there's documentation that backs up what Tony is saying too, so forget that um so the letter from the apple valley city attorney again thank you to whoever did send that in to them because they were not they didn't know about it um so it's, it was good whoever sent that in so that now they do know and we'll see if they're going to take any other steps towards that is this impersonating a police officer is one of the questions that came up would that qualify as impersonating a police officer 
I mean, morally, yes, definitely. Um, legally, I would also think so, yes. I mean, that's that's a big deal, right? You don't, Why would you even do that, first of all? But what would be the punishment for that? So that'll be another thing that I hope that the city attorney kind of follows up on. Because if, if they don't, then, any, any, you know, this could happen a second, third time. We don't know. This is the only one that we know about, too. And it's only because Tony, Tony Floyd has put it on his website shown those the actual document there so we don't know if you know there's other documents floating that have been passed around to try to make david look guilty and that's that's the thing that's what the document is there for right it's it it is worded very very weird first of all it's you know from you know, to tommy from shane that's kind of weird like that's that's how detectives talk i don't know i mean i guess i have no idea but um and maybe, maybe because we do have some other email exchanges between the detectives and the BCA, et cetera, et cetera. So maybe that's how they how they talk. But for someone to put in that much effort to, to fake a document um, just shows the desperation that some people have in trying to um, trick people into thinking David Crowley is, is guilty. But we know it's a, it's a phony document. Apple Valley City Attorney has confirmed that. And, you know, there's, they seem to leave the door open. They haven't said, you know, we're no longer discussing this or anything. So that's all public stuff. And um, any, anybody can contact them, contact the Apple Valley City Attorney. In the document on my website, I believe it does have Christine's um, name. And only do it if you're really serious about it, too, you know. But um, it's definitely something that I plan on following up on. Hopefully, maybe we can get them on. Maybe we can get the city attorney on um, to give, you know, a couple uh, statements, a couple um, quotes or something like that. I think that that would be good, too. But I'd be willing to help. I don't know how I could help, but if I can, I definitely will. Um, but I do hope that they follow through on that and that they figure out you know and more so to just make sure that people stop they stop the games they stop these uh the trickery that we continually see from the same cast of characters so you know joe tomato needs to he needs to to respond to it he needs to say where he got this document from and why he was passing it out um but the document, the fake document itself, is, you could totally tell, it's just meant to make, oh, yeah, David's, David's guilty, you know, he, was, he had extensive drug use, he wasn't sleeping, et cetera, et cetera. So, I mean, it, it's, it's just crazy, but it's not like, you know, it's not like any of that proves anything to say, okay, this is what happened, David Crowley, you know, did this, he did the actual killing, it's just, it's not there in this. Um, there the real document the five page document you can compare that to that one pager and you can you can see the big difference so you know it's too bad it's too bad that someone wanted to create that fake document and then kind of sp spread that out there but again we're thankful to uh mr tony floyd for making that available to the to the public on his website that's where i first saw it and sure that's where many of you first saw it too um i blazed at it didn't even recognize it until the apple valley city a attorney sent, sent me that letter uh, if they wouldn't have i probably wouldn't have even noticed that there were two documents with the same date the same header the same everything at, at the top but um i would have just thought okay maybe that was part you know part that was taken out or something i don't know but um so Again, Tony helps expose these frauds, and we'll see where it goes from there. But I hope they learn their lesson. You know, don't create the fake documents. Your time is better spent on just proving David Crowley guilty. And if you can't do that, then then I get it. I understand why you're doing all these all this trickery and all these games because that's all you got, and it's an act of desperation. It's what desperate people do. Uh, not people that are really searching for truth, that really want to find out what, what the truth is. Um, that That is just, you know, making things more 
corrupted. It's it's corrupting this investigation. It's corrupting this this case, and it's needless. And it's disrespectful to David Crowley. It's disrespectful to the family. Disrespectful to his real friends. Disrespectful to everyone who really cares about this case and wants to find out what the truth is. So they got busted. It happens. You have to admit that. Admit what you did, and then suffer the, the the legal consequences of it so that's pretty much it so joe tomato if, if you didn't create it um you know you should go to the apple valley police and let them know where you got this from simple as that simple as that but it was created it is out there is verified that it is a fraudulent document and of course it's not sur surprising at all to many people you know it's just it's so unnecessary some of these things are just so unnecessary but again it's it's time that is spent um, in the wrong area you know the, the, the time with the case should be spent on the case okay not on creating fake documents or playing games or Dis distractions, which uh, again, Tony Floyd's website shows that, that that's exactly what these cast of characters are doing. That's their goal. That's what they do is to create um, the dis distractions to play games, white lies, whatever you want to call it. It has nothing to do with truth. So that's why the Justice for David Crowley and Family Facebook group, you know, we are the ones who are um, seeking truth and getting to the truth. And each day that goes by, there's a little more truth that comes out so um, you know it's not it's not a big focus for me um, you know the, the fraudulent document it is a big deal but it's not a, it's not my primary focus obviously uh, the primary focus is still getting the case reopened if that helps get the case reopened awesome I mean maybe it will maybe it'll lead us down that path too um, which would be great because that is the real goal here but i do believe it's going to show more and more people that man you know there really is a fake group out there who is just playing all of these games and is not really interested in providing you know a comprehensive video or some an explanation something to explain why david crowley is guilty i've made three now one was two minutes one was three minutes another one was 17 minutes and it all pretty much shows you uh why david crowley is not guilty so and it can't be debated it just can't so if you're going to debate something debate that video um that's all i got for you you know i don't have time for haters i don't have time for for trolls um for years i've been stating that i i block people it's not it's not anything new um if you don't know that i block people then you're not paying attention i put it in my last video i put it in many videos um i've shared screenshots of people that have created fake uh, accounts and i've blocked all of those too and i will continue to because the, the their purpose is to distract um and to get people to react and that's you know okay fine that's what what you want to do that's how you want to spend your, your life you know wasting your time uh, nothing off my shoulder I'll respond to uh, whatever I, I want to but you know I'm not really interested in feeding trolls so let the trolls eat cake and they can figure it out for themselves but really it just it only brings more eyes to us so um, I would not concern myself too much with it it, it would be laughable if it wasn't so sad, you know, just sad human beings, miserable people. That's what they do, you know. People with no real moral compass, uh, no positivity in life. So, whatever. That's what happens. God's gonna get you. And you see it. We saw it firsthand here. Busted. All right, completely busted with the fake document and hopefully it's the last hopefully people have learned their lesson and they won't do it again um, or else you know there's always going to be legal consequences to things like that and not not just legal consequences but it's just more uh, it just shows 
a lot of people the, the shadiness of people who are trying to desperately prove to you that David Crowley is guilty without any evidence or anything like that. They know they can't prove it. And so they just play all these weird games and stuff um, to just kind of, you know, I don't know, <laughs> to cast doubt, I guess. That, I mean, I think I was like, why would somebody do this? You know, why? That's why, you know, we were discussing the document and hopefully we'll discuss the, the why. Uh, we can theorize on it. I have I don't know why. I don't understand why. I don't understand why somebody would, would do that. But it, again, it just shows the level of stupidity in some people to do that, um, to take a document like that. And you know, I don't, I don't get it. I don't get it, folks. But um, again, join us tomorrow, and uh, that will be Thursday. Go to the channel. Well, if you're watching this, you're probably already on the channel. So set the reminder. Um, I will put the notification up there soon. So make sure that you do that and join us live. Join us live in the live chat room. And like I said, if, if you want to call in, if you want to be a part of, of the show, we'll, we'll make that a part of it too. So I think there's a few people that did want to be a part of it. So I will reach out to those people hopefully today and um, uh, let them know that, hey, we are going to go live um, tomorrow and if you want to join in and give your thoughts on this or thoughts on anything else related to the case uh, great happy to have you so god bless you all and until then until tomorrow around 12 15 p.m pacific time i'm greg fernandez jr and god bless you all been wrong nope nope oh, once okay. i hit this go live right now Okay, just in other words, Catherine, be patient and be quiet. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, I think we have a winner. Hopefully, everybody can hear us okay here on YouTube. Um, if you do have any audio issues with YouTube, please make sure to let us know. Otherwise, we're going to go through this and I want to welcome everyone who is in the uh, in our chat room and everyone who has joined the call. We have um, Sophia is here, Catherine is here, William is here, and Crip Rick is joining us for the very first time here too. Um, and we may have one or two other people kind of jumping in. Ross may, may jump on during his, his break, so he may come on at some point. And, uh, Already kinda... here, my guy. Already oh, here. Good. Right on, Ross. Very good to see you, man. Wasn't sure. Yes, sir. Cool. Yes, sir. All right. The gang is all here then. All right. So we're going to go ahead and start. I don't know if anyone has their YouTube stream up right now, but again, if you um, notice any issues on YouTube, uh, any sound quality issues, please make sure to let us know. Uh, we are recording this. We are live. So anything can happen here and we'll just keep rocking and rolling as far as we can go. So we are going to discuss some more about who created a fake police document and why. And so um, this is presented by us, by the group, the Justice for David Crowley and Family Facebook group. Many of, of the members here, everyone here is a member. And we're going to do a little roundtable discussion. And so we're going to be talking about the fraudulent document. And I was hoping that Sophia could kind of give us, everybody, there's probably a lot of people that have no idea what we're talking about, what, what this is. So maybe, Sophia, if you could give us just a little um, summary of what's what, why we're all here today. Uh, this last Monday, uh, I received an email, and you also did too. I just didn't know it at the time, um, from an Apple Valley city attorney. And I was confused by why I was receiving it. It had been a chaotic day already, and we were in the car, and I wasn't driving, by the way. <laughs> and uh, I'm, like, reading it, and I see, you know, that she mentions, you know, numerous FOIAs, FOIA requests, and I'm like, oh, gosh, maybe they're just telling me to shut up already about this. You know, stop sending <laughs> harassing them. And... Thank you. Sorry about that. Oh man, I totally so, thought I cough. <laughs> cough button. Is so it, okay. Yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> um, then I like downloaded the affidavit and um, 
totally gave up on reading the letter and was reading the affidavit and I was like, wait, what? What just happened? You know, why was somebody faked a document? And I was confused by everything, but the kids were yelling in the back seat, so that was just adding to everything. And by the time I got home, I was able to look at everything all together, and it's still... It, it's the ECU paperwork. And then I realized it was also the, uh, it's supposed to be an ECU memo or report that is on a website that came to our attention back in late July. Mm -hmm. And Greg, uh, I can't remember the name of the website. But that paperwork had on their uh, attention to Tommy. And at the very end, it was signed Shane. And it was one of the detectives from the ECU uh, in Apple Valley who had done the electronics devices and had taken the information off of there. But this document stood out to me because it had personal opinions about this case. Yes, there was illicit drug use. We know this because it's right there in the journal. We know this because there's pot in the household. But what really caught my attention was near the bottom when they're talking about how, uh, who died when, right. not once has anybody ever mentioned that in any of the police reports who died when? Except for, I mean, it's assumed that David died last because he supposedly killed himself. But, it, you know, nobody has ever assumed that Kamel was first, then Ronnie, or that Ronnie was first and then Kamel. That was never even touched upon in any of the reports. And then, um, oh, I lost my train of thought. So that's, that really stood out to me. But there was nothing on the electronic devices to give this detective that information. So why was he even writing that in his report? So that really started sending off red flags to me. And I sent that to staff uh, in Apple Valley who has been helping us with getting FOIA requests fulfilled. And I questioned this document and I was like, why are they discussing the order of death when none of the other police officers had assumed this in the report? They had all been very, very uh, professional and I didn't hear back but that's not unusual because usually I will not hear back from Apple Valley until they're ready to give me information so I was waiting and waiting and in the meantime I sent off a couple more FOIA requests for information on like CAD reports and and uh, other things like that and then that's when I got the email from the attorney on Monday. And they were referring to that particular document that was on the website. And it was a fraudulent document. Uh, the detective never wrote that to Tommy Booth, Detective Tommy Booth. So, and that's what we're going to cover uh, today in this roundtable discussion. And we believe we know exactly who created that document. And we have proof of that, screenshots of that. So we'll be showing that too. Excellent. But that's the back story. All right. All right. So let's jump right into this then. I'm going to crash right into some of this stuff here. So um, again, this is from this is what what Sophia was was talking about here. This is the page from CrowleyFamilyDeaths.NeoCities.org. This is where I saw it. This is where we all saw it, and you can see um, it was 
kind of troublesome because we didn't know, okay, what is what is the source of this? Now, I had mistakenly thought that this was the five page ECU report that we all got. That is not the case here. And so that's what we're going to look at. And um, talking about the source, it's, it's right here on this website. Now, according to Tony Floyd, according to Tony Floyd, this page was obtained through Joe, Joe Tommaso at the Crowley case dash fact versus fiction. As you can see, it clearly reads not for public release and was redacted from the copy of the full report I have provided be below, which was obtained via a records request. This is more evidence of shady, comma, less than legal methods to obtain these materials. So that's why I didn't really pay too much attention to this. I thought, okay, well, this is just the first page. And for whatever reason, this was, like he says, this was redacted. We now know that that is not the case at all. Fly away, little birdie. So what we're looking at right here is side by side. On the left-hand side, you see the fake police report. And on the, on the, on the left-hand side, you see the fake police report. On the right-hand side, you see the real police report. Now note the, the similarities in that box there. Everything at the top is exactly the same, exactly the same. So somebody would have taken just that top portion and then added everything where it says not for public re release. They added all of that in there. All of that from Tom or from uh, Shane to Tommy. Um, and at, like, like you just said, it kind of says yeah, these are two. I mean, you can read the real one on the right hand side. It's a, that one is five pages. What we're seeing on the left-hand side is not something that was redacted. This is something that was falsified. Somebody was posing as a police officer, posing as Detective Shane Klokonos, and wrote this and then spread this. And we know that um, uh, that's, that's what we know so far here. So. Um, those are the two ones. You can see those. You can go and go to Tony's website and find the one on the left-hand side. You can go to the graystage.wordpress.com and you can read the full one. You can see how different they sound. Very, very different. One is accurate. One is a bunch of BS. Okay. Now we're going to look at, we're going to read from the bottom up, by the way, here. So um, there was something that Joe Tommaso was trying to share with Tony. And uh, Tony is like, what, you know, yeah, what, what's up? And then Joe Tommaso says, and this is on June 4, 2021, 1724, um, that they need to share something with you that was slipped to us. So Joe Tommaso here is talking to Tony Floyd, according, according to this, um, this document that we have received from Tony Floyd, um, that Joe Tommaso, uh, something was slipped to them and he says, I'm going to get it now. Uh, Tony says, all right, sure. Luis says, the journal stuff, what do you want to do with it? Joe Tommaso says, it confirms what you have. Let's read on. Joe Tommaso, reading in the upper left-hand corner, June 4, 2020, 2021, it's 1727. I got that with my ECU report. So here you have Joe Tommaso telling Tony Floyd, that he got this image on the right hand side. The image on the right hand side is is from Joe, um, apparently, taken from Joe and given to Tony. And it's the it's that same falsified document. And here you have Joe Joe Tommaso saying that he got it with my ECU report. We have the Apple Valley City uh, attorney saying this is a falsified document. So there's no way that Joe Tommaso would have gotten this with his ECU report. So I hope that he goes and explains that to the Apple Valley City uh, Attorney where he got this from. Or and if, if he created it, he needs to also let them know that too. Because there is this false fake document now floating out there that is confirmed to be fake. I, I don't know if Joe Tommaso actually created this, but if you read this right here, this is what he's saying. I got that with my ECU. 
And we know that there's no way that, that he could have gotten that unless he got it from somebody else, That if it was given to him. But that's not what he says here on June 4th. All right, let's pull back the curtains a little bit here. And um, if you haven't seen this by now, like Sophia was saying, um, we were both sent this at the exact same day, at the exact same time. And it, I was really confused by it because um, uh, some of the stuff that we're going to look at here, especially that document, I had no idea about that document. I did not send them that document. But the, the response um, that we get here from Christine J. Caselius. And um, so I'm sure I'm sure we've kind of gone through through that here. We'll be talking more about that. I just want to kind of briefly kind of cover this. And so they go through all of the different data, what we can get, what we can't get, which is all good. All right. Everything sounds kind of normal here. Nothing too uh, strange there. And, you know, they're very thorough in letting us know about who has requested data. People have requested data. These requests uh, have come in. And, you know, I was a little confused because they're talking about when people are, are not dead, which really has nothing to do with the case. It's really, it's really just talking about um, people that are dead here. So, um, so they just kind of go through that and kind of, I mean, they're very thorough about exactly what is, what is going on. Everything sounds kind of normal, right? Nothing really, um, stood out to me. You know, they have this number one, they talk about what that means when they say person, a natural person, um, and the, the data. So they're very, very thorough and it's just like, okay, okay, you know, we're expecting data and we, f we finally, because I was going to wait until October 1st to contact them and see, okay, we've put in these data requests. You guys said you don't know how long it's going to take. Um, is there any update? But they beat me to that, to that punch. I wasn't expecting it to come from the city uh, attorney, which was kind of weird. So I kind of thought that too. I kind of thought, well, okay, maybe they're just going to say, you know, you guys got everything and we're not going to give you anything else, which that still may be true. That still may be true that maybe they won't. Maybe they'll come back and say, hey, you know, this is all that we're going to give you and that's it. Now they're going to have some problems if they try that. Um, so we'll see about that. But here's what they said. Um, let's see. Also a document entitled, quote, examination report, which was allegedly written by AVPD detective Shane Klakanos, was provided to the AVPD by one of the recent requesters. Thank you for bringing this absolutely false document to our attention. In closed, please find the affidavit by Detective Klakonos affirming this is a fraudulent document. And so it's like, okay, wait a minute. Are they talking about the whole five page thing? But no, they're just talking about that one page that is that says not for public re release um, that starts with Tommy ends with Shane. That is a falsified document. That is the falsified document that we're talking about here. Moving on a little bit. Then we have Shane Klakonis who has the actual aff affidavit, it's signed. This is all legal. You can clearly see this. Um, you know, I, I've seen a couple of, of these. So um, this one just looks good. And he just makes it clear. I did not do this. I have reviewed the attached document. Um, and uh, uh, let's see, where is it? Prior to seeing this document during August 2021, according to Detective Shane Klakonis in the affidavit, I have I had never seen this document. So he didn't even know about this until August 2021, which a lot of us also didn't know about it, um, but we know that it was being passed around uh, from Joe Tommaso to Tony Floyd, as far as we know, as far as the document that we've seen here. And uh, Detective Shane Kokono says, I am absolutely not the creator of that document. Further, I have reviewed the applicable case file maintained by the Valley Police Department and did not locate this document. So that document was not even even there. So who slipped it to Joe Tommaso, if that is what really happened? Or is he making it up? There's, there is an, an answer. There is an answer, but he's the one who would, who would know that. Um, now the affidavit, if, if you don't know what this is, it's a verified statement or showing. In other words, it contains a verification, which means that it is made under oath on penalty of perjury. 
and this serves as evidence for its veracity and is required in court proceedings. That last part is very important. It is required in court proceedings. All right. Now, um, we also have uh, some quotes here um, from Tony Floyd. <clears throat> and uh, let's see what he says here. Fabricated documents. I will preface this by saying that I think these circumstances are ridiculous on the part of Joe Tommaso, Louise Gibson, and other vocal members of the Crowley case dash fact versus fiction. I am writing this as they are continuing to lie and portray themselves as infallible after committing an extremely shady and potentially, potentially illegal offense. So here's what he says. I obtained David's day one journal via records request on June 4th, 2021. After quickly reviewing the document, I began sending screenshots of entries prim primarily pertaining to drug use to Louise Gibson and Joe Tommaso. That's where this started from. Okay, according to what Tony is saying here, while discussing the journal entries I shared with them, the sensitivity of the document and the potential of, of respectfully sharing portions of it, they approached me with something to show me. This was the something that was slipped to him. He says, I believe that they tried to pass this document off as a legitimate document because they wished to portray themselves as having the upper hand regarding information and of already being aware of what I was sending them dictated by pride and insecurity. I specifically mention pride and insecurity as Joe Tommaso has an inflated ego, which he feeds by repeatedly reminding people of his qualifications when he is not the quote unquote top dog, as someone would put it. This is notable and not just a smear as this same pride later led him confronting me when I offered to share the item 05 black light report with him to assist them. So he's making it sound like, you know, he shares this information with them and they act like they already have it. And then they have this extra paper that nobody has, including the police, because it's not a real document tied to this case. It's a falsified document. This confrontation consisted of him telling me that I should keep my files to myself as I previously redacted non-public slash private material from the day one journal before sending it to them and that they would get these files themselves as I lack credibility Wow, where have we heard that one before? And would not share the original download links for files I received. To break all of this down, Tony continues, I will state that my copy of the day one journal was the original file without redaction. Contained within this file were many intimate portions and at least one photograph containing uh, the nudity. I immediately informed ABPD of this in the event of future requests and such material should not be public, nor should I have received it. For this reason, I sent Gibson and Tommaso a redacted copy of the Day One Journal. And we have that, uh, Tony, it's also on Tony's website. It's also on my website too, if you're looking for, I believe it's in the group files too. Um, regarding lacking credibility and being in the wrong for not sharing the original download links, I can see no concrete basis for either of these, especially the former. At any point, they could have requested a screenshot of the requested emails or the files, check some, including in many of the emails to verify the files were not tampered with, but they did not. I was handing them dozens of new photos pertaining to the bodies, the day one journal, the backlight reports for item 0508, Vaughn report, etc. I assumed that they began falsifying documents, backpedaling, and turning me away as their only thing to bring to the table was the gun photo and very irrele irrelevant documents such as the Crowley's, their mortgage. I do not say any of this to boast. As far as I'm concerned, I'm just another citizen as we all are. And as is why being insecure about obtaining public records to the point of fabricating them to quote unquote, keep up or stay on top is ridiculous. Powerful stuff. So yeah. there on the right hand, on the left hand side, kind of uh, covered that. Um, and looking at the stuff over on the right hand side, um, you can see this is more of the conversation. Now, whereas the first one was June 4th on the left hand side, it continues on um, through July 21st, 2021. 
uh, Louis Gibson. It's not that big of a deal, but we don't know what it is. We're waiting for stuff to come back. And when it does, we will go through it and release what we feel is acceptable and not disrespectful, but proves that whatever is in the report as being fact or present was indeed fact and present. And that David wasn't the David that he publicly presented. Talk about a clear bias. I mean, they're desperately yeah. hunting for this stuff here. Um, Tony says. And they were going to manipulate their group members to yeah. believing what they wanted them to believe. Sure. Sure. Nothing new. Wow. Uh, Tony says, couldn't, couldn't releasing things be detrimental because it could give the quote unquote justice group things to, to request, not really speaking against it, just thinking out loud. And Joe Tommaso, about um, 20 minutes later, 24 minutes later, says, this is exactly why I, retain, I refrain from commenting at Louise Gibson, was not stating she would release stuff. She was saying she'd consider releasing I have further requests in both officially and through the higher ups. I like the indirect calling of hypocrite, though. Hmm. Okay. Um, not to sound like an asshole, but keep what you get. I don't need it. Besides the fact that I can only use stuff from other sources, from official sources. But he's not using stuff from official sources. There's a falsified document. That is not from an official source. And who is he talking about with these quote unquote higher ups? Or is he just making all of this stuff up, as Tony says, to sound like something that, that he isn't? Uh, when I give stuff, it's in its entirety. Also, when I ask for things under my legal name and only my legal name. When I first got involved here, I was like, okay, we have someone getting stuff, sometimes the same, sometimes different, but with the same goal of stopping the harassment of individuals or innocent people, which is what they do to us, harassing individuals and innocent people. The hip hypocrisy here is just laughable. But redactions and screening, et cetera, whatever. I'm almost 60 years old and have experienced more things than a lot of individuals. Yeah, he feels very highly of himself, doesn't he? As mm -hmm. for members of Justice requesting stuff, that's been working really well for them, hasn't it? Take a good look at any FYA law, state, federal, and if they show you, if they can show you are using that info for improper purposes, request away because they do not have to give you anything. File the complaint and it will get left out of the hearing. Also, we have been working on stuff with the case for over six years and have never screwed anyone over. Yeah, right. Uh, feel free to ask Judy or Sean, as I even went as far as to go legal on their and their family's behalf. What is said or shared here has stayed here to the extent that if there's something that would benefit anyone, including the family, it can't even be put out there. So exactly what good does that do? And... Tony kind of echoes what I was thinking. What are you even talking about? Is what Tony Floyd says uh, about one minute later. She said, she said you would release what you feel is acceptable. And I didn't call anyone a hypocrite, even indirectly. Yeah, more of what are you talking about, dude? Um, so then he said, this is ridiculous. I was trying to offer you, we're reading from down up. This is ridiculous. I was trying to offer you the file to make things easier for you. And now this? And one minute later, Joe Tommaso, as for the sexual stuff, it's not like it's getting put out there. I get you have morals, which is more than a lot that I can say for some people. Also realize that when I forwarded you what you sent me, a copy of, I sent bulk. I scanned right then and there, which is why I didn't click and send. Also, there is a reason I do things the way I do. When I share things with Luis, for instance, I will usually forward her the emails and she can click the link and download from the source, not from me. This is also why when I post stuff in the group, I usually post something supporting this, this statement. It's not like he's really mad that uh, he just, you know, he's not being given everything so that he can act like he already has it. Um, mm -hmm. Tony at the bottom says, I didn't legally deserve the unredacted file, so nor do you especially when it adds virtually nothing to a broader understanding of the case. For someone who boasts about legality and credibility, you falsify the police document. Boom. Right there. Um, and then I think we included this to just kind of show, and Tony probably included this to just kind of show what this group, what these people are really doing. 
And here's what she says. They, they admit it. Joe is tampering with stuff. They're tampering with stuff. Now, you wouldn't do that if you're just looking for the, for the truth, right? That doesn't make any sense. We found something about the Gun Plus store. We don't really, really know what it means, if anything, and we haven't gotten anything with the Celebrite. We're just sending the group into a spin. How are they sending us into a spin? I don't really understand that either, but whatever. Um, and then here's another quote that she says, it all depends as to what you want to dis disclose. When you come up with multiple scenarios, most involving having to tell white lies, admitting they have no issues lying, playing games, or sending them on a wild goose chase, or coming up with a backstory to send them off of the scent. Well, I'm not sure exactly what scent they're talking about, but you know, the scent that we're on is to find the truth. So if they're trying to send us off of that scent, that just further shows that they really don't care about this family. They really don't care about justice. They really don't care about truth. They really just care about creating fiction, telling fiction and spreading fiction. And there it is. Um, that is the full presentation. I wanna hear everybody's thoughts here. Um, Ross, I don't know if you're still with this. Hopefully you're still with us. I don't know if you're, you know, if your time is limited. Um, maybe we'll have you kind of go first and, uh, but, or else we'll go back through this and uh, I want to hear everybody's thoughts on this stuff. It's interesting stuff. Yeah, I'm still here, brother. All right. Well, it, this may be the first time, Ross, that you've kind of looked at some of this stuff, I'm guessing. Um, what are your first thoughts on this? What do you think about somebody falsifying a police report? Yeah, it's, it's pretty insane, man. Um, that's I know, you know, you and I spoke about it uh, a little bit about it previously, and I was trying to uh, catch up on uh, some of your recent posted videos on the Gray Stage channel, which I did. Uh, quite an interesting development, I would say. Um, you know, it's, it's rather confusing, but I think you guys uh, did a good job of explaining it even someone who's uh even to someone who's catching up to speed on it myself uh i'm driving guys so my bad on the uh little bit of wind in the background <laughs> and uh yeah uh, it's wild man i'd say it's kind of on par with uh you know the, the the falsified check that we've seen uh you know earlier on in the case um or whatever you want to call it uh sure. deposit or the whole the whole bank statement thing um but i'd say it's quite a bit worse given that it's a police document so um yeah it's pretty, any, it's any pretty odd i mean it good uh I was saying, any, any ideas why you think somebody would would do that any thoughts on that uh i mean nothing directly uh you know i'd kind of have to, to deep dive it to uh come up with anything of substance but uh certainly my first thought would be you know, I think this this definitely uh, leads credence to a, a cover up. I mean, I can't um, think of any other reason. I don't know uh, which way the rest of you guys are, are leaning on it. Seems pretty desperate to me. That's, that's yeah, I agree. <laughs> well, let's get some other some other thoughts um, on this. Um, anyone else have any thoughts on this? Let's go. This is a round table, so let's go around the table, and let's start with um, let's start with let's start with Catherine. Um, it's it to me. It's like it shows some serious balls. Anybody who would um, go to this extent to try to prove anything, or even to make themselves look important. Um, it, it's from, in my mind and in my opinion, it has to be one of two reasons. Either their ego is that big or they are absolute idiots. Um, this talk about, I mean, this is a huge, um, uh, cr crime. You don't go around faking a police document because now they're presenting themselves on paper as an officer. So not only are they falsifying a legal document, but they're pretending to be a police officer which is a crime and um and the fact that they admit that they do stuff to try to throw others either our group or anyone else off of quote unquote the scent is reprehensible um 
I mean, like you were saying, how is this being helpful to the family? How is this being helpful even to their their point? It can't be. Um, it, it's it's just it's appalling. So I'll stop there for now. <laughs> all right, uh, Crip Rick, what do you think about all of this? Uh, I'm as a uh, I'm still catching up on a lot of it. Uh, I just recently learned about this a few days ago, so I'm tr playing catch up a little. Sure. But uh, Catherine definitely uh, answered my question. Is I'm just wondering how illegal it is to uh, put out a report like this and, and you know pretending to be an officer. And I I can't wrap my head around whoever did this, what their what their intentions are, or what they're hoping to gain from it. Um, there's so much evidence out there and information that. I, to me, I would assume that they're going to know that groups like ours are going to pick through this and eventually pick it up. And so I, I just, I'm really struggling with, I don't understand what their intentions are behind this. I just, to me, it, 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 there's no benefit for what they're doing in the long run. It just, if anything, it's going to make everything look worse for them in the long run. Yeah. Agreed. Mm-hmm. So I hope that doesn't sound like I'm. I'm hoping that sound makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, it makes perfect oh, yeah, sense. Yeah, it does. Yeah. I just, it also I, just see, I just don't see the the benefit. That's where I'm struggling with. I don't like. Maybe it's like Catherine said. They're trying to get popular. Maybe they're trying to get some clout out of this. But it's definitely not the type of clout that I'd be going for or popularity I'd be looking for. Oh, also no. buying a document. So that's my thoughts. Yeah, it seems like the um, it's like the what um, Sean uh, Wright did, where it was kind of like they have this secret uh, uh, knowledge that they, they can't share with us yet, right? That's what he was telling us from from day one. Yeah, they have we have the fact we know that David Crowley is guilty. Can't share it with you yet, but if you guys just stop talking about it and stop questioning it, then one day we'll be able to share it with you and. Uh, this kind of falls in line for me. It falls in that same type of pattern, that it's it's just the secret stuff that only certain people can can know. And if you go if you go along with this theory that David Crowley is guilty, then they kind of you know make it seem like maybe one day they'll be able to share some of of this stuff. And and it it, it will never come. You know this stuff never comes because there is no evidence. There is nothing to prove David Crowley guilty. So. Um, uh, William, okay. what do you um, so I missed out on Ross's uh, what he what he was saying um, because my internet completely cut out. I don't know if you saw my dropped out of call. Didn't mean to or anything, but yeah, oh, okay. internet drop. So so also for my Twitch streamers, yeah, that that's what happened. Sorry, um, but um, yeah, no, I, I feel pretty much the same way. Um, I also noticed Sean was being brought up in this conversation um, with uh, Joe and Luis and um, uh, Tony. So um, that I found a little disturbing. So Sean's obviously got to be in this inner circle here, um, which once again, I mean, I just streamed about this. Yeah, this, this guy is, uh, he's, he's known for his uh, narrative control. He wants to go and really control the narrative. And I, I feel like that's really what's going on here is they're just trying to get this narrative pushed and they just want the narrative there and that's it. And anything else is, you know, it's just, it's wrong. But we know for a fact, I mean, the narrative is wrong. So why are they still pushing for this? Why is it so crucial to push the narrative when we know it's wrong? Hmm. Yeah, I don't understand. You know, and then on top of that, this whole falsifying thing, I, there's nothing good to go and gain from this. I mean, once we found out, I mean, it's basically over. You guys already emailed it out to, um, uh, or rather, Sophia emailed it out to um, Steph and this is all, um, you know, it's going to unfold for them. It's just going to go and fall apart. And I honestly, I think there's definitely some illegal activity going on here. But what's going to happen is kind of up in there. I don't know. Just hopefully the, the city uh, attorney looks into it. Hopefully the AVP decides they want to go do something about that. Do a just for that part. <laughs> but um, yeah, that's, that's, that's basically how I'm seeing it. Yeah, because I was going to say earlier that this particular document, it hurts the surviving mm -hmm. family members. Right. It hurts the friends. 
because it's talking personal details that nobody supposedly knows. Mm -hmm. Because anyway, it's just it's reprehensible. It is that it somebody is. would do that. Well, I mean, we can see from the other document too that it's also not. Um, you know, they when it comes to these documents, there's no opinion on here. It's nothing. There's no bias. This is just fact, right? We got mm -hmm. to see this from exactly. from the other internal document that we know that that's how this operates. So that just further clarifies this is fake. Not to mention we got the affidavit of this as well of him admitting this is fake. This isn't that wasn't him. So. You know the thing is, it's just it's it's weird the fact that they thought this would pass. Well, and you know, it's it, what both I think what bothers me the most is you know out of all the documents that I've read in this case, I've always kind of held um, Detective K, and I don't know what else. I, I'm not being rude. I just don't know how to pronounce his last name, but I've always held him to a higher regard because of how professional he has always been. He has always just stated what. Like you were stating, uh, it's a fact. It's just a fact. And here on the left, it is pure supposition. It, it looks like it's character slamming. So it's making this detective look like he's a petty individual who's just trying to, you know, undermine the case and somebody that they're investigating to another fellow officer. It makes him look like a kind of a, a, a disgusting human. But we know that's not who he is. And so... When an officer has to go to the to the length of signing an affidavit and stating, I didn't do this, he, that means he's taking his character very seriously because it's like they're assassinating or attempting to assassinate this detective's character. And to me, that that is just another step in such a very bad direction. Right. Well, another thing so I want to just note is I just noticed this too. This initially says to detectives Tommy Booth and Brian Bone, right? Well, we know mm -hmm. that's on both of them like that. However, um, <laughs> what we do see is it's only to Tommy. Mm -hmm. Why is it only to Tommy? Why? It does make it says further just adding to this. So, it, but even then, we also see what does Shane do? He handles just the the electronics. That's where he's. That's his <laughs> expertise. That's where he's going to be handling. Why does he have any say in this? He wouldn't be even saying anything about this. There's no reason for it. Great points. And that's what was raising the red flags. And, mm -hmm. and, and when, sure. um, you know, and I'm sorry, Sophia, um, but when um, Detective K, again, I'm sorry, I, I really need to find out how to say his name, but when he states in his final report that they could find nothing in the devices that would prove a motivation or what led to this event to have occurred. But then in this falsified one, they have it saying, we believe the actual incident occurred on either the 24th or 25th, and I'm paraphrasing, and that the substances as well as sleep deprivation contributed. Right. So now they're embellishing and they're making, this basically is trying to void out everything he actually stated in his original document. Right. Mm -hmm. Yep. You know, like I said, what I call like, the narrative. Yeah, I mean, what I would like to know is, you know, other than the detective saying, you know, this wasn't me, I, I didn't do this report, is what is their policy on people falsifying documents and then it, you know, uh, it being released publicly, which it is now, you would think that that type of thing would warrant uh, investigation. You know, if this was the Kurt Cobain case or any other case of any kind of visibility, Greg, you think there would be, like, a very rapid and swift response to this type of thing. You know, that, that's where I'm Absolutely. at with it. Yeah, I totally agree. Well, is it is it possible, um, because this, this was a question that one of our other group members had brought up, um, that is it possible that Joe Tommaso really did receive this and... Um, you know, we know that this, that Detective Shane Klokonos did not create it. Is it possible maybe another officer created it? Are we open to that? No. No. Why not? Because Why it's, not? it states that the report is prepared by Detective Shane I mean, K. 
and then it's written, and then it's to Tommy Booth and Brian Bone. It's addressed to Tommy. It is signed Shane. Everything there is to lead the reader that this is from de the Detective K. Now, there is no other Shane on this entire case that I could find. Right. And so to assume that this could have been by somebody else, no, it, it doesn't make sense. Okay, I'm going to go right. back to the letter. Um, yeah, I see what you're saying. And just reading the letter by the Apple Valley City attorney, thank you for bringing this quote unquote absolutely false document to our uh, attention. So ab by them saying it's absolutely false, it's absolutely false document that kind of what they're saying and it would be nice to have them clarify this but it sounds like what they're saying is that this is you know it, this was not this is a falsified document it's not created by the apple valley police or anyone associated with the apple valley police is that yes, because you guys read it yeah the detective went through all of you know his reports and this is supposedly coming from his department. Mm, and right. he, it says he went through the reports and he found nothing there. And he's saying, I didn't do it. And it's not in our case files. There you go. Right. Boom goes the dynamite. Yeah, Absolutely. not in the case file sounds like it didn't come from anyone else. But, but again, let's say they got the name wrong. Again, is that the type of thing that warrants a public statement of, okay, it's written as this, but it actually came from this this other person yeah you, you think it would it would be like a relatively quick response yeah well i mean they're i mean they were quick to have the the detective sign this on september 20th just a couple days ago and mail it out or send send it out to sophia and to myself at the same time even though i had nothing i you know did not send them this they still sent me the exact same response that they sent her. Um, hmm. So they, it sounds like they're taking this very, very seriously. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know. I'm just, it's just curious to see, you know, I didn't expect them to go this far with it. And I'm just wondering if they're doing that because it may lead to some other legal issues, maybe. Uh, quick question. Oh, so yeah. yeah. Definitely. I figure I might as well get this one out of the way. So, um, Sophia, when you sent it out, did you request that going to both you and Greg, or or did they do this on their own? No, no, I had no idea that they even sent it to Greg. Uh, Why would they do that then? He, that's, that's my question. Yeah, same. <laughs> yeah, and Greg didn't even know that I had sent the email to mm -hmm. Steph. You know, I yeah. wasn't going to say anything until I got a response. And, you know, I had sent a couple other uh, SOAs out that I didn't tell Greg about either. And I wasn't going to say anything until I got something back. And then usually Greg will follow up with the, you know, asking for the same exact thing. And maybe that's why, because. Yeah, that makes he was sense. requesting the same stuff that I had been requesting right. after yeah. I received information. I, I don't know. I It's very confusing why he received it, but he did. Too. Yeah. So, so do you know uh, why you yeah. received that, Greg? <laughs> I, I don't know why I received that. I'm glad that I did. The only thing that I can that I can think of is is pretty much what what so Sophia said is, you know, it wasn't word for word what I asked for, but definitely, you know, they, they know they've dealt with both of us. So they know we're asking for, for these same things. Um, they didn't have to send, it's more of a courtesy on their part. And so that's, that's really cool. I'm really glad that, that they did that. And it's also because they also say, um, you know, where is it? A, a document entitled Examination Report, which was allegedly written by AVPD Detective Shane Lakonos, was provided to the AVPD by one of the recent requesters. So it, it's not saying was provided by me. And I think, Sophia, they don't say, you know, um, this was, you know, re, uh, by when they say one of the recent requesters, your document also says that too, right? Yes, it does. Yeah, My, so everything is exactly the same. It's exactly the same, yeah. 
and then they say thank you for bringing this absolutely false document to our uh, attention it's like so that you know it's like well i didn't but <laughs> okay right <laughs> um so yeah so it's it's more of a it's a it's a template because it, everything is exactly the the same except for who they sent it to that's that's really it and that's why right. they're very and this could also be there if somebody else were to send them that same document you'd probably get this same thing here the same template that's my guess okay yeah makes sense um i mean so it just has that thank you statement but it doesn't have any explanation of like you're getting it uh sent to you for this reason other than you know it was requested pretty much yeah just i'm, I'm getting it because one of our one of the recent requesters um had sent it to them and then they they think they thank me for that, but really they're thanking, you know, they're really thanking whoever sent it to them. And I, I think whoever sent it to them too. And up until uh, probably the beginning of this show, I didn't know that it was Sophia who had sent it to them. And there's no reason for me to need to know that. And like I said, I'm glad that the sender came forward and did that. But, you know, again, it's, it, to me, it's not that big of a, of a deal who, who sent it, but no. This document, this this information that we have here is great. And this is another great reason why people should be sending things to them. Because yep. you may get a, a professional, responsible response like this, which is what we want from our cops, from our police, from our law enforcement. What they did here is an A++. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Oh, yeah. Above you know, and beyond. Go ahead. I got to I got to wonder I don't know if this is jumping to conclusions but given this is such a, a fishy scenario I got to wonder if this is uh somehow related to what Greg mentioned in the recent video post on the channel uh your current uh most recent witness that came out about the the Chris Klein vehicle driving back and forth in front of the the Crowley house before entering mm -hmm. on that night um it's starting to paint a picture that you know some of this stuff could be possibly related Interesting. I never thought yeah. of that. Yeah, maybe. Good mm point. -hmm. Maybe. And I, I do hope to cover some some more of that stuff too, because there is some more um, from that new source that we have here too. Definitely want to hear that. But uh, on that note, I got a jet, guys. I'm about to go into a very loud room, so you wouldn't want to hear me <laughs> anyway. But thanks for I will Chris, tell YouTube, us. Uh, yeah, tell yep. tell us where, where where people can catch all of your stuff. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I'm on Twitter uh, under my name, Ross Tracy PXF, and then YouTube.com slash Planet X Filmworks. That's where me and Greg are on there with the two script deep dives, both versions now, 2013 and 2014 of the Gray State, I guess, unreleased, unfinished scripts, whatever you call it. Uh, I think pretty much we're the only ones on there covering that. So uh, check that out. Hope to be back with you guys soon. Thanks, brother. Thanks, guys. Good show. Thanks for joining. Thank you. Well, I mean, we covered a lot here. Um, maybe we can kind of look through some of this, some of these messages here. But um, any anybody have any thoughts while I pull up some of this stuff here from Tony Floyd? No, no, you're good. You're good. Well, I mean, I do want to just say one thing real quick. <laughs> we did cover the scripts on my on my stream as well. Just saying. <laughs> okay, but that, that was on Twitch, right? On Twitch. Yeah, it was on Twitch. Yeah, yeah. so it was, it's already long gone. So. <laughs> okay. Get those up on uh, YouTube. Uh, I did. I did not get the downloads <laughs> on those. <laughs> they were quite <laughs> large. <laughs> well, we'll have to we'll have to do do that over again. It sounds like. Okay. Oh no, that's all good. There's, there's so much to, to go through, and it's, it's so great to have everybody here. Everybody here on this call has really, has really helped um, so much, and uh, we look forward to that, too. Um, and uh, we know, Crip, Crip Rick, we know that you're uh, starting a podcast. Is that right? Yes, that's correct. Uh, tell just us a little bit about that. Yeah, it ju I just started it. Um, it's something I've been working on, planning for the last couple of years to do and I just uh, very overwhelming to learn all the OBS and different uh, stuff I needed to learn to actually make it possible but I did start one on YouTube nice. and it is called Crypt Rick well actually Crypt Rick's I've been thinking <laughs> and I will be as of today I'm going to be posting my first uh, episode and first uh, interview 
that I've ever done, and that was with Catherine, who's on uh, with us right now, and it was an amazing interview. She's an amazing guest to have on. It's uh, I've been wanting to interview her, interview her for uh, a couple of years now, because I've basically been following her channel and I really want to get uh, her thoughts on on this case and that, because I know her and along with a lot of other people have put a lot of work into this, and so it was an amazing interview, and I hope everyone checks it out. And uh, I just want to, on my personal note, I just want to say that. Uh, the deeper I get into this case, I've been really going deep for the last about month, and it, it is, it's so disturbing. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, I can't imagine what that family went through. I just, I've never actually lost sleep over stuff like this, and I actually am losing sleep over it because yep. it's, it's so upsetting, and I just cannot get my head around with all the evidence that we and other people have came up with that the police can't even take the time to just open it up and have another look because it's i don't want to see david's name uh always having this uh, attached to it because i i i myself fully believe that he's innocent and i'd like to see his name cleared that's just what i would like to see Amen. absolutely Amen to that well i i hope that you post the um the show that you did with Catherine, make sure you post that into the to the group, and we'll try to we'll try to spread yes, that, that would out be there great. too. Yep, yeah, and I'm like I said, I'll be uploading it today. As soon as we're done here, I'm going to be uploading it. And uh, yeah, if you guys want to share it around and help me get a few views on it, that would be amazing. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. uh, and and right here, um, Rick, you have lots. I mean, you have Greg, Sophia, William. I mean, and then Dan Hennon, when he comes back, you have so many people to interview that will give you so much great information. So thank you. Again, thank you for doing this for David and his family. Thank you for Absolutely. having me. I mean, it's at least I feel like I'm not doing enough. And it's it's very disturbing. I I like i said the deeper you go into it it just keeps going into it deeper and deeper it just seems like it never ends you're just going into a deeper hole and it's it's really disturbing it's for me it's very disturbing yeah. it is it is and well, i think that's room. i'm sorry i didn't mean to cut you off i do that to everybody go ahead <laughs> oh, oh, good, i do it too so <laughs> i totally get you um so, i mean the thing is is just be careful when looking at this case too is there's a ton of rabbit holes um, mm -hmm. And you can you can easily just go down one of those, and then all of a sudden it's like, whoa! But this cha and it changes everything sometimes about the mm -hmm. case, just kind of like how you look at it. But in all honesty, I mean, we know he's innocent. Just got to remember a few things here. We know the bullet holes don't line up. We know that um, you know the amount of uh, damage that was done. That doesn't really even add up. You know, the blood, the lack of blood, rather. I mean, that doesn't add up. Nothing in this case adds up. Yeah. So really, anything that strays away from the narrative might actually be something that's useful if the narrative is completely wrong. So, I agree. And uh, as I was laughing, I, when I did the interview with Catherine, we were joking that this poor dog, Pal uh, Paleo, he's like super dog. He's basically been <laughs> accused of doing everything but pulling the trigger, and I'm surprised yeah. they haven't tried to link that to it. <laughs> right. At this point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you know, for me, it's like... Um, and I've heard this from reported from other people. I, I don't. Okay, I've heard this reported from people who've worked within law enforcement, but I have seen it in other realms, like the medical field, and even in in regular business. That if they come upon something, and sometimes it's just easier to say, "Hey, let's just say this happened," because holy cow. And mm -hmm. that's kind of how it feels like this is. Um, I'm still not convinced that at the beginning that um, the AVPD did this out of malice. I, uh, my true feeling is, is they were overwhelmed. I think right now they backpedal and they don't want to say anything because they would have to say, well, we kind of just said, hey, let's pick something and stick with it. Mm -hmm. And um, because look how long it's taken all of us five, six, seven years, however long it's been, six years, six and a half years for this family. And we've all just been, you know, delving in and we're still finding stuff. And police um, don't have that luxury. They kind of have a real huge time restraint, constraint, I mean. And so, but at the same time, I feel that they should be able to say, okay, at this time, 
this is what we thought, this is what we were dealing with, but now here's where we are and we may have to step back, but I don't, I don't know why that's so difficult. And, and I think that's what's frustrating. Well, if I'm not mistaken, didn't um, Chief Reitzigel, didn't he also say this case is closed and it's not going to be open again? Yes, that is what um, Detective Gummert said to me, uh, speaking on behalf of the chief. And that, and I specifically mm -hmm. asked him, I said, what if we hand you solid evidence that proves David is innocent? And he flat out said, I mean, it's it's online. You can hear it for yourself. Or he says, it doesn't matter. It's closed. We're not going to reopen it. We don't care what you give us. Mm -hmm. Wow. And that right there tells you that this case was never based on facts, but based on something else. Right. Mm -hmm. And what's most disturbing, Catherine, about I know the interview that uh, if you're speaking of the one that's on your uh, channel, mm -hmm. I actually just listened to that video uh, a few days ago. And during that whole interview, as I pointed out in our interview, he never straightly answers one of your questions with a yes or no it's always a deflect on Correct. everything you ask him i've never seen anything like that where every question he's just deflecting there's no yes or no answer correct and, and i'm glad that you caught that because i asked questions specifically in that way because as you and i were talking about it it was very noticeable and you could pick it up right away what was really happening and so um you know and again you know i credit my base knowledge now on my past employers, when I worked not only as an EMT, but I also was a legal secretary for a few years, and I worked for some fantastic, well, they weren't good attorneys, let's just say they were criminals, but, but still, I mean, they taught me how to do stuff, how to research. And one of my very first jobs when I was still in high school was working for the governor's office of planning and research when, um, ridiculous brown was in for the first time so i had some jobs that really taught me how to approach things in in how to question how to search and when you hear a response what does that response really tell you and um and it's it's sad because on one hand you understand that that's their job and that's what they're taught and on the other hand it's like come on guys people are, are a little more knowledgeable these days than what they used to be and we kind of know what you're doing mm -hmm. right right well that's the thing is i mean they, they screwed up big time especially when asking specific questions that there should be a yes or no to and they yes. can't even do that like i i'm honest, i haven't watched that one yet so i do plan on doing that so um and, and I and I definitely you know preface this every time because here in Colorado the law is is only one person on the conversation has to know it's being recorded and it is legal doesn't matter if it's a police department it, it could be the FBI it could be anybody you know but as long and I knew and so and the reason why and this is what I told Rick too and the reason why I recorded this was because of the ridiculous fiasco that happened with Kelly. Now, I had someone with me, with Dr. Kelly, and so, um, and I still believe that their so-called text, you know, going back and forth saying where Dr. Kelly threw me under the bus, I believe that was all fabricated as well. I, it doesn't even sound like the Dr. Kelly I spoke with at, at the ME's office, but that's neither here nor there. But um, it was very legal, and I didn't break any laws, and I did not have to tell him that I was recording. The only thing I would have had to legally have done is if he had said, if you're recording this, don't record it, then I would have had to have turned it off. Mm -hmm. And right. anything after that, I would have been breaking law, but that never happened. Mm -hmm. Well, and the thing is, I mean, we know that this, this group has done some um, little shady stuff, like, I mean, posting something like, for instance, like a text message you know something about uh like it was something like a long ones like when where ombre or something like this it doesn't say who it's from it doesn't say who it's to it doesn't say anything you know and they're just posting this and you know once again that doesn't give you anything solid proof once again that doesn't sound like you know the dr kelly with that with that message or whatever so it's it's like i said there's a lot of things going into this that once again these people that are Looking at this, they could find themselves in a heap of trouble um, if they, once again, are found to be um, <clears throat> falsifying documents here. You know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That so, particular information was also sent to Apple Valley to be verified. The, which one? The text message. The text, oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yes. Hell yes. 
Thank and you. And the photo with the gun in it. Yes. Yes. Thank you. That's awesome. <laughs> well, because, yeah, yeah I mean, I'm, I'm yeah, sorry. I'm but that photo, I took down my video on, on the, the gun because right, as of right now, um, and that's why I made the other one saying, hey, I, I made a mistake. But if it turns out that we really didn't make a mistake and that truly is a fake photo, I'm putting those back mm -hmm. up and I'll take down the other apology video. Well, I mean, I, I can assure okay. you this. I mean, I can tell you right now it's not a fake. That that one is not faked. Okay. So that one's not. Um, because well, once again, we, we can see that once again, go you can go through the video and you'll see, I believe you see it in there as well. So. Well, it'll be good to, to have them con confirm. You know, absolutely, what absolutely. It is and that's that's really, you know, and that's that's really our focus here. Um, yeah, it'll is, solidify is things to, even further. Yeah, yeah. To have them do it, and you know, like like we have here with this thing, they they, we need more of this type of stuff. We need more of these statements where they're like, hey, no, we didn't do this, you know, and we're right. swearing to it. Um, so it's it's. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to see some more of that. And maybe it's just because, you know, we haven't been pressing them or, you know, we're not reaching out to them as as much as maybe we, we should have. I know that I haven't reached out to them as much as I wanted to, um, as much as I have, have hoped to. And, you know, and that's why it is a group effort. Right. And it looks like that's what Tony was trying to do with these people. He was trying to make it a group effort. He was sharing things he didn't have to share with, with them. Well, this Tony person, whoever they are, I mean, they they do appear to have made the general effort to not only do that, but also just trying to, you know, regardless of them believing the opposite side, you know, thinking that, uh, you know, he's he's guilty. Um, <clears throat> it's still the whole thing that he's trying, or this person's trying to um, gather the, the actual evidence to prove this and went through legal means and all this. So, I mean, they're they're on the right side of things, I would say, for that, you know. That they're doing things legally but i mean obviously we know that that's yeah you know, he's innocent so <laughs> and he tried to do right by david and Kamal by redacting the things and right. it was the ungratefulness of joe and louise right demanding and then so they instead they were like no we don't like what you have to offer us we're going to yeah, get it ourselves Mm -hmm. You know, they, they, wanted, they and, wanted to be the the gatekeepers. Yeah, yeah, and you know, it's like we got the information from Apple Valley also around that same exact time, and it was redacted. Well, most of it was. Yeah, yeah, and and I I think you did too, Sophia. But I knew as soon as I saw that, you know, I could read through it, and it took me. I, I'm telling you, it just sent me into such shock. Like, holy cow, I this. I did not need to read this that the, yeah. the next day I wrote them uh, I think it was Steph I, I wrote Steph an email and I said hey you know there I'm taking a lot of crap from people because I'm saying you don't need to read them. we none of, none of us needed to read that but it's still visible so you might want to know because people are going to come for you because they just want to read the titillation and that's no. that's a, a, a paraphrasing but you know uh, to to get angry at, at Tony because he doesn't want to put out there something so personal. Forget the fact that he gave was willing to give them the information that they felt they wanted minus the personal information. That wasn't good enough. No, they were focusing on just that. And then they're going to get angry with Tony because Tony's like, no, I didn't need to read that. You don't need to read that. It, it's it's mind boggling. So I, I do got to go here in a second, but I, I want to add one thing real quick. So thing is, I do think some of the personal stuff in there, I think it, it could have been edited out a bit, but to show that there was that level of intimacy still. <clears throat> and it was, I mean, it was obviously a mutual thing, at least it appears to be, you know, based from David's journal and everything. You know, it, that's a healthier relationship. We can see this. Well, why the hell would he kill his wife then? You know, once again, I mean, I'm not trying to say the oh, unhealthy relationship will kill you. No, 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 I'm not saying that at all. But, um, but you know, it's the whole thing. We can see there's a healthy relationship when they're trying to say that 
this the narrative is oh no they didn't really have a healthy relationship they had a very healthy relationship she right, was very supportive of him and um, i hear you however a lot of and this is my opinion but a lot of what he does cover and in, in how he talks about how he's supporting camille when she decided she was going to quit her job and and how he supported her when she was arguing with her family as people mm-hmm. do and i'm not saying that's good bad or indifferent we all argue with our families but mm-hmm. he was supporting her and right. that is very indicative of a very good relationship. And not saying they were perfect. Oh my gosh, nobody's perfect. Bingo. Yeah. That, that's the good thing here. I and mean, that's why I'm saying, I mean, it could have been edited out a bit. But I mean, to leave that in there, you can see that they are, they're in a healthy, I would I would argue, rather healthy relationship. Things were getting better. You could see this gradually for David and Renia especially. Things were getting much better um, at a decent pace. Um, especially towards the end, everything was just going, it, was, it seemed like everything was wonderful. Yes. Um, but yeah. we also got to see directly in there that we're seeing family being cut out. It was planned. They're going to cut their families up because, well, they just didn't want them. And for whatever reason, we just, they don't want them around because they're toxic. Um, they're trying to break free of, you know, basically having those types of toxic people in their life. Uh, we're not really sure exactly what all of it is that led to the full separation, why they're trying to go get away from entirely. But we do know that they were actively trying to get themselves away from all that. And we know throughout the journal, too, uh, how many of these people that were supposed to be David's friends are actually considered to be friends by David. Most of them were. None, yeah. Uh, Well, other than Mitch, I I think he really thought highly of Mitch Hyle, but the rest, nope. (laughs) I think think he really did, too. Um, Up until, I mean, once again, the only thing I have to add to that is, I mean, once again, Mitch did say he, um, he wouldn't let him inside. And all this, uh, he was obviously trying to distance himself from him too, but I think he was just kind of trying to go and keep an eye on everybody um, to see how they all react. And Mitch didn't react like the rest of them did. Mm-hmm. You know, you had um, Seton, who was just like, uh, you know, it was good making music with you, David, or whatever. <laughs> goodbye, or whatever. like, David was just like, that's cool. I, I was trying to do, do that anyways. So um, he was like, get the memo, buddy. <laughs> um, you know, and then you got Danny August Mason, which you can see he clearly didn't like the guy at all. He saw him as shady. And that's what I'm hoping to go and fully uncover with the phone records, too, is once we can see directly where... Um, where he really stops talking to Danny August Mason because they're talking pretty frequently. Uh, Adam Shambor and David, they talk pretty frequently. Once again, where did this dip off and where did it return? Um, was it one-sided in the end? Things like this. I want to have all the answers there for everybody to see. But that's these are the things that, once again, we can see this. You know, He was trying to get a lot of his friends out there. Now, the one thing I do want to mention, though, is um, Mason Hendricks is, is not even mentioned at all in the journal. Right. And, I mean, for this guy being one of, you know, a, a good friend of David's, you know, uh, why isn't he mentioned? You know, he mentions the rest of them. Um, you know, Chris Klein wasn't really mentioned. Obviously, he wasn't, a, you know, a great friend. He was probably an acquaintance. I, I'm, you know, the thing is, that's what I'm saying. I'm, it's, it's the friendships, really. How many did he actually have in the end? I don't think he had many. I think he was keeping everybody on the on the outs because he didn't know who to trust. He didn't know where all this was coming from. And I think he felt a lot of people were trying to betray him. Once again, uh, the reason he mentions uh, the Garden of uh, Gethsemane, you know, it's the same reason. You know, he's, uh, you know, he feels like he was going to be betrayed. And once again, we know not 100% for a fact, you know, per se, you know, with, with proof. But we do know that, you know, it does, it, you know, we know the crime scene doesn't add up. And it does not look like a double homicide and then a suicide it looks more like a triple homicide so i would argue does appear there could have easily been betrayal because who has other who else has motive to do this who else i would i would love to hear i would love to have a debate with anybody on who wants to tell me who you know who has more motive than some of these other guys right here once again not making an accusation i'm just saying they have you know, there's more motive there because there is like potential financial loss. There is, you know, there's some time um, arguments yeah. with family. Yep. Right. There's a lot of different things, you know. But once again, I I can't make the accusations. I don't have any proof. You know, all we know is just pure speculation. So mm-hmm. I got to bounce, guys. So uh, thank you guys for having me. Thanks, Thanks Will. Will. Thank you for being here. Oh, of course. All right. Bye, Will. Until next Later. time. There goes William Rail. Catch him on Twitch. He does a lot of uh, live shows 
uh, Strange Investigations. Make sure that you check him out there. Uh, Crip Rick, since we have you here, um, have you gone through the Day One Journal, David's Day One Journal? Have you looked at any of that stuff? Uh, yes, I have, and I've uh, been watching the videos on the Gray Stage on YouTube. I've uh, nice. been watching that too, and I find I, I, his journals to me, those journals are just amazing because it's really giving you a look into what David was thinking at that time on uh, those days that he was writing them and I have to agree with Will when he was saying that you can really see at least for me from what I've I've read and I've seen so far David was really he was on a spiritual journey in my opinion he was very he was searching he was searching and you could see that he was searching and he was also very human and struggling I could tell with being a father at first, he was, he really didn't, un, he couldn't grasp being a father, at least that's what I could tell. He was having a hard time with it. But as the journal goes on, you can really see him where he just kind of has an aha moment where it just seems, at least from what I, re I read, that it seems like everything was starting to click with him as like where, what his role was as a father, as a supporting husband and, and also, with that also trying to manage this big project the gray state and all of these people around him i really think that like i don't know how to, what these people i i don't know what to call them like to, for me i think he felt like they were almost like a vulture or something they were there to just pick at him and they were and from what the journals tell that i can understand is that that's what he was kind of i think he kind of cut himself off from everybody to see who he could uh, who he needed, who he could trust, and who he could um, have a true friendship with. I think there was a lot of people pulling at him, and it was weighing on him. That's what I could tell so far. Yeah. yeah. We haven't heard from Sophia about what your thoughts are. Sorry, Sophia, I didn't mean to exclude you in that, but um, I'd love to hear your, your thoughts just pretty much on everything here that we've covered. Well, I just know that uh, I have questions in regards to whatever supposed information or new information that that group receives. So from now on, anything that they post is being sent directly to Apple Valley to be verified. Mm -hmm. And... I'm just, I'm really disappointed that somebody had to fake that document. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, we have so much information when it comes to this case. And to see them sit there and discuss how they're lying to people and manipulating the evidence and, and picking and choosing what they're going to post. That's extremely dishonest. It's, it's not only dishonest to your members, but dishonest to everybody. You know, just if you have a document, you post the whole thing, just like we do. Right. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. we don't want to hide information from our group members. The only thing that we were doing with the Day One Journal was just redacting what Apple Valley should have finished, you know, should have done correctly the first time. And yeah, we're just making that was the only reason why it didn't go up immediately. But we had the, the, the searches go up. We had the ECU report that eventually went up. And it's like, we don't hide our information from our group members. So anyway, I'm just, just annoyed. <laughs> There's no reason to be faking information. It's, it's, it's so juvenile yep. and underhanded. Whoever that group, I'm speaking directly to those members and anybody who looks at that group. If you believe anything that they say for now on, you're idiots. 
because they are manipulating you to believe what they want you to believe. And they are manipulating the evidence and they're lying to you. So you need to get your own documents and your own FOIAs and get it directly from Apple Valley if you want to learn the truth about this case. Until then, if you continue to follow these people, follow them blindly, then I, I have no hope for you. You guys will never find the truth. So, Sylvia, what do you think about the fact that um, Tony posted and, and sent you um, the the um, text messages back and forth between him and them where they're saying, oh, yeah, we, we make things up and we do this to send them off the scent? What was your thought when you saw that? I was shocked. But uh, Tony and I, he first came to me. You sent him my way, and he asked for the journal, my copy of the journal that I received from Apple Valley, and I sent it directly to him. Mm -hmm. And I never heard, well, I didn't hear another word until this week after I posted the information about the affidavit. And he asked to see some more information, and he asked me a couple questions, and I answered them, and I sent him the information. There was no hesitance from, on my part. Mm -hmm. And in return, I asked, I was like, do you have proof? Because um, on his website, it says that it was Joe who gave it to him. And I was like, do you have any text message proof that I can send to Apple Valley to back up their investigation? And he sent it to me. The you know, within a few hours, and I forwarded it on to the detective on the case. I, I still need to send it to the attorney, though. Yeah, excellent. And so, you know, and I've asked him a few questions, and he's asked me, well, he asked me to see the, he asked for the, um, the letter from the attorney. And so I sent him the one from Greg and the one from mine, I think. But I sent him the whole thing and told him just, I've been open to listening to him and sharing what he asked and he sends me information that I asked for and it's been yeah. very symbiotic. Is that the right word to use? Yeah. He's has nothing to hide so there's that he just wants the truth and he was rather disappointed in the other group when he found out that that document was actually falsified and he was very supportive in the fact that we are all working together to get to the truth and to help Apple Valley in finding the perpetrator who did this so that's why he's been extremely helpful. Yeah, and, and I think it was, wasn't it William that just said too that, and that's the one thing I, I have to agree that, especially where Tony is concerned, is that even though he believes David is guilty, um, this person still is saying, hey, you know, let's let's still share. We have different viewpoints, but let's be open and honest with what we get. And I think yeah. that's how it should always be. He treats me like a human. I treat him like a human. And we are able to work together. Yeah. He knows exactly where I stand on this case. And I know exactly where he stands because he's made it very, very clear. Uh -huh. And we continue to work together. We have a relationship that way. And that's great. Yeah. So, yeah. But all we want is just the truth and not shady behavior. <laughs> Seems so. fair. Seems mm -hmm. fair to ask for that. I mean. <laughs> I'm extremely grateful to Tony. Me too. If oh, yeah. it hadn't been for him, we wouldn't have discovered 
any of those. Right. So, hopefully we can find out from Apple Valley exactly what's going to happen next. And for those who are saying that we made this all up <laughs> and that we are lying and that, you know, feel free to contact Apple Valley. Okay. Feel free to go down there and show them that document. They'll tell you themselves. I'm extremely grateful. Yeah, call them. We'll and on top of that, you guys need to ask Joe T some serious flipping questions. Yeah. Yeah, you can call because him right if here. he didn't yes, create it, <laughs> then whoever gave it to him did. Yeah, and that's that's well, what's troublesome about what these messages are saying. Where he says that he got this. He first he says it was quote unquote slipped to him. Then he says that he got this with the oh, the ECU report. So which which one was it? Was it slipped to you, or did you get it from the data request? But either, either way, um, it shouldn't be too hard for this lawyer here to also say, "Hey, you know, no, we didn't slip anybody anything, and this was not part of any data request." And I, that's pretty much what they're saying here in legal terms here. Um, right. So it sounds like they're taking this very, very seriously. The more I read, I mean, the more I read this, it's just like, wow, yeah, they're they're not kidding around here. Um, no, so not. it's a very legal and a very professional email. They they're quoting state statutes and they're getting an affidavit in there, and um, and then you have and here's the thing, Joe cannot Joe Tomaso cannot backtrack now. It's in black and white. The conversation this, or I got this in my ECU or with my ECU report, mm -hmm. with the ECU report. So he's saying he got it from the police department. So he's flat out lying. He's he's saying that the police did this. So I want to see him how to back. I want to. Yeah, this is going to be fun. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I thought too Once I realized exactly what I was reading I was like oh this is going to be fun To watch unfold uh -huh. <laughs> But yeah you, If anybody has doubts Pick up the phone call Apple Valley Discuss that document with them Or go on down yourself Instead of sitting there In a Facebook group Being keyboard warriors yeah, That's like pretty lazy mean. You, you can call you can call Christine J. Caselius 952-953-8813 and ask them, is, is, this, is this a real document here? And I know, I know what's, what she's going to tell you, but if you have any doubts, I don't know why you would, but if you have any doubts, go for it. It's all right there, people. Yep. It's all right there. But yeah, Catherine, I think that you're right. I think that they did... Uh, fake the information from Dr. Kelly. I think they faked the text message, and I mean, it's my personal opinion. Others can disagree that they faked the photo with the gun. I mean, that they added the body, but they, you know, they created that photo altogether. But yes, we'll find out because everything was sent to the detective to help verify. Yeah, and so, I can't wait to hear what they have to say. Yeah, I'm just waiting. Yeah. So, well, I also had sent everything that Tony had sent me as proof of the uh, the chain of custody mm -hmm. for that document. Nice. So, that should be interesting to see how that plays out too. Yeah, and if it hasn't been sent to um, to the uh, attorney, um, that's that's probably the better place to send it to. Just kind of, you know, yeah, I need to do that. yeah. Because it's, once they bring an attorney on board, nothing is handled by that particular person or department. It has to go through the attorney's office, and so I mean, and the fact that they actually hired the city attorney to answer for that that tells me they're taking this really serious right so
That's good. Good stuff. Um, let me see here. Any other thoughts here? I'm going to pull up some of this, some of this uh, con conversation. I think um, what what Tony is is saying here is really um, some of these messages. You know, some of the stuff that he's talking about. But it's just like, man, why don't these people like get their own documents and just do their own research. What's what's wrong with that? But it's all about, you know, hiding it. And they, they even make it clear here. It's like, you know, we'll decide what what we feel is acceptable. And it's like, you don't, you don't get to decide that. Um, I mean, you know, if it's if it's stuff that is legally of, obtained, then anybody should be able to legally obtain it. Mm -hmm. And that was that was kind of the kind of the problem with some of the stuff. Uh, that is on Tony's uh, website, and it's like, wait a minute, where did this stuff come from? Why aren't we getting this? And like, like they said, um, they're still looking at stuff to release to us. So hint, hint, to the Apple Valley City Attorney, there are things uh, that we are still waiting for that I hope that we get because they're out there. So. I mean, that's kind of what I'm. That's where where I'm at. Kind of waiting for it to see. Okay, what else are we are we going to get, or are they going to say no? That's pretty much it. Well, then where's this all? Where's all this other stuff coming from? Is this legally? Is this legal stuff? Is this leak stuff? Is this stuff that was slipped to people? I mean, there's there's just a lot of a lot of problems there, and um, even the stuff that was slipped to people, even the stuff that was you know that is out there. It, it, none of it proves David Crowley guilty, so mm -hmm. it, it's it, it is kind of secondary. That's why it's not like that Im too important. It is troublesome, you know, to think that we're not all getting the same data, which is why we file the same data request mm -hmm. to make sure that we are getting the same data. And for for the most part, I think that's that's happened. Um, you know, we we put in requests years ago. And so why are we, why is this day journal one now just coming up? It sounds like from what Tony is saying, he, he just got it too, which I didn't know that until reading some of the stuff here too, is he just got it on uh, June uh, 4th, two, 2020, So, and then we get it a couple months later, but why didn't we get this years ago? Um, and you know, again, it's, I'm, I'm happy that we have it. So that's also it's not a, not that big of a, of a deal. I'm glad that that we all have it now. But I mean, were there some legal things? Was there, you know, what? Why didn't we have this a long time ago when all these people uh, were making films, were writing news re reports <laughs> about this stuff? Um, you know, it's 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 all stuff that would have probably helped to just more evidence um, to show that David Crowley is not guilty. And it's one of the main reasons why we stay on this case for so many years, because it seems like the more that we stay on it, the more information we get. So who knows, 10 years from now, 20 years from now, <laughs> who knows what type of data? Maybe right. some data will, will turn up later, too. But um I'm just I'm very very happy with all of the data that we have, and you know all of it again shows exactly what we, we've been saying here for many many years that there's nothing to show David Crowley guilty, and that really is what it all comes down to. You mm -hmm. know, it really is just about okay, line it up, what proves him guilty against what proves that he didn't do this, and. That's it. That's where everybody should start and sh should finish, I think. Mm -hmm. And let the evidence guide you and not your opinion is That's what right. I think. Oh, yeah. yeah very true. Hard, Absolutely you know, correct. Very hard for me because you, it's, I just, as I keep saying, it's very disturbing. And um, I just have a question, Catherine. I meant to ask it in our interview. I hope you don't mind if I ask it now because um, I do know you have a medical background. So, mm -hmm. Uh, I remember when I watched a few videos on uh, little Rania and her arm was basically taken right out of socket, correct? Yes. Right. There is no way that a dog paleo size could do that at any point, correct? Like, I'm just, I'm not sure. I, I don't know how tough people's joints are and 
for pulling them out of socket and stuff like that. Do you think there's any way that the dog could have done that at any point, or is it? Because in my opinion, he couldn't drag it. He couldn't have enough force to pop her arm out of socket without dragging her all over the room, kind of exactly. thing. Exactly. Like, or, I mean, right. And um, in in okay, to answer your question, if a body has been decompo decomposing and it's getting to the skeletonization portion, which is mm -hmm. um, advanced decomp, when mm -hmm. the skeleton, you know, everything starts coming off, and now the skeleton is coming around. Yeah, they, a dog could do that. But this little girl was. Uh, I don't mean to sound rude and crude, so I don't let anybody to misquote me. But this was a quote-unquote fresh death. Mm -hmm. So within a few days, have it? No, there's no way. I don't. I don't even know of a dog that could rip that arm out without, like you said, dragging her all over. It would be so evident. There would be claw marks, scratch marks, everything on the skin. It's just not going to come up, grab an arm, and then just walk away and it pops out. That's not how it works. It is solid. Your ligaments and your tendons and everything holds your bones to your muscles and your muscles to your muscles, and that's a really strong. Um, bind and it doesn't just pop out no there's just no way absolutely no way that little dog could have done that that's what I figured I because I thought like if this dog did happen to do this he, like as you said the body would have been dragged all around the room it just wouldn't have just popped out <laughs> right thing. that's what I'm trying to yeah that's what I figured I just wanted to clarify like get some clarification on that yeah, and then, you know, two, to fracture her third rib under her arm, that little dog couldn't do that either. So, um, yeah, this was definitely an intention, intentional injury right. to that little baby. So I just, I mean, I just can't, with all the evidence showing that David is innocent, I don't know what it's going to take the Apple Valley police to ever open the case. Because, I mean, to me, there's so much warranting it them to open it again just from everything that you guys have found out and what i've researched you can pick basically throw it like throw a dart and hit all the inconsistencies and it's enough to in my opinion at least to open up the case for a second look and they just seem to have dug their heels in and don't want to budge right it's, yeah. very, it's very it's it's a very odd case it just it really is <laughs> But and, and I hear you, and, and that's like you know I've said all along. You know I I came to this case thinking that he really probably was guilty. You I know, that. like he probably was. So let me just read this, and and then as soon as you start reading stuff, you're like, uh, wait a second, this nope, that's no, nope, not oh, wait, and then you're like, oh, holy cow, this is a total mess. <laughs> And then when I saw that, that and for me, it's like all of us, I think we all have our, our smoking gun. And for me, the smoking gun for sure was seeing that piece of the scalp with the straight line edges of the skin that's still attached to the scalp with the multiple blunt force trauma indentations. Now, there's no way a dog could make straight cuts, straight lines on a skin. There's just, it's, it's impossible. No way a human could do that. So that had to have been intentionally removed with something that would create a straight line. Mm -hmm. And a dead person can't do that to themselves. So who did it? And so for me, that was my smoking gun. Right. right. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, uh, Kirk, 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 um, how did you come about this case? And how did you um, kind of start taking a deeper dive into this? Well, what... Well, um, I basically was following, I started following actually David Crowley uh, on his YouTube channel when he was actually uh, doing little updates and that when he was actually doing filming for the, the Grey State. And uh, then I was keeping track of that because it's a, it's a subject that I've, uh, like uh, these subjects that he was talking about, like all of the different elements that were going into his uh, movie is something I've been researching for years, been very interested in. And so it, it definitely caught my eye from the start. So I that's what I was how I kind of found it. Uh stumbled upon it on YouTube. And then as you know, then also yeah, as everyone knows, the murders happened, supposed murders and suicide and stuff. And then which really disturbed me because I I just never I can't see him being that way. I mean, I'm not saying it didn't. He didn't do it. I'm, you know, there's. I'm just saying I can't see that. 
So I definitely was looking uh, for anybody that was kind of looking into the, to kind of explain to, I wanted somebody to kind of explain to me what they knew and what was going on. And that's how I came upon Catherine's channel, which what I found amazing because she broke down everything so easy to follow and made just wet with the evidence. There was never an opinion, which is what I like about it. I'd like to, you know, you don't want to have your opinion on what happened. You want to let the evidence follow you. So that's how I, I stumbled into this case. And as I said, as I got deeper and deeper into it, which I'm still doing, it just gets more upsetting. I've never had a case like this that upsets me like this because I just think that whoever did this, it was so brutal. I just, I to do this to any family, it's, it's so violent and brutal. And uh, I'm thinking there's some, they must've been trying to make some kind of mess, like put a message they wanted to message out there or something but yeah that's how i came upon the gray state was actually i was watching uploads from david crowley and following them and stuff like that and then as this happened i kind of like i said read, reached out trying to find different channels that would kind of break down the evidence and that and that's how i found catherine <laughs> nice she makes it very, very uh, easy, and then as well as your channel, I've, you know, lots of other channels, but I, as the first person to find it was Catherine's channel that got me started on looking into what happened and stuff, uh, and all the different uh, pieces of evidence that pointed away from David doing this. It was just very extremely uh, interesting to me, and let the evidence take you. That's, that's what I like about... Uh, the videos that I've been watching, they just let the evidence do the talking. Yep, that's what I like about Catherine too. Yep. Um, yeah, and she has, she, I think she has a whole playlist on her YouTube channel. So if anyone um, hasn't looked at Catherine's channel yet, uh, it's Catherine and then last name M-I-C-H-E-L-E, -E, one L, mm -hmm. and it'll pop right up um and you can watch all of her videos that she's done on this case and on on other other topics too um but yeah i think i think it's there's some excellent stuff there and uh it's just it's so awesome to always hear how people kind of come to this case and you know what they brought into this case and i i was um definitely a person who kind of started out with a clear bias thinking that uh, like Catherine said you know this guy's prob probably guilty it's probably nothing and you know take a take a look and um it shouldn't be too hard to figure out especially since the police you know within a couple of days were saying that David was was guilty and for me it was it was when the the when I started getting contact when I started getting phone calls from these these gray state goons um that it really started i could really see all like, hey, there's something really strange here you know there was a whole group of people who were allegedly david crowley's friends and supporters and blah 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 and all this stuff and they were going to have a, a big powwow and they were going to make sure that we all got to the bottom of this and then that got scratched quickly and so that was another strange thing that happened um, really early, really early on, and um, Dan Dan Hinnon tells that story very, very well. And um, so that was another thing. I was like, wow. And then it just got weirder and weirder and weirder. And it's like, wait a minute, why is it getting so weird? When it should just be, hey guys, David, you know, this is why David did it. And we never got that answer. Six years later, seven years later, almost, um, no one's been able to really give that answer at all and of course it didn't matter if anybody else was you know if sean wright wasn't able to that's not a not a big thing the guy you know it's not the brightest guy but <laughs> the fact that that the police couldn't give that answer that's when it became very very clear that okay yeah there's something else going on here and mm -hmm. again it's not to say that all police are you know uh all the the same there's definitely multiple layers multiple levels of this whole thing and it just seems like at the very top of the avpd the case got shut down and the officers underneath were pretty much told this is how it is this is what, what we're going with and that's it um and so that's that's you know that's that's not right either um, that's, that's that's not fair to this family. It's not fair to this case. It's not fair to the truth. It's not fair to our soldiers. 
you know, sometimes people forget or they don't understand David Crowley was a soldier that served this country. Mm-hmm. Um, so there are special circumstances to it. You know, there there will be a little more effort put into this case because of that, from my point, you know. There's other cases that are similar, um, but this case is a little bit different because of the respect that I have for our for our, our soldiers. Whether I agree with whatever their views are, whether I agree with the, the trailer that David made, which I don't, um, you know, none of that really matters. But it's like, wow, you know, this guy's... This guy fought for our country. He served our country. He died. He would have died for this country. Maybe, maybe he actually did die for this country. I don't. I don't know. But um, it just seems like he deserves better from the law enforcement. Mm-hmm. I don't care what the family say. I don't care what they think. I care about what the facts say. I care about that, and that's what it all comes comes down to. In, in the end, that's what really matters. People can have their own thoughts and have their own views and think that there was a pack theory between David and Kamel and create these wild theories. But we have to remember that this all started with the theory that David Crowley was guilty. That's where this started from. So if, you're, if we're going to start there and here we are seven years later, no one can create any fact. They can't. They can't add any facts to why David Crowley is guilty, so they're falsifying documents, playing exactly. games, spreading "quote unquote" white lies, leading people on false trails. I mean, that says a lot about those those people, mm-hmm. and it it also just raises more questions because now it's like, okay, for all the people who really think that David Crowley is guilty and do want to sincerely find out the the truth, what does it say to those people? How do they support a theory like that when it's based on so many lies and the propaganda and the gains? And that's why I think a lot of those people are, are going to start turning if if they want to, you know. And if if they don't, that's that's their choice. You know, we live in the in the we live in the greatest country here, and so you have that freedom, you have those rights to believe whatever you want. But to slander a dead man and just want to believe that he's guilty and to go to such lengths. Um, and to not be able to provide any evidence that he's guilty just pretty much shows you everything that you need to know here. So that's my final rant. I don't know if anyone has any um, <laughs> final <laughs> final words here or uh, closing statements, closing arguments for now, but that's all I got. There's the... No, I really don't. Uh, I just want to thank everybody for listening and tuning in today. I hope that we answered everybody's questions. And, you know, watch who you follow, please. Mm -hmm. That's good advice. it. (laughs) It really is. Um, Catherine, any final yeah. answer? <laughs> My internet, I don't know what they're doing with it, but yeah, they, they keep shutting it down. But yeah, I'm finally back. <laughs> Are you guys <laughs> wrapping it up? <laughs> She's back. <laughs> so, okay. Are you, are you just closing it down now? You... Yeah, we're just trying to see if you have any anything. I mean, I, I said I pretty much have ranted and I have nothing nothing else but i mean please feel feel free if you have no i'm i'm with you guys i think i said all i needed to say and and now i need to go back and listen so i can hear what rick had to say because it <laughs> booted me <laughs> but, but yeah um like everybody else I, i'm just grateful to people who are willing to look into the case and welcome aboard rick and i um we look we all look forward to you know hearing what you find in in your viewpoint on things and and well, I hope you. people now see that, um, you know, falsifying documents can get you into trouble. And I'm sorry, Rick, I didn't mean to cut you off. Again, I'm notorious for that. No, that's okay. fine. But no, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how this all shakes out the end. Yeah, it's just more to show that, you know, 
we're on the right side we're on the right track and if you if you want to focus on the, on the facts you've came to the right group here um that's that's our focus that's going to continue to be our focus and you know that's where that's where where we started and that's how we're going to pretty much end up here um someday i do believe as i've stated for years i do believe the case will be reopened based on some of these simple facts here uh that within 24 hours of finding the bodies the apple valley police department we're treating this incident as a double murder suicide. The authorities cannot prove David wrote Allahu Akbar in his wife's blood on the living room wall. Authorities cannot prove David wrote I have loved you all with all of my heart on a laptop in the kitchen. Authorities cannot prove David wrote open the rise most recent version submit to Allah now on a notepad in his office bedroom. Authorities cannot prove the dog trapped inside the house ate David's right hand both of Kamel's hands and their daughter's right arm since dog feces tests were never conducted. Authorities did not see the bullet hole in the living room ceiling or the bullet in the attic above until they questioned David's friend a month after finding the bodies. Authorities did not find a motive to support their accusations against David Crowley. Authorities did not find David's blood on any of the bullets at the crime scene. Authorities do not know when David Kamel and Rania Crowley died. What we know for sure is that David Crowley has not been proven guilty. Therefore, he is innocent. That was amazing. That was said so well. Oh, wow. <laughs> Thank you, my friend. Very, Appreciate it really that. was. It really yeah. was. That is amazing. Thank you. Um, yeah, I look forward, Gripper, to having to having you back on here. Um, you know, we like doing these roundtable talks, and hopefully, we'll be able to get you back on and have you on here. I would here definitely, I would love that, and I would also like to uh, put an invitation out to anybody that if they would like to do a an interview with me for my podcast, uh, you're more than welcome. Uh, you can just send me an email at cryptrictattoos at yahoo dot c a and uh so it's c r y p t r i c k t a t t o o s at yahoo dot c a and i would love to do an interview with any of you i would love to be another uh to join in all these discussions because i'm very passionate about this uh and i want to see david's name cleared and i, I think it'd be great to do some interviews and uh explore this a lot further Awesome. I look forward to that. And uh, we'll, we'll be back here on um, October 1st. We'll, we will be releasing the next podcast. And uh, Crip Rick, I don't know if you've um, looked at Tom Lydon's news reports. Um, those are going right. to be some of the next uh, podcast shows that we're going to talk about here. Okay, perfect. And um, then we're going to get into De Detective Gummert and the 21 questions. So um, maybe we can have you back on when we talk about Gummert. And if you want to join in the in our, our podcast, we would love, love to have you part of that too. Thank you so much. That would be amazing. Awesome. <laughs> All right, good peeps. Well, for now, we'll go ahead and shut this one down. I want to thank you all. Thank everybody for watching, for listening, um, for all of your help, for all of your patience, and uh, for just trying to get to the, to the truth here to figure out what really happened. We know what didn't happen. We know what can't be proven. And so, therefore, we can only go with what... Um, what the documents say what the facts say so steer clear from the fiction and thank you all for joining us here to discuss the facts that i will go ahead and shut this one hi youtube it's Catherine michelle um today we're kind of gonna go over and do like one of those clarification videos um there seems to be some questions that some people are getting or comments that some people are seeing um, from others. <laughs> I have a lot of these people blocked, so they just, other people come to me and they're like, well, what does this mean? Um, who seem to misunderstand the whole concept of the fake documents. So to help those who are asking the questions, so you guys um, can really understand what's happening here, I'm going to put on the screen the email from the attorney 
uh, the affidavit from doc Dr. <laughs> Detective Klokonos, and then um, the actual, oh, then the fake document, and then the real ECU report. The misunderstanding is coming in where um, some people are confusing the fact that there is a real ECU report, and then someone took a header from that report and then blocked out the bottom and typed in a bunch of stuff. I mean, you when you compare the two documents, you'll see how they're they're not even they're not the same. It's not the same wording. It's not even the same um, uh, formula setup that all of their other documents follow. And you'll be able to see that. And what I mean by the actual real document, it has right justification and the fake document does not. You never see in the in any of the real police reports where Detective Klokonos calls himself Shane. He's always very professional. This one is um, addressed to Tommy and signed Shane. Um, and we know that by reading the police reports, these police officers don't behave in that way. Um, it's never been consistent with any of the police reports or um, even uh, emails. We have copies of their emails and communication they had back and forth with the uh, um, BCA, and they never spoke to each other like this. So right away, it's, it's evident that this is a fake document. Um, and someone brought it to the attention of the Apple Valley Police Department. I'm not quite sure how. We only know that the city attorney states that someone brought it to their attention. Then they um, contacted the city attorney because this is actually a huge felony. This is not an okay crime. Anybody who goes around faking, falsifying, creating um, police documents under the name and guise of a police officer, that's, I mean, there we have several felonies going on here. Um, so I'm, I don't know what possessed the person who did this to do this. Um, I'm not going to speculate who. Do I have a feeling who I think could be involved? Yeah, but I think so do you guys. But that's not my place to say because I don't have anything solid and to say that, yes, for sure, I know they did this. But that the point of this is to um, put to rest um, the misquoting of uh, Sophia. Sophia states in the video with um, Greg, I think I was part of that too. Sorry, days are jumbling together. But she says, you know, we're um, when the attorney and when Detective Clocono states that. He did not write this. He doesn't recognize this document. He couldn't find this document in any of the police records. They're not referring to the actual ECU report. And these are not one and the same, okay? Not at all. This You have this fake one-page document, supposedly from um, Detective Clocono, stating how they feel the bodies, who died when, and all this other stuff that's just pure bogus. It's all a lie. Some of it was taken out of an original document, another felony, and put into this fake document um, to make it kind of sort of sound legitimate. And um, that fake is a fake, but the actual document is the real document and is part of the police records that have been obtained. Um, so they're not one and the same. They don't belong to the same. They are not even correlated or belong together at all. Someone had taken the header from the actual real ECU report. And like I said, then created this false document pretending to be in writing as if they are Detective Klokonos, um, addressing it to Tommy Booth, but yet the header, they didn't fix the header very well because in the actual real header, which is exactly the same as the original document, but on the fake document, they kept the header, but that header is addressed to both Tommy and I, I can't remember if it's Brian Bone. I can't remember, but there's two different police officers. But in this section where it's typed out, it's only addressed to one. So again, lots of mistakes on this part. And um, I really, really hope that the city attorney is, is taking this seriously. They say they're investigating this and they should, because like I said, these are 
There are, are several felonies involved here that can range anywhere up to three, five, ten years in prison plus um, fines, financial fines. Um, and that's, you can look it up online, Google um, forging documents and Google, um, I think that's what I found it under. But you look up under the Minnesota state statutes um, for falsifying and forgery. Look up document forgery, especially where and how it relates to uh, legal documents from the police department, courts, or anything like that. It's serious. It's really serious. So whoever created this document, um, they're in a world of hurt. As soon as, you know, as long as the Apple Valley city attorney, you know, continues this and the Apple Valley police department does continue to investigate this, it, it, it won't be hard for them to pinpoint where it came from. And that's the reality. Um, we know where we got it from. It was in a data file dump from Tony Floyd and he received it from the um, facts versus fiction Crowley thing. That's the group of people who constantly harass myself and Greg and then Dan Hennen when Dan was on YouTube. I mean, we're talking constant bombardment and harassment. And um, this is where this fake document came from, was from their group. It <laughs> That is truth. It, it's backed up by um, email exchange, text exchange, now, um, they're still trying to say that they received this from, di from the Apple Valley Police Department. And Apple Valley is Police Department saying, this is fake. We, didn't, we don't even know what this is. And when to go so far as to have Detective Clocono sign an affidavit, a legal document stating he did not write that not for public release um, ECU report, to me, that tells me they're taking this very seriously because, again, these are major felonies. This isn't something minor. Um, but anyway, um, so Sophia was correct in saying that um, when, when, and what she meant, and again, another thing that is constantly misconstrued by those who shall not be named. And again, these are people who are asking me wanting clarification, but since there has been so many questions, I just decided to do a video so I can answer it all together. Um, what she said was, um, when she's saying that she didn't, what, something about she didn't know, I'm not gonna misquote this. I will be right back and let me find that quote, what she said, okay? Be patient, hold on. Okay, <laughs> I found time to go back and listen to, to the podcast that we did. Okay, so what Sophia is saying is that first, when she first saw this email pop up, she was out driving around and she was busy and she didn't quite understand what was going on. She's like, wait, what, you know, what are they saying? So she was, you know, and um, so she went from trying to read the email from the attorney to looking at the affidavit and she's like, okay, I don't know what's going on. I'm just going to wait till later. And then when she got home and actually had time to sit down and read it and um, take in what was going on without other distractions around her is when she realized that this was referring to the fake um, memo, what she calls a memo, but we know it's a fake document that Tony Floyd had uploaded and, you know, made public. And so then she started to put it together and she's like, oh, oh, oh. And I remember when, you know, we were discussing this back and forth and be before we even knew Greg had, had even received the same email. The we did not know that at this time, Greg had received the same email. So Sophie and I were talking back and forth and, um, you know, about the, the, um, the email and, and she's like, oh my goodness, are they being serious? And I go, well, yeah, <laughs> you don't get a letter from a city attorney if they're not serious, let alone an affidavit. And she's like, oh no, oh no. Um, like who would do this? And this was her first thought. Her first thought wasn't jumping to conclusions and starting to blame somebody. She's like, oh no, somebody's faking documents in the case has this happened before, you know, so this type of conversation we're having, you know, on and on and on again, just between the two of us, this isn't anything we're putting out. We're, you know, just kind of brainstorming this, this whole email. 
in realizing the fact that, you know, there's been this leaked document. Now, Sophia and I, this is between, well, we kept it to ourselves. When it first came out, we did in passing talk about this. And then she's like, oh my goodness, look, this sounds exactly like what some other people were saying. And is this, is this where they got it from? Did they get it from Detective Klokonos? Because that's kind of where she thought at first, you know, it's, it was a brief flash in her head that, you know, maybe Detective Klokonos had given them this information and had provided us with false information or not all the information. And then we're like, well, you know, that really doesn't sound like him. So we're just like, you know what, let's just leave this and let's just let it ride. Because, and you know, that's why I never addressed it. I never brought it up because it just, it didn't look right. But it's one of those situations where I didn't have enough information. I saw something that was questionable, but was it real or was it not real? I had my suspicions, but nothing to back up either way. So we just stepped back and said, let it go. And it wasn't until the city attorney then um, sent that email to both Sophia and to Greg and letting them both know that that document was not correct. And that's only that one paged memo that says not for public release. That is the only fake document. The actual ECU report is a valid and right report. So when Detective Klokonos is stating in his affidavit that you know, he searched um, the, again, he's looking through the files. It's not there. He's looking through his notes. It's not there. He doesn't recognize that. Again, he's referring to the one page, not his actual report. And so hopefully that will help explain this a little bit better. Um, and again, I'll put this up at the end of this video. I will put up the, the slide showing the email and then Detective Klokonos's, um affidavit and then the fake document and then the actual real report. All of those will be, you know, in there and you will be able to see the difference. Again, this fake document was not part of a real document and then one page taken out of five or six, there are five pages to the actual real report and you will see them one, two, three, four, five. And then you have this fake one. And then nowhere is that part of this other real document. So again, I, I hope that clears it up. It's not the same, never was the same. Somebody created that document. And again, that is a felony. There's, there's forgery going on here. There's impersonating an officer going on here. Yeah, yeah. Whoever did this, <laughs> oh, I don't know. It's if if they follow through on this, if the Apple Valley City Attorney follows through on this and they find you, and they will, I'm I, I feel sorry for you. I, I if nothing else, I really hope that this puts to rest the need to constantly create fake documents, fake email texts, fake everything. There's so many things that are put out by some people that are created on their own. They make stuff up. They, I mean, they have these elaborate, well, not so elaborate, but elaborate in the sense of where they, they go on and they carry it on and on and on. And, and you're like, wow, which is why we don't address this. It's not worth our time because we know it's a lie. They know it's a lie, but they present it as its truth. And those people who truly have been following the case, which a lot of you have, and you guys know, I mean, you guys are smart enough and you guys see that, you know, where it's fake and where the lies are coming in. And I really appreciate all of your support, both in comments and in private emails. You know, I cannot express enough thank you to you guys for standing by not only us, because we're trying to do this the best we can. Um, you know, oftentimes it, things can not be given a definite answer, but we kind of have to give it a best guess. Well, according to all what's being done here, said here, here's kind of where we think it's going. But, you know, that's a far cry from going, you know, creating an entire document and saying it's from a police officer and then presenting it to the public in any way, shape, or form, if you hand over that document to anybody, you've now made it public. And that person, then when they then release it, and, and what happened in this instance with Tony Floyd, 
guess what? That falls back on you. You created that document. You handed it over to Tony. Tony made it public because they knew it was fake. And now comes the legal repercussions. So please, if anything else, I really pray you guys have learned your lesson. Stop this. Just stop. You know, it's okay. You don't have to agree with our stance. You truly don't. And there's no law that says you have to. And guess what? The world would be really boring if everybody agreed on everything. So let's keep this civil. Let's keep it polite and no more dirty tricks. Sophia wasn't lying. She wasn't confused. It's not like, oh, she knew this. She didn't know that. No. When she first received the email, it was confusing. She was busy. There was things going on. She set it aside until she could get home and open it up. So when she's relating how she came across this document and how she processed it, there's no two sides to this. She's walking you through the steps it took her to realize that this was a real email from the actual city attorney and holy Toledo cakes, someone faked a, a document that was not part of the original document. That is all she was saying. And again, for the umpteenth time, just to drill this home for those um, who I know will be listening. This is not part of the actual real police document by Detective Klokonos. Somebody took snippets from his actual document, inserted it into this fake, um, not for public release document, but that doesn't mean Detective Klokonos wrote it. He did not. He does not recognize that page. He knows his report. He does not know that report. So I hope that, hopefully that kind of clears it up and we can move forward from here. And if you guys have any more questions, um, you can email me or you can find us on the Justice for David Carling Family Facebook page, or you can leave a comment down below. I uh, hope you guys are having a great day and continue the fight. We will we'll keep fighting for justice. And thank you for joining us in that fight.